And I'm Catlink. Good to see you all today. Yesterday was such an interesting day for races. There's a lot of close ones, a lot of interesting RNG, to say the least, for, for many of the runners. Uh, just a little bit. But today we're going at it again with some more awesome Resident Evil games. I'm so excited. First up is RE2 Classic. Uh, which is going to be great. I love RE2 Classic. It's such a good and, one. And uh, not only that, but we are going to have a ton of fun games. Uh, hopefully, I'm all good on my end there. I'm just looking I at think, chat. Yeah, I think you're yeah. a little muted. <laughs> uh, no not worries. Not on that end, but... Uh, am I good? We good? Huh? Huh? Uh, anyway, Kat, how about you? Are you no, just tell right, us about the... Uh, there we go. How about you right. just tell us about the games we're seeing today? Okay, well, we're good, we're good, we're good, okay. Yep, we're good. Uh, so today we're going to be seeing uh, a lot of, uh, it's a mix of things. So we're going to be seeing Resident Evil 2 Classic into Resident Evil 3 Remake, Resident Evil 1 Remake Randomizer, which is super exciting to, to witness if you've never seen that before. Uh, going into Resident Evil 7 Madhouse, and then ending the night with Resident Evil 4 Pro, which a Resident Evil remake pro at that, which is oh boy, <laughs> it should be a wild run. I'm excited <laughs> uh, as well. I guess uh, the first half of the message was missed, so we're just welcoming you on into day two. Uh, we do have a lot of fun runs uh, for you um, once again, and uh, as well, in case you didn't miss yesterday's show, currently the score is stars with one point and umbrella with five. Uh, we're definitely hoping that team stars can pull at least to catch up here, uh, but we shall see how it goes. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah. that being Let's said, we're ready to hop into our right? first game. I think we've been waiting plenty. How about we go to Resident Evil 2 Classic and meet with our runners? All right. All righty. So, representing Team Stars, we have Rebecca RE. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm Rebecca RE, speedrunner for, from Santiago de Chile, and I'm going to be a Stars team today. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Representing Team Umbrella, we have Nabson underscore one. Hello, everybody. My name is Nabson. I'm a German speedrunner, and hopefully, we have a great race. Uh, that we shall. And joining us on commentary are. Hello, I'm Carsey. I'm just a guy. <laughs> He's, he's actually a very tall guy. Don't let him be at that point. I'm Jaira. I'm also here. Excited to provide commentary for this and the other games that I'm also going to be a part of. This is going to be a really, really fun second half of an already fun weekend. Looking forward to it. And it should. Uh, before yeah. I do begin this race, though, I do want to mention uh, that this race uh, has some extra spiciness to it. Uh, just because while we do have a lot of races today, uh, while me and Kat were planning this, uh, this is the only race that has the two runners at an exact tie. Uh, if you do check speedrun.com, they have the exact same PB. Which, yeah. that's kind of wild. I, I'm really, really excited to see how this one goes. You guys are doing, you guys are going to do absolutely amazing, though. Very excited to see both ends. All right. Anyway, with that being said, uh, Carsey or J Rock, we're going to leave it to you. Countdown when ready. You can handle this, Carsey. All right, I got this. So, uh, three, two, one, go. It'll be three, two, one, go. A little bit of loading times. Which we shouldn't see a whole lot of today, right? Because it's the GameCube version, so we'll get the door loading scene, but we'll get past the uh, right. Yeah. Skips, right? Yeah. yeah, we're not seeing it. We're not seeing any uh, any cutscene skips here. Japanese version of the game. Several rooms have uh, different uh, different zombie patterns. Freeze. Ever so slightly easier than the U.S. version, but uh, absolutely more optimal for speed running for multiple reasons. But as you can see, yeah, the uh, the cutscenes get skipped. Uh, the game goes by the end game timer. Uh, the uh, skipped cutscenes do count in the end game timer. So Rebecca takes the uh, takes a bite here. It is possible with Claire because Claire's got the thinner hitbox. It's possible very 
for her to um, squeeze in between the zombies very easily with no loss of momentum. There's maybe about, uh, I'd say there's maybe about like a 25% chance of failing this trick. But, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, when, when we're talking about, when we're talking about like, you know, PB attempts, you know, it's a, it's a very, it's a very quick reset until you get, until you get it. But it's a matter of, uh, it's a matter of lining yourself up before you walk into the trigger and then being able to just uh, run through that basketball court with like no stops whatsoever. We already got through the uh, garbage alley heading into the bus now. So there's going to be a variable number of shots to get around the zombies on the bus here. Uh, Nabson kills the female zombie on the ground in two shots and usually four shots is about average for being able to get past here. Did you see how many shots Rebecca took? Uh, that was two for both. Two for both. Okay, two for both. So that's uh, that's pretty optimal. And then get off the bus, pivot, head directly towards the door. And because neither player picked up any items, uh, Brad will spawn in the downstairs of the uh, RPD courtyard, enabling you to just run directly to the door. So then from here, just, uh, you know, exposition cutscene skipped. Gives you a key item that allows you to unlock the uh, first couple of doors, explore the RPD. Handgun is largely they are really uh, even already to start this. Yeah, they are actually. They're like they're like yeah on our on our feed. They're uh, they're pretty much Almost they're pretty much neck and neck. The same frame right now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. As far as I could as far as I could tell, it was like the uh, yeah. I'm not entirely sure where. Uh, I'm not entirely sure where Nabson ended up. Well, it's like the 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 the, the real time on the GameCube is actually going to be like some variables, but. Uh, Actually, the door loads are all uh, the same fixed uh, fixed time, as far as I'm aware. Like it just adds like a fixed uh, amount of time to the game timer. So even though they are at uh, different, uh, even though they are at different uh, speeds uh, in real time, uh, the game timer is going to count them as even. So really, the only thing that's uh, the only thing that's actually counted in the GameCube versions in game timer is. Uh, it's just like the actual like playtime. I did not know that. Yeah. So I mean, I mean, GameCube is probably like the the most. I would actually say that GameCube is probably the 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 most fair version of Resident Evil Two to run. Yeah. Yeah. Naps Napson did a little pivot on the stairs there. So in the case of uh, Claire, as compared to Leon, Claire also uh, pushes. Statues uh, slightly, slightly less far, like every push compared to Leon. So Leon can push farther, faster, but uh, it takes a little bit longer for Claire. the uh, The optimal way to do this here is to uh, push one statue, then go into the star's office and get all the items in there that you need, and on the way out, push the, uh, push the, the blue statue. statue. And then, when you're coming back through to grab the items. You're right, yeah, you come back through again, and overall that saves about two seconds. Yeah, Nabson takes the uh, the same route that I do in this room, just pivots to the right, grabs the grenade launcher, and grabs the book, and uh, slides on out. I think you're going to have to pivot. Yeah, you're going to gonna have to pivot at one point or another. If you get that grenade launcher. So it should also be noted that uh, if you take damage in classic Resident Evil games uh, past the original Resident Evil 1... Oh, am I mixing up Nabson and Rebecca's cameras? Oh, 
Oops. Yeah. Yes, I, I absolutely am. You're right. Mm. My bad. <laughs> yeah. It was wow, the completely... until I realized that was Yeah, <laughs> yeah, wait, wait, wait. I just realized. I thought, yeah, okay. All right. Yeah, my bad. Let me see. There's like not a way that I can like swap these two. <laughs> Because, like, on the GDQ main feed, Rebecca's on the left, Napson's on the right, oh, and vice versa. That's what got me, too, in that reel. So I'm like, wait, it's... I hovered <laughs> over it, and then so different names. Like, okay, okay. Yeah. And those arms are also very simple. I think those arms are... Because Claire's frame, like, it's uh, not hard to get grabbed there. Never really had an issue, personally. Right, right. So, yeah, like, taking the interior line is... Uh, going to keep the liquor largely in place and uh, if anything the liquor might react by either using you know the signature lick attack or it might actually uh, or it might actually like get angry and jump but like the jump attack while it does over 50% of your HP whenever it does connect a lot of people mistake it for an instant kill it's actually not an instant kill uh it just uh, it just does a lot of it just does a lot of damage, and if you're in caution, it will absolutely kill you in one shot, yeah. because caution is 50% HP or below, and the attack does 110 damage out of 200 damage possible. So it's not an instant kill, but definitely is a buzz kill, or in a lot of cases, a run kill. Yeah. If it uh, yeah if it if it if it connects, and most of the time it's not going to connect. Okay, yeah, Na yeah, Napson got a uh, got a very interesting got a very interesting dodge. I'm not actually sure how to uh I'm not ex I'm not entirely sure how that one works, but really it's like the best you can do is just uh try to practice one line going around the liquor and uh, just kind of hope you get it, but I think the uh sometimes there might be a little more success in getting around that liquor by equipping the grenade launcher first. So the grenade launcher does uh, drop your speed by eh, maybe about like 2% or something like that. But um, there's uh, there's 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 reasons to have it equipped. Both runners still very, very close. Coming back up towards the uh, the second floor police station. The line coming out of that room is also uh, very simple. It's just like a a slight quarter turn and then a turn back to the. Uh, I think it's the right. I'm holding the control in my hand. It's hard to. We're talking about we're talking about getting to the stairs, right? Yeah. yeah whenever yeah, yeah. you're whenever you're going in between the two zombies, it's yeah. It's like a, it's like just basically hold up and left and. As soon as the character rotates, like a total of like a sum total of like ninety degrees, then you straighten out, and then you just like hold up and right to hit the stairs. It's it's a it's a dodge that is act that is that is almost one hundred percent consistent, but it's a lot easier than it looks. So far, neither player has uh, has taken a hit. Um, but uh, as I was mentioning before, I think yeah, before I. Uh, before I was uh, kindly notified in text by my co by my co commentator that I was getting the cameras mixed up, um, I didn't the, want to say uh, it out loud. I was just like, I was like, maybe he's just gonna read this quietly. And then you read it out. I was like, oh, okay. Oh yeah, <laughs> no, no, no. It's, it's, it's 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 okay. I'm not I'm not I'm not beyond I'm not beyond like not acknowledging my mistakes. But anyhow, uh. Or was that was that the correct double negative? Not beyond, not to whatever. I'm not gonna dwell on it. Anyway, <laughs> so yeah, as I, as I was saying, if you're in caution or below, then it drops your foot speed by a pretty significant margin. So about about ten percent. And um, if your foot speed is lowered, obviously it means that the overall run is going to be slower, and it compounds your time loss as you have to go out of your way to find healing items in order to restore your foot speed back. So the ideal, of course, is try to take as little damage as possible, but there are some occasions where, you know, you'll be able to grab a first aid spray while you're grabbing other things, and then you can have a first aid spray in reserve in case uh, something goes horribly wrong, especially in the case of a, uh, especially in the case of a, of a one and done run such as a race or like a marathon run. 
So for this dodge here, going in between these two guys, basically just holding up and left and uh, straighten out, go in between the lampposts and hit the door. Or the lamppost and the fence there and hit the door. A lot of these lines may look complex, but uh, some of them are a lot easier to pull off than it may seem going in real time. The, at least what I feel like the hardest part about doing a lot of these lines is making sure you straighten yourself out immediately after the line to keep time out them. Uh, one of the uh, biggest things about a Resident Evil, especially the classic runs, are movement and making sure that your lines are as straight and as clean as possible. And you can save a significant amount of time by making sure you're not bumping into walls constantly or sliding along the side of walls unnecessarily. Yeah, it's just your, uh, it's just your menuing, mostly. So in the GameCube version, um, because of the, uh, the frame rate at which the, uh, the GameCube menus run, uh, I believe like some of the shortcuts for like the menuing do not work in this version. But like in the PlayStation version and the uh, PC version, PC, PC version, yeah, PC version is the uh, is the version of the game that most people run. Uh, you know, just uh, you you can uh, you can do like a, a sort of quarter circle forward motion like in Street Fighter, and that will uh, basically zip your uh, cursor over to position six. Or you can do like a quarter circle from right to down, and that'll zip your cursor to uh, posi to position five, and then from there it's it's just like one it's just like one more press to be able to get to like seven or eight. But uh, you know, with the uh, with the GameCube controller, I mean, it would it would certainly come in handy because you know you got the you got the gates on the stick, and it would it would be it would be really easy to do, but. Uh, these particular shortcuts do not work, as far as I'm aware, even with the D-pad. But now we got the uh, the diamond key. Both players have the diamond key. And the optimal path is to head back through the first floor. Going back through the liquor hallway since uh, we're not going to get the uh, the square crank this time. Pretty straightforward. Uh, pretty straightforward. Just try to run around the liquor. Man, I gotta pick Napson's brain on how to do that. On how to do that dodge where the liquor is just like slightly deviated to the to the left hand side. There, that's that's. That's solid. I never. I've, I've. I've always wondered how to do that dodge, but I just like never. It's got to be that out. pretty consistent because Rebecca's also been pulling it off too. So it's. Just... Mm, well, we're, mm. well, we're, it's it's a bit. Uh, it's a bit. It's a bit different on Rebecca's screen, but I think it's got. I think it's got. It's absolutely got to do with the lines that uh, that Napson takes because Napson absolutely mm. committed to it. Like he absolutely committed to the line. And he and he seems to do that like every room. So, but yeah, on the way back now that we have the lighter, we also got to get the uh, the second uh, red jewel for the other uh, jaguar piece. All right, going through the evidence room, Nabson uh, tries to run through it immediately. Uh, gets bit, shoves it off. Uh, there is a uh, there is a safer strat of just. Uh, of just simply uh, standing in place for a couple of seconds, letting the zombies group up, and then it allows you to sort of make a uh, make a fish hook motion through the room, which allows you to get the detonator and uh, run through. Uh, for dodging Marvin over here, uh, it's just as simple as like do a little bit of a back step to the back right, and then uh, pivot in place for uh, you know a couple of frames, and then turn exit. In the U.S. version of the game, Marvin likes to move at uh, max speed. So 
So it's one of the uh, one of the areas where the running the Japanese version comes in handy because the enemies are slightly less, or I should say, zombies are slightly less aggressive. The most plentiful enemy in the game. So even though zombies, you know, they take they take the same amount of damage in both the Japanese and the U.S. version. Uh, they're just the, you know they 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 just tend to uh, move at the slowest speed more often than not. Nebson using the second red jewel. To get the right half of the Jaguar stone. It looks like Rebecca is actually going to do that on the way out. Which uh which does make sense because of the way that uh because of the way that uh, the lines sort of line up as she comes out of Chief Iron's office she would just be directly facing the door not really sure if there's like any overall time to be saved depending on like uh, the order that you visit the rooms maybe like a frame or two I mean as close to your TVs are frame or two <laughs> okay. yeah yeah it's true I mean uh, a world of a difference I mean, we're definitely already, uh, you know, because because running a different route. We'll find out. Mm. Uh, we'll find out like how like how far ahead or behind either uh, either runner is by the time they hit the uh, by the time they hit the door on the way out. Rebecca still has to. Collect the. Oh, okay. She's waiting until. Uh, very interesting. So she's waiting until uh, she comes back from uh, the clock tower later on during uh, RPD2 to collect the final Jaguar stone piece. So we're not actually going to know who's, who's ahead or who's behind at this huh? point. <laughs> Of course, anything can happen in that basement, you know. There is a liquor, and there's uh, there's also spiders. Someone could get poisoned and lose their foot speed and be forced to grab a uh, blue herb. That could be legitimately the difference in the run. Both these runners are actually good, good, good. So if we go that far, it could change everything. So it's all RNG is on everybody's side. Yeah, I guess we're about to. Yeah, we're we're really yeah really about to find out here. Like the. Because the thing about poison, and what it does, what poison does is it counts down your HP. Okay, we got our got our line here. Rebecca uh, goes on the outside, goes on the outside line from right to left, in order to get the dog to jump and miss before heading through the uh, double doors to this uh, maintenance access path. Nabson takes the same line, super clean. Wait a minute, I got mixed up with Leon. There are no spiders. Also got mixed up, that's yeah, it's in the other direction coming from the other sewers. So don't do me. Fine, no risk of poison here. Absolutely no risk of poison. I must be missing a lot in my old age. So funny enough, compared to Ada, Sherry actually does push the boxes a little further with uh, each shove. She only needs to uh, shove the boxes forward six times, or shove that first box forward six times. But because Sherry whole takes whole a body into it. Yeah, but because Sherry takes longer to climb, the faster way for her to get out is not to climb the box, but to... Uh, 
but to push out and then push the box back in. So another, so one thing that could actually lose you time here, there is actually a little bit of RNG, is uh, if Sherry drops her leg here while she's trying to climb. And uh, there's three chances for her to drop her leg as you're climbing back up here. And so far, Rebecca got no leg drops. Let's see what happens with uh, with Nabson. It's totally, it's complete RNG, complete RNG whether or not Sherry drops a leg. Yeah. Like you can't really, you can't, you can't mash any buttons to make it not happen. Napson doesn't get any leg drops either. Good exit from Rebecca. Because Sherry is, uh, because Sherry runs about the same speed as uh, the other adult characters in Caution, uh, the dogs actually will uh, overall be faster than her and will actually like bite her from behind. So it is a little tough to dodge the dogs with Sherry. Playing Claire again, a couple of dogs respawn over here, or a couple of dogs spawn over here. Next up, going to open the door. Uh, in the current Claire route, do you even bother unlocking doors here? It looks so. So uh, using so the club key has three doors that you can use it on, and uh, you have to use the club key all three times to get it out of your inventory. Just to make the yeah, gone, yeah, gone over to the Magnum door there. And uh, Rebecca's taking a safety herb right here. I actually wonder if she's going to go for the uh, if she's going to go for the yellow horde. Uh, same with Nabson; they both take the safety herb. Nabson's already going ahead and using it. Yeah, the thing is, in this room, it could uh, absolutely throw the run. Oh, she's going for it. She's going for it. Oh, actually, no, 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 no she's not going for okay. the yellow horde. Rebecca with the pump Yeah, actually with the Yellow Horde, I think. Oh, okay, Napson actually Napson is going for the Yellow Horde, and he, he gets it. Gosh, oh, he nailed nice it. Point. Yeah. So in this room, yeah, you can you can sort of pump your movement here a little bit. The uh, the murder hall here, it's Resident Evil 2's murder hall. Uh, you can pump your movement a little bit, and... Uh, Oh, that 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 yeah, interior was... line, that interior line behind that zombie there was actually really nasty. Then Rebecca on the way to the uh, to the uh, the press room over here. Uh, there's a, an additional liquor over here, and uh, got the liquor to do a swipe. And because the liquor went behind the uh, the desk over here, that uh, forces her to take a circle around in order to be able to press the button. And as she's grabbing the uh, as she's grabbing the cog, she got lucky and the liquor backed up. Like sometimes, whenever a liquor, sometimes the liquor, if you like stop and back up ever so slightly it uh it's sort of like it sort of like stops the liquor's aggro momentarily and sometimes the liquor will just straight up back up just straight confuses them yeah it's uh it's a bit it's a bit tough to pull off but in certain right. setups you actually can manipulate that to your advantage where the liquor will actually like not do anything well for every set clean rooms there so it's still yeah. very very hard to tell who's actually a heavy beer because it's like a different uh, route with the items upstairs, so we'll find out probably around first boss who's. I would say I would say actually it's upon uh, it's upon reentry to Chief Iron's room. That's how we will find out. That's how we will find out who's ahead. But I think uh, I think what's going to happen is Napson's probably going to pull ahead here. Well, there's actually two more liquors. Uh, there is one upstairs, right? Yeah, yeah. Third there is floor. one upstairs. Yeah, Claire. In Claire's scenario, there's uh, there's 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 more liquors.
All right, so both players took a swipe from the liquor here. They so yeah, have, uh, if Nabson failed the yellow horde, then Rebecca would absolutely pull ahead by the time she gets the, uh, by the time she gets the, uh, the other, uh, half of the yeah, Jaguar stone. Yep. Yeah. Because failing the, uh, failing the yellow horde in RPD2 will, uh, is very punishing. <laughs> very, very, very yeah, punishing. Very like, punishing. you, you, like, there is a, there is a, there is an almost 100% chance that whenever you break out of the back-to-back uh, -back zombie grabs and bites that you will be in caution. It's not it's not a run ender as long as you are at uh, as long as you are at maximum HP. But it absolutely but it absolutely is it kills a lot of time especially in a race. Um, yeah. It that, that setback because now you'll be running slower you can be pushed in caution and most likely it's not pretty. Absolutely not. Alright, so on the way out into the main hall, let's see how uh see how it goes with this liquor over here. Nabson manipulates a uh Nabson gets it to lick. Rebecca gets it to jump. Yeah, and because the because the wind up on the jump is uh, because the wind up on the jump takes so long, um, if you've already committed to running around the liquor by the time it starts up that attack, you're going to get around it 100 percent of the time. Because the uh, the thing that triggers the uh, the liquor to jump is entirely range based. So if you're already running towards the liquor by the time that attack starts, you're good. It's also very easy to knock liquors out of the air if you have a uh, if you have a stronger gun such as the grenade launcher equipped. So Rebecca yep. just uh, just got the other half of the stone here and uh Napson sent it down. Napson has a clear lead at this point. Rebecca still has to put the stones in. Okay. Still very much so anyone's race here. <laughs> so prior to the G mutant here, got to pick up the acid rounds. Napson going for quick shots against G Mutant. So when you're doing quick shots with the uh, grenade launcher, you have to aim up because uh, the way the quick shooting works is what you do is you tap R1 repeatedly. When I say R1, I'm talking about the aim the aim button or the aim key. So the uh, the aim button, if you press it at the right time during a shot, what it does is it cancels the. Uh, it cancels the uh, recoil animation of the previous shot into another shot, as long as you're holding the fire button. So basically, yeah, just hold, just hold X, and basically just mash R1, essentially. And uh, if you aim, if you aim up, or rather, if you're using quick shots with a grenade launcher, then the next shot that Claire fires, if she fires a quick shot, will, will be low. will go low. But we want, but uh, with 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 quick shots, we we need them to we need them to go high. You know, we needed we need them to go at like regular range. Um, there's the uh, there's the very rare possibility that uh, the G embryos can actually um, just uh, just jump directly into the uh, path of fire 
and just uh, totally eat a grenade round. But that did not happen this time, fortunately. Yes, no get down, Mr. President, today. By the way, a reminder. So, um, the load times in the GameCube version are actually not counted, even though it adds the time for each... It, it adds a fixed time for each individual door to the in-game timer for every time you enter a particular door. It's a uh, it's a fixed it's a fixed time and doesn't actually uh, it doesn't actually count in the purposes of a uh, in the purposes of like overall time calculation. That's interesting. So what you're saying basically is time pauses as you enter a door on the screen. Yeah, it pauses, but it adds a fixed amount of time. So even if both players uh, load the game differently, like it like have different times loading the game, um, it's still you know, they're, 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 it's still going to compensate for that. So, the exact same. Yep. yeah, so it's going to, it's going to be the exact same. So basically, uh, load times are not a, uh, are not going to be a, uh, are not going to be an advantage for either player. Yes. Sounds much different than the PlayStation version. Yeah. Than the PlayStation or the PC version where the, mm. uh, game timer is, is always counting up no matter what. Uh, yeah. So Napson actually got, uh, actually, got uh, impeded by a bunch of cockroaches there. Uh, the cockroaches can uh, actually kill Sherry if five cockroaches uh, are on her body at once. Those count as like an instant kill, otherwise they don't do any damage. So let's see if Rebecca actually manages to... Uh, oh wow, she actually managed to... Ooh, Ooh. almost. Yeah, it's like I was about to say she actually managed to get, get out of there without getting, uh, without getting roached. RNG that would have been that would have been a pretty yeah that would have been a pretty been. decent time gain yeah so by taking a semi wide arc around the uh, spider here as opposed to uh, hitting the corner directly which would be a straighter line. Uh, would prevent the uh, other spider from uh, dropping poison. There is a blue herb planter over here, though, so if you get hit by poison, it's a quick recovery. Leon gets a free heal after the alligator boss, but Claire does not, so any damage that you take is it's going to... Good. Yeah, you're not. Yeah, you're not getting a free heal out of it, so gotta use a first aid spray at some point. Also picking up these flame rounds. So the flame rounds right there are uh, absolutely important for the uh, for the G two boss on the elevator because they will stun lock him basically every shot. Yeah. So as long as you're hitting your quick shots, that makes that fight a lot uh, a lot more optimal than any other animal that you can use there. Yeah. So. Uh, Nabson is on the alligator boss. There is a strat to do the alligator boss faster. You basically wait to uh, to hit the button to release the canister until the alligator swings its head uh, three times to the right. And there's maybe about like a two or three frame window. It's uh, kind of generous, but uh, it will absolutely ruin the run if you mess it up. But uh, if done correctly, then the alligator will uh, scoop up the canister into its mouth quicker. By about a couple of seconds, so just like a just like a tiny little animation glitch. Let's see if Rebecca gets it as well. So Rebecca is running over. Rebecca got the slow pattern.
but the ideal is uh, the ideal for safety's sake is you would rather hit the button earlier rather than later because if you press the button too late, then the boss will just completely avoid the canister and uh, the run is the run is over at that point based on the uh, based on the ammo route because you're not going to be able to recover from it. But if you press the button early, then the alligator will scoop the canister into its mouth slower. But um, it's uh, it's. But you know you're 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 not going to you're not going to see any time gains. And it's slower, but at least you'll be able to keep running. Also, on the way back, Rebecca has to, or Rebecca just. Uh, slowed down a little bit so that uh, Sherry could compensate and move back because if you try to run a straight line for some reason Sherry just like deviates to the left her uh, her pathing is a little buggy there also you have to you have to slow down a little bit so that Sherry can catch up with you enough uh, I think it's I think if it's something like uh, I don't know three sherry lengths away. With something like three sherry lengths away, she will uh, she will move into the next down. room with you. Oh. But otherwise, if you move too far away, if you move too far ahead, then sherry will just sit down, and you have to go back and pick her up. So far, no, uh, no, no, no sherry shenanigans. But that will all end uh, by the time you get to the second Birkin boss fight. So uh, Napson coming up uh, into the dead factory, slowing down a little bit so sherry can get around, and then uh, pops a zombie with a flame round. If you got a gun that can uh, wipe a zombie in one shot, you might as well use it. Because we gotta wait for Sherry anyway. You can take your time dodging these zombies. And grabbing the grenade rounds and the uh, flame rounds here. Rebecca going through the dead factory, pops a zombie. So Napson doesn't pick up uh, the flame rounds in there because uh, you would have to bend down in order to pick them up based on the position on the floor. And that costs about a couple of extra seconds to grab them. So if you're going to pick up items or if you're going to pick up ammo, like if you have to pick up ammo, the ideal is that it's the ammo that deviates the least from your path and also the ammo that just takes the least time to pick up. So okay. if it's on a table, you could pick it up, but otherwise you might have to uh, leave it behind. Nabson's coming up on this uh, on the third boss, G-Mutant, or sorry, G2. Uh, he just needs to run to one side, and uh, the flame rounds actually do um, the flame rounds actually do uh, stun lock on pretty much every shot. It can uh, G two can slowly creep at you a little bit, so it's just a matter of like getting the correct amount of space before you start to barrage him with flame rounds. And so after seven flame rounds, you can move a lot closer to the ladder that is next to the door. You can't climb that ladder until the boss is beaten. Otherwise, you'd just be able to spam shots at him and just like effectively cheese your way through the boss fight, but they prevented you from doing that by making it so that you have to kill the boss before you can climb the ladder. But it's uh, seven shots, move to ladder, fire two more shots, and then when the boss is, uh, when the boss registers its uh, death animation, climb back up the ladder. You're good to go. Completely free. It would be what, one more shot from the uh, when he's down with the flamethrower. Sorry, one more time. Yeah, it's one more shot from Flair after he does the uh, the, the roar to show you that he's almost down. It should be just one shot at that point. Or the flame rounds rather. 
Oh, why did I see- why did I see two times on Nabson's screen? Am I crazy? Oh. Either way, yeah, so, um... Yeah, because- because Birkin actually has a, uh, has like an extra animation that he has to go through before he can actually trigger his death animation. Which is why it, uh, which is why it does that. So you can't just like, spam the bullets, you have to wait for him to like, do a little mutation. Where he's just like, you know, slowly limping towards you. And then after that, you shoot him one, two more times in order to actually uh, register the kill. So Nabson's coming up on the uh, Nabson's coming up on the uh, the ivies over here. Uh, once you open the shutter, it's really just as simple as uh, squeezing behind the two ivies directly to the left. He angled himself at the switch actually in such a way that he would already be facing the ivies, so he's uh, losing as little momentum as possible going through the door. If you try to take a straight line towards the switch, then you would have to pivot a little extra in order to run behind the ivy. And it would end up costing you uh, about a third of a second, maybe. Going through the uh, liquor hallway, he uh, pivots a little bit. As it has been found that uh, doing that tends to give you slightly better odds against the liquors, trying to get through them. Basically, if you do not have a first aid spray when coming back through there and... Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a very risky room. You can see that, yeah, Rebecca actually had to pivot there a little bit after she hit the switch. Going through here. Clean lines, getting the card key. So Rebecca pivots. Very clean yeah, liquor hallway clean. from Rebecca. Yes. On the way out, Nabson takes an extra first aid spray just to uh, ostensibly to make sure that he maintains his lead. Because there will still be uh, there will still be three liquors on the way back, and they will absolutely ruin you. But also, having the first aid spray does increase your chances of being able to do the uh, YOLO pattern in the, uh, in the MODISC room as well. Because the MODISC pattern for, uh, for, for Claire is, uh, is a bit scary. little stutter step there to try and manipulate the first liquor to either jump or lick at you and manage to very narrowly avoid getting his getting his neck chopped by that final liquor The uh, ivy there actually doesn't really do a whole lot. It takes a while for its attack to wind up. Let's see how Rebecca fares in the uh, liquor hallway on the way back. Little stutter step. Unsuccessful in manipulating the first liquor, dodges the second liquor. Flying head chop misses. Cleared. That room is extremely scary. And Absent picking up the uh, final case of uh, of grenade rounds there. Puts up, puts down the VAM cartridge. Dodges in between. He is going for some very risky dodges here. He's yeah, ostensibly he's saving the uh, flame rounds for um 
the final set of zombies if he decides he doesn't want to do the uh, yellow pattern to use the uh, or to uh, get through that room. I think two bikes we still came up fine. Yeah, because he was still at uh, like he took he took a swipe from a liquor. Uh, the super liquors I think still do about twenty two damage from like a uh, from like a regular swat swipe. Unless you unless the hit that you take is going to put you in caution, in which case it does eleven damage. Rebecca uses uh, Rebecca uses a quick turn with the grenade launcher. To eliminate a zombie and uh, yellows the rest of the room. Also a very interesting way of dealing with that room. So Nabson absolutely shooting these zombies. Uh, those first two zombies, you there is a possibility you could run around them, but uh, it's still pretty risky. So sometimes yeah. it might be better to just shoot to just shoot the uh, the one that you can't dodge. Nabson also is running in caution, so if there's going to be any time for Rebecca to catch up, or at least make some of this ground up, it's now. But we might be... Might be too little too late at this point. We'll see, though. Yeah, it appears as though Nabson is uh, waiting to use the uh, the VAM activate, or to use the... Uh, to use the uh, vaccine medium cartridge. Actually, no. He didn't even pick up. Uh, he didn't even pick up any heals there. Rebecca is still Rebecca fine. So very clean lines coming through that zombie. Absolutely. So yeah, with the with the GameCube version, the IGT is accurate between between runners. So even if uh, even if one player has uh, has like a loading time advantage, it's not going to uh, affect the end game time because what it does is it adds a fixed amount of time every time. Open doors. Yeah, for some reason I thought Napson had an extra first aid. I guess it's because Rebecca did. What's the idea? Yeah, I believe Napson picked up the other, but I believe Rebecca and Rebecca two and burn one to make room to pick up the uh, the vaccine. Hmm. Yeah, I missed that. Okay. Oh, actually, Napson still has the club key. Ooh, that's why. That's, that's yeah. really bad zombie RNG. Yeah, a couple of bites on the way out, but that's what first aid sprays are for. Yeah, Napson still has the club key. That's why he. Uh, that's why he didn't pick up a backup first aid spray, but still comes out very far ahead. So by running uh, to the left there and like uh, hanging on the corner right there, you're uh, pretty much guaranteed to not get hit by him during his first phase, but uh, on the second phase, he's going to uh, start jumping in between the uh, the tubes, which allows you to uh, basically just stand on the V and just like uh, manually pivot your aim as you were trying to shoot them, shoot him as he goes in between the pipes. So once you got the pattern down, it's you're very likely to get out of there without taking a hit, even if you are on caution. Because his AI is pretty much locked in place at that point. And Rebecca moves over to the corner over here. Same deal. Five shots. Five shots. Transforms. He did not jump on the tubes. So now she's uh, now she's turned. Wait for him to jump on the tubes. Standing on the T. 
he jumped off the tubes and now he's uh, now he's running around. And nails the kill. There we go. Oh, did I already call time for Napson? Crap. I didn't call time for Napson. Time, Napson. And time for Rebecca is coming up. And time. GG's all around. Uh, now that being said, considering this game is IGT based, we're actually going to wait out and see what we get. We don't quite know who won. Yeah, we have to wait until the uh, until the credits are over. That's when the end game time shows at the end. It was a uh, a good round. Uh, oh, we yeah. have uh, yeah. some questions. Uh, we can bring our runners back in here if possible. But uh, yeah, we I, we're not gonna know who quite won there. Uh, in terms of time uh, for RTA, uh, Nabson was a bit faster than Rebecca, but considering this game does have variance in load speed, we're not gonna know till we see the end screen on both runners. Honestly, that was just such a close race between the two of them all the way to the end. <laughs> like it was crazy to watch. It was so, it was yeah, it was a very 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 solid race. Yeah. Very good uh, performance so how from about both runners. We, uh, Oh yeah, they're, uh, perfect. All right, so we're gonna start over on Team Stars here. Rebecca, how did you feel about the run? I was scared about the the last zombie after I got the vaccine. <laughs> I, I was very scared, but I I'm proud of this run. We 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 were very close. GG Snapson. <laughs> that was amazing. Very exciting. I move in. Cheers. <laughs> Gracias. <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, we still do need to see. Uh, I know a few people in chat were mentioning that it did seem that your um, the load speed was slower on your end. So it's hard to say if that's the difference or not. Uh, but going over to Team Umbrella, Navson, how did uh, how did you feel about the run? Yeah, uh, overall it's was a decent run. The beginning was bad for me and the end also, but overall I'm pretty happy. So let's see which IGT we get and GG's to Rebecca. It was a GG's nice race. Time. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, I do know at the end there, what's coming down to the wire, uh, Rebecca's end game was pretty good with the safety fast, but uh, uh, Naps, on your end, you actually uh, were looking pretty dicey going into G4, uh, being on, what, caution? Uh, yes. Yeah, I was a little bit too greedy. I thought I could uh, squeeze through the naked zombies, uh, but no. I had the bullets. Uh, I could just shoot and accept the small time loss instead of the huge time loss of caution running. Uh, but whatever, it is what it is. Well, even though it was a big, even though it was a big time loss, you know the ca the caution running, mm. like you still like still like still committing to committing to everything. You know it was still it was still very clean. And uh, yeah, we're just kind of chilling on the credits here for uh, for a brief moment. Uh, so I guess uh, let's go to the Rebecca's side. Uh, Rebecca, if anyone wanted to find you on Twitch or anything like that, where can they find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitch uh, as Rebecca RE and also on Twitter as uh, Rebecca RE13. <laughs> uh, perfect. And uh, Nabson, if anyone did want to find you, where can they find you? Yeah, I'm also on Twitch. Uh, Nabson underscore one is my channel. If you want to see some RE2 action, then you are welcome. Heck yeah. So Nabson's final time was uh, 106.47. All right, we have one, 106.47. It's all going to come down this to the wire really, right now. This is so clenching. <laughs> I'll say uh, right now, uh, you know, even if Umbrella does take it, we'll still be running out the rest and hope that Stars can uh, get more than one point. But uh, we're not going to know. We'll have to see. Yeah. Rebecca played a very safe run. Let's see what she got. So we had a uh, 106.47 over on Napson. Yeah, Napson was 106.47, and Rebecca is 107.29. Uh, 
I uh, was close, but was it does nervous. go <laughs> to Team Umbrella. GG's, that's one. GG's. Yeah, that GG's. Is one to six. Uh, we do have plenty more runs uh, going for today. Uh, up next, we're going to be preparing a run of Resident Evil 3 Remake. Uh, before we go, uh, does everyone in the RE2 uh, crowd here want to say goodbye to the Twitch chat? I'll leave it up to uh, I'll leave it up to leave it up to our runners here. Yeah. All right. I hope you have enjoyed the race, and there was also coming up a lot of nice races as well. So stay tuned and enjoy the show. Yeah, have fun, everyone. <laughs> All right. Perfect. Uh, Thank you so much. And that being said, we'll be right back with the Resident Evil Three Remake. Don't go anywhere. All right, everyone, welcome back from the break. Hope you've been enjoying the Resident Evil Relay so far. I am one of your hosts, Ignitis. And I'm Catlink. Welcome on back. That Resident Evil 2 classic race was surely something with the back-to-back, -back, neck to neck shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder action. It was that so good. That it was. And now we're going to be moving on to Resident Evil 3 Remake, which is going to be very exciting because they're going to be doing no intro so the runner the commentators will be able to explain all of that to you uh but i guess we should introduce our runners yeah so yeah. let's hop on over all right so on stars we have mike wave if you'd like to say hello the way and around. Introduce yourself. oh sorry umbrella all the sorry. Way around. <laughs> right, nevs would you like to say hello sorry you're a little tired today nevs on stars team say hello <laughs> <laughs> uh hi everyone my name is mike the game yet oh what's up oh. i don't know if we're on the game yet on the oh there we go okay i believe so <laughs> and on uh team umbrella we have mike wave if you'd like to say hello and introduce yourself i started way too early but yes my name You're is all mike good i uh, go by mike wave on twitch.tv i run a lot of resident evil games ran a lot of 3r uh but i've ran other games like 4og uh re5 and those games as well <laughs> yeah, we we me and Nevs have a lot of history uh grinding this game together and trading records and stuff. It it's we we really really Ooh. enjoy running this game. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, so that's going to be <laughs> very exciting. It's like a rivalry friendship sort of thing yeah. going head to head. I'm here for it. Um all right, awesome. And we have our commentators today, Captain Ezekiel and are the one and only Eggdysis joining us, if you'd like to say hello, guys. Hello. It's me again. You'll see me <laughs> again later as well. Uh, I'm here to commentate for two very legendary runners, so this will be a very fun fun run. It's uh, me as well. I am a sympathizer for RE3 Make and just like the game. Awesome. Well, I guess with that being said, uh, our commentators, you guys can take over and uh, start when you're ready. All right, Zeke, would you like to count them down? Yeah, and just before I count down here, just so everyone understands what no intro is, it's essentially where the game starts off of a save file in the subway uh, area, uh, I suppose, um, after the apartment and being introduced to Nemesis and everything. So just so everyone's aware, it skips the whole intro to the game, uh, basically a few minutes of it. Um, not too much, but you'll, you'll if you played the game, you would know why. <laughs> um, all right. So, uh, oh, uh, before oh. I cut down, Nebs, I th did your game crash? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all good, all good. We're all good. Um, okay. All right, there we go. We got it. We're good. All right. <laughs> okay, Perfect. I will count it down on go. So, if you're both ready, uh, oh, I mean, you don't get it. Okay. Gotcha. All so right. we're just let them line up here, and then uh, Mike, you all lined up. Okay, all great. Righty. Three, two, one, go. All right. So re three, re three. Yeah. So you're gonna see both of the runners start off by grabbing a an herb here on the right side. It's a safety herb that the runners agreed to get before 
uh, starting the run. Uh, it's important for safety reasons because there's a lot of there's some DA shenanigans and a lot of our RNG uh, that can occur in this run. So very important, you know, to be safe in a marathon sense. So a couple of mechanics we're going to cover right away. Um, biggest one and probably the granddaddy of this this category is chain dodging. Um, that's kind of how this run evolved to be as optimized as it is. Is you'll see the runners do the the dodge with Jill uh, into certain animations, into uh, enemy grabs. Um, depending on RNG here in downtown, you'll see a couple of chain dodges into a zombie dodge, uh, or you'll see like on Nevzen where he shot the electricity there because he had the RNG that would not allow the chain dodge. So. You'll see that a lot. Them dodging forward into a, a little bit of a combo to get the rollout. Very important. I mentioned it now because you're going to see it a lot. Um, one thing you also saw is it, it's kind of a <laughs> front-loaded run in terms of explanation. So you saw them shoot a barrel to blow themselves up. Now, just like Resident Evil 2 remake with Claire, Jill is faster in caution. Um, so they're going to basically play most of the run in caution. There are some parts where you have to go to find. Uh, but they will be in caution for a majority of the run, which makes the run kind of scary, but very important that they're faster. Uh, also, we have both of our runners grabbing a grenade. We're going to be getting a lot of uh, different just weapons throughout because uh, we do have to make sure we're properly stocked up for the boss fights throughout the game. Yeah, the boss fights are, uh, just like most RE games, they're going to be prepping for for the most part. Um, you'll see a lot of the grenade launcher and shotgun used for some of the later boss fights. And by boss fights, it's all Nemesis, so different phases of Nemesis you'll be fighting um, as they progress through here. Uh, like I said with the chain dodging, you'll see you'll see the runners like kind of dodge into animations. Now, there's an animation that's supposed to play when you go to open the store. It's someone banging on the door, and it kind of freezes Jill in place. But if you're fast enough, so they did a dodge into the interaction, it... Uh, essentially skipped that entirely. All right. So now they're at this little uh, dog, uh, I guess, alleyway here. Uh, again, they're for the dogs, I believe these dodges, for the most part, are consistent. But what the dogs do around here closer to the actual station can be kind of RNG. Uh, there's going to be a lot of that in this run is enemy RNG and a big one coming up here uh, after they dodge this zombie on the stairs is going to be Deimos. Now, this is probably one of the most reset-heavy areas, if not the most reset-heavy area of the game. Uh, there is this train station here where they have to essentially turn on four levers uh, to power the train station so that they can uh, progress the game, essentially. Um, Deimos are these little uh, bug-type uh, enemies that essentially... Uh, will kind of jump on Jill and, and, and like infect her. You'll, it, there's like a scripted cutscene that plays here where it happens after you lockpick this. And when that happens, um, you have to use an herb to get rid of it or you're very slow as you can see over there on the mic screen. He's incredibly slow and then it forces kind of a gross throw up animation. But uh, the runners have some backup herbs in the event that uh, another uh, one of the demos hit them. Uh, but there's a lot of them in this area. So ideally what the runners want is they want to be able to hit the levers and avoid the demos interrupting them because if they hit you it'll stop this little animation that you can see here happening on mic screen uh that demos hit is scripted uh that one almost always happens if you're at the correct da uh and da like we mentioned the other re games is present which is difficulty adjustment having a lower da makes this way more consistent uh however it's still pretty random if you have high da uh this can be hard because that means the demos are more aggressive i believe it's on da7 ideally they want to be on six uh, you see on Mike's screen, he's going for the second lever here. He's able to get that before the Deimos hit him, so that's good. But the, the Deimos did hit him, so he had to use the herb uh, after, because you don't want to be obviously in critical. Uh, again, yeah, Nebs also got me right now. Yeah, Nebs did not get touched yet. So far, so good. Mike hitting a good, perfect dodge to avoid that one there. One thing I would like to add really quick is when we entered here, uh, while we're explaining the Deimos, um, Nebs actually grabbed three herbs while Mike had two. Uh, so Nev's luckily even eating the hits will be pretty good on health, but Mike really has to make sure he's going to get to the demos here. Yeah, these uh, everything that's happening here is very important to how the, the rest of the run will go. Both runners had to eat an herb there. Mike is going to grab the extra herb on the way out, whereas, like X said, Nev just grabbed it on the way in. 
Uh, both runners kind of having a very similar demos there. So in terms of pace, very, very identical. Um, As well, uh, we should mention, uh, both runners agreed ahead of time. This will be an RTA-accepted uh, race. Uh, Resident Evil games have the in-game timer and the real timer. However, they don't want to have to worry about just, like, taking calls and forcing the IGT to stop. So they're just going as fast as they can. Yep, exactly. And very common for our games to use the IGT. Oh, you also see a little aim stop there. Um, it basically skips the stagger animation Jill would normally get. And you'll notice both runners looking at the ground here. Your camera plays a massive part in how Nemesis uh, reacts to what you're doing. Uh, this is uh, a lineup here so that you can get this dodge on Nemesis. This is heavily influenced by your DA rank. Um, what, what I was going to mention earlier is perfect dodges and zombies missing hits and stuff like that will get your DA up dramatically. So how the demos act actually will dictate how that nemesis interaction goes. This nemesis interaction, you'll see the runners kind of turn their camera around and look at the ground when they're going down these stairs. And then they're going to turn the camera up at nemesis so that they can time a, a chain dodge after him charging. You just saw Mike do it. He dodged the tentacle and Nemesis dodged the punch. Uh, very, very good for both runners to, to avoid that. Getting hit there is very brutal. And here's another important chain dodge with these two zombies here. Nice. Both runners are playing very, very well with these chain dodges. This is very hard that to do are. consistently. Yeah, this is this is going great. And now we're in the in the train station here. We just have to put this uh, static code in here. It's two, three, two rotations on uh, these sides here. So now we're waiting for the dialogue to end before we proceed. But so far, runners are playing very very well they had a very similar demos too so we're uh, we're we're off to a very heated start yeah i'm glad both runners are keeping neck and neck here uh i do think that a lot of the times probably gonna be the what the dog nemi fight as my, uh, the clock tower nemi i think it is yeah there's like there's a lot of very hard and very like almost pixel perfect strats they have to do for these for those fights um there should be there's a lot of yeah, it's going to be very exciting. And not to mention the just sheer amount of RNG. This is another dodger that is very important to hit the chain dodge on. And it matters a lot on what your DA is because Nemesis is faster on higher DA. They both hit that chain dodge, so very well done there. They're going to angle their camera down here so Nemesis does not jump in front of them as they path through here. And they're going to start doing another chain dodge down this hall with a lineup on the ground to dodge this zombie. And now here's a trickier chain dodge you have to dodge to the side on this zombie. They can't really see. They're both playing amazing. <laughs> they're, they're just not missing right now. This is this is awesome. And now we're in the subway station, and we're essentially going now uh, towards the sewers, I believe. Remembering the uh, pace of the game correctly. There's a little Nemesis chase sequence here. Now, you can risk it and go straight toward the end and hope he doesn't turbo you, but I don't think either runner will be doing that, uh, considering oh, the fact that it is RNG. Oh, no, okay. A little bit late on the uh, shot there. I thought Nevs may have been going for the risky strat for a moment. Yeah, that strat is very, very risky and not worth it. Not in a marathon setting because of just how how bad it can be, because Nemesis will punch you off of this if he turbos, and it's just completely random. Uh, but both runners making it here perfectly so, fine. So, I am going to be interested in seeing this part. Uh, I know uh, casually this dodge is hard for a lot of newer runners and just for casual players. Uh, luckily, I don't think our runners are going to have too big a problem here, but we are about to hit the uh, what little frog, uh, the what, it's the Gamma Hunters? Yep, the Gamma Hunters. Uh, there's a little tight um, dodge that you can do before that call triggers that you saw Mike get, but never seen. Very tiny time save, but it requires a lot of mashing. Um, so the gamma is here. So now this is also another section where these these chain dodges are going to be very very important. The gammas do not mess around. They are very very lethal enemies, and if you get hit, you will get stuck. We also have both uh, runners grabbing an extra grenade right now. We do need these for the next Nemesis boss fight. Mm -hmm. Uh, you'll see here at this Gamma, they're going to do uh, a little dodge as it does a certain part of its animation. Both runners hit it, and there's another chain dodge here they're going to do to line up for the second Gamma and do the same thing. Ooh. Oh, uh, we have uh, Nevs eating a hit, but luckily he is out and had that safety herb from earlier. Yeah, very, very fortunate that he got knocked to the side like that instead of underneath on the right side. If you get knocked on the right side, you actually get stuck next to the Gamma, and you will and even just worse, it's a one-shot, so... Yeah, the gammas will eat you, and it's not fun, but uh, not too uh, bad of a setback there. Just a few seconds. Uh, now, here's another chain dodge where you're dodging into a stagger from the gamma. Uh, this is just to get on the other side of it so that you don't get stuck. 
uh, Mike is going to do uh, a little pause here before this chain dodge so that you can line up and get the perfect dodge to the ladder. This one's tricky, and it's very tight on the timing. And if you Nebs. mess it up, this... Oh, oh. Nevs needs a hit. Uh, are we going to make it to the ladder, though? Uh, looks like we are getting a load. Uh, yeah, that, that load might... is smart. Luckily, it's a slight, a slight setback, but it can still be anyone's game. Uh, yeah. These dodges are pretty mean. Yeah, this is a rough, rough area. These dodges are not forgiving. Loading the save is, is pretty smart there since there's no available herb. Uh, and Nebs had ran out of herbs there, so taking that load is, is probably the right move because you're very slow. And not only are you just slow moving, but your chain dodges are also slower when you're in uh, critical. So nice, he hits it there. On Mike's end, he got the battery he needed to progress to the door to get up to the next area and finish off the uh, sewers. You saw Mike spin his camera like crazy after going up the stairs in the chain dodging. Because when you chain dodge upstairs, at the very end of it, if you spin your camera around like that, um, it's believed that you uh, get pushed forward a little bit, it speeds up a little bit the process. And Neb's grabbing the battery here as well, getting past this gamma that spawned, so nice to him. He's also gonna be leaving the sewers here. On Mike's end, uh, he started this next little nemesis chase sequence. It's kind of like a loose chase sequence. Not really, you're not really at risk of getting hit or touched by him. Um, and he stair skates up these uh, stairs to uh, essentially spawn nemesis to start chasing from behind him. We will be seeing that uh, nemesis boss fight in one moment on Mike's side, though. So that should be pretty fun to uh, check out. Yeah, the Nemesis 1 boss fight is, is very interesting how it works. Uh, I'm not sure if it's DA reasons or some buggy reasons, but the fight ends very fast in a way you wouldn't really expect. Ooh, oh, we do Nebs. have Nebs eating a bite here. Although, is that Thankfully, just in a caution? He's still in caution, yeah, so he's, he's, yeah. he's probably just above 300 health, <laughs> which would, anything below that would probably put him into critical. So yeah, these chain dodges, like, like we said, very, very scary and punishing. Now, over here on Mike's end, he will be getting to Nemesis 1. Uh, the way this fight works, essentially, is he's going to start it off by just shooting Nemesis a few times and try to blow up the tank on his back uh, while uh, strafing to the, uh, to the side when he starts shooting the flamethrower. Once that uh, happens, he throws a grenade, and it'll essentially blow up on the next pistol shot. So now that this is done, he's going to pick up some ammunition around the arena, and then he's going to line up to throw a grenade at Nemesis the second his iframes end, which is when he takes a step uh, forward there. Just like that, Nemesis is dead. Perfect fight from Mike. Hopefully, uh, Nevs will be seeing a similarly good fight here. Yeah, he's coming up to it here in just a moment. That Nemesis 1 boss fight looks like it's super fast and easy. Uh, it, it's it's a little tricky to understand, but of all the Nemesis encounters, it is on the lighter sides. It does pick up pace pretty pretty substantially. Um, so Nev's gonna do the same thing in here, shooting the tank on Nemesis back. He got a crit, so he actually blew it up early, which crits are a thing in this game, and they do play a pretty big part uh, in the run. All right, so far it's going pretty good. Uh, so make sure we get that uh, grenade throw all nice and easy, and this fight should be clean. Yep, all right, just like that, right. nice. Very good, good fight on Nev's side. Up. Yeah, that was really good. And he picks up the herb for safety, very smart. Also, uh, let's see uh, if we can ask the uh, the tech to possibly get the audio on Mike's side. Uh, currently, Mike is in the lead. Uh, we might want to shift some of the focus there, if possible. Uh, hopefully, we can. Yeah, on, uh, on one thing they picked that's very important that Mike just picked up, you'll see Nevs pick up here shortly, is the stock to the shotgun. Um, it's actually a very important thing to pick up because the... Uh, when you combine it with the shotgun, it not only increases your rate of fire, but it also replenishes the ammo in it without having to actually use ammo. That'll be a very big deal later uh, for the Nemesis 2 boss fight. Now, Mike said he's getting chased by Rocket Nemesis. You'll see him face his camera a certain way. This is to force Nemesis to path a certain way and not run you down right away. Uh, like I said earlier, camera, very big deal. Uh for Nemesis, because it will stop him from just running you down and hitting you instantly, and he's very, very hard to react to when he's behind you. Nice chain dodge by Mike to get through that without getting staggered. Well done. Now 
Nice little quick turn on the corner there by Nevs. Yeah, th some of these uh, these enemies here, it's a different enemy type. Uh, I forget what these guys specifically are called, but they're like the little tentacle stab dudes on the heads of the zombies that are pretty lethal. The dodging them is a lot harder since they're really fast. Uh, but once you understand the tells, it's a bit, it's a bit more uh, reactable. This is insane. And now Nev's also running away from a rocket nemesis, and on Mike's end, he's kind of waiting for a scripted big head that just fell off a building to roll by before he can uh, leave the area. Nice chain dodges by Nevs. These chain dodges here to dodge this rocket are very important because the rocket, as you can see, uh, that just touched Nevs as they kind of stagger for a while. So it's best to avoid them. Joe, this way. Now on Mike's end, he runs into Carlos. And now we're going to start the Carlos RPD section shortly after we follow him through the subway a bit. So, Zeke, real question is, I do know a lot of runners of RA3 do know about it. Carlos, do you think any of our runners are going to try going for the YOLO Carlos? Uh, YOLO Carlos and 3Make? Uh, in, I think in 3Make, it's it's the showers. Um, yeah, it's the, uh, I think you just toss the flashbang in there and you just run. Yeah, so actually, this route is uh, advanced even beyond that. Now it's even more YOLO. Um, they uh, optimally will just try to run through the showers uh, with no flash. Um, if very tight corner turning uh, and very precise movement, you can get through it without getting hit, but it is very, very hard. Uh, I believe both runners will probably go for it. Uh, also, I did see this question uh, come in chat. Um, sometimes the runner, uh, the runners will be shooting stray shots because uh, that every missed shot, I believe, does lower DA. That is correct. Yep, shooting shots here will drop your DA. You'll also see it uh, now that Mike is playing as Carlos. He's also going to be doing that uh, to drop the ammo in his inventory and to drop his DA essentially as well. Now Carlos doesn't have dodging. He has this little punch counter thing. Uh, where it's just, he kind of punches in the direction. So you see that used a little bit. Mike is kind of shooting Brad here to keep him away from him and dumps him out. And he's going to take an intentional bite. And now when he does this, it's going to skip a dialogue uh, that lets him get into this room faster uh, with T. So now that he skipped that, he's going to dump a bunch of ammo and he's going to run up here and uh, probably grab this herb uh, once he's done doing this. Let's find him and take him into custody. Custody? I thought this was a rescue. Now we're essentially waiting for uh, his uh, dialogue to end. And when when this ends and we can open up this uh, chest, you're going to see Mike deposit some items and adjust his inventory a little bit to make uh, some space happen. Because we need we need space for certain things we're picking up here as Carlos. Right. Good to know. I'll open the shutter so you can get through. You stay here and so the way Nevs is doing this is he's going to counter punch uh, Brad, and then he's going to take the intentional bite. I think this bite might have been a bit too early, uh, as I think he was looking to counter him one more time before doing that. But still, it's very minor. If if that was a mistake, it, it might not have been. Uh, just the way runners do it, it can be a little bit different. Um, he's going to do the same thing Mike did a moment ago, pick up the herb, dump some ammo, and get ready to deposit some items in the stash so now over on mike's end we're in rpd which is if you remember from re2 uh because technically re3 is a prequel uh you'll notice that uh he's doing some very uh important quick turning of corners using aim picking up a very important flash that we will use later uh this room is uh dependent on how you do this punch and this uh this room can be done a little bit differently so he's gonna do a punch and an aim and then stop a second so that he can force that zombie to walk forward and get through this without getting bit. That's very hard to do consistently. Uh, it's a lot of very tricky movement stuff, so awesome job to Mike for nailing that first try. Carlos is incredibly risky because there's a lot of stuff that happens, right? There's a liquor that's going to be down here uh, that you have to hit a very important aim tech to essentially bait a hit and avoid it. Uh, so we'll see if Mike can hit that here in a moment. This is a very volatile area. She's going to throw a flash here to get the hunter blinded. We did, uh... He's going around here. Or rather, get the most of the zombies blinded. Doesn't really blind the hunter. 104 is the code. He's going to go over here to grab a battery that we need for the explosive. 
Now, leaving here is very important. Mike's going to turn his camera around while he runs down this hallway. And what he's going to do is do an aim when the hunter is close to bait a swing. Just like that. That was very well done. Uh, we nice. do have Nevs get, uh, getting nicely through the horde there. And I do I like that Nevs was not uh, doing the, uh, the shove aim on the second zombie, only the first. Yeah, that's more of a YOLO strat. Very risky. Speaking of YOLO, Mike is not going through the showers. And if uh, he hits the... Oh my god! Perfect. It's so smooth when he did I, it done perfectly. Uh, well, he went for it, and that's beyond the YOLO I was even talking about. That is just a... He, he just went for it. Yeah, he just did it. That's that's Mike. He, I definitely hope that Nevs will have similar luck going into that very same hallway. Yeah. So far, Nevs has been having a pretty good RPD, so he's going to go in here and do the same thing. 104 for the code. Grab the battery. Now, he also is going to essentially try to do the same thing, I believe, with the hunter. Not the hunter, sorry. The liquor. You got uh, called out in chat, by the way. They're looking. I'm sorry, guys. It's too many Resident Evil games. I'm going to call them the red hunters now. We had the, you know, the, the fish hunters, the, the, uh, the, you know, the brain hunters and the green hunters. The green hunters, yeah. Uh, Nebs opted for a counter punch instead of doing the aim tech there, which also works just uh, as well to stop time. the hunter. Let's see on Nebs' side how it's going to go. Uh, we can just cheer that on. Let's hope it goes well. Yeah, I believe in you, Nebs. All right, so far it is clean. He does not offer the pot, but he just gets nice. in there nice and clean. That was uh, very good right there. Uh, yeah, man, these two runners are just insane. Absolutely. <laughs> They're so good. Uh, I think Nevs is getting more in the groove, and that should be nice. Uh, on the mic side, hopefully we get the audio going over there, because uh, right now we are entering Nemi 2. This boss fight is going to be wild. Yeah, very important. The very start of this fight, incredibly crucial to the fight, is a very specific shot to hit Nemesis. It's almost pixel perfect as we in the animation here. Mike's going to grab ammo, and he's going to try to hit Nemesis in a certain way that'll stagger him. Oh, he's going to retry it. See, when you miss it, you have to retry it. It is a absolute necessity that you hit this shot. He's going to try it again here. He's trying to shoot Nemesis so he falls a certain way, just like that. And now he's going to shoot this uh, eye twice. And then he's going to combine the shotgun to inf uh, refill his ammo, shoot it a bunch more times here. After you do this, he's going to run backwards and switch to mine rounds to stick a mine on Nemesis. And he's doing a bunch of ammo swapping while he does this. It's very hard to keep up, but he's reloading both guns and he's switching ammo types between the guns. He's now going to roll and light Nemesis on fire. Very important to not hit Nemesis directly or else it'll, he'll stand up. So he's going to shoot a few more times. He does not want to push him below a certain amount of health. I believe he does not want to get too far underneath 40. Um, he's going to do another shot to stagger Nemesis out of the air. He didn't get hit. That's perfect dump some more shots into him. He's going to do a reload, and then he'll do another uh, flame round shot on him to pull him out of this little animation. And now a few more shots, and he should be dead. Perfect, Perfect. Fight on nice. The side. And now we can hop right over to Nev's same exact fight. Let's see how it goes. Uh, hopefully get the audio over here on Nev's. Oh, we do get a miss on the shot, though. Same. Hopefully it'll be one load, and I hope it won't be two. Uh, let's see what we got here. Nice. Yep, there it is. That shot is so perfect it's hard to do same thing he's gonna uh, combine the shotgun to refill the ammo so he can shoot faster he's gonna run back switch and drop a mine on him and drop a mine on the bus to catch nemesis as he's running around the arena do his reload switch his ammos he's gonna do the same thing where he shoots near nemesis and not hitting him directly very important gets his shots in Nemesis is going to do a jump. He's going to shoot him out of the air. Slight stagger there. Not a big deal. All right. So far, so good. He's going to do his reloads. Shoot Nemesis one more time. Nice. Honestly, good job. Fight both, on, um, both runners there. Uh, we can probably hide back on Mike uh, as he is getting deeper into the hospital here. Uh, yeah. Hospital's going to be similar gameplay as we had earlier. Uh, the only difference is we'll be getting a major enemy of the Hunters, but ultimately, I don't think they're going to be a huge deal for our runners here. Yeah, the Hunters are... There's, there's been a method developed for this to make it a bit more consistent in the, the double Hunter room. That's going to be the biggest room of this area, is that double Hunter room. Uh, Mike will be approaching shortly. Uh, he has to go through a couple areas and get some items. And you also see the runners, like when Nebs did there, killing a zombie intentionally because you have to go back through these areas and you need certain zombies to be dead or they will cause a big, big problem. Uh, 
So Mike is going to uh, go over here, and we're trying to get a key card, essentially, and a recording device so we can get through these areas. And you'll see Nebs, you're shooting the leg off of a zombie there, because when we come back through this area, that zombie can be a big problem if they're not disabled. Mike's going to grab the key card that he needs here out of this locker. When you do this, uh, a hunter is going to spawn uh, coming up into this little hallway here. Uh, if you face your camera up towards the sky, when you trigger this uh, hunter, it will ignore you for the most part. It'll just kind of sit there and chill. All right. And now on uh, Mike's end here, he has the key card, so he's gonna go to the next area. We're essentially trying to get a vaccine to cure Jill. That's the whole premise of what we're doing here. Get the vaccine, cure Jill, um, and, you know, look pretty while we're oh, doing there's it. There's the room. Two yeah, hunters, this is... and we need to get a, what is it, the, the, the tape in the very yep. back of the room? Yep, so Mike's going to go in this room and aim to beta hunter swing, and the second hunter's little RNG, he gets the good pattern there. Now, going back is equally as difficult. They're going to kind of jump around a bit. Nice punch aim there to juke Perfect. that hit. That was amazing. Shoot that zombie to disable him. That was really nicely done by Mike. You know, I think Mike is really pulling out all the stops today. Mike has been playing pretty flawlessly. He's yeah. He, Mike is in like he's really wearing the umbrella <laughs> team with pride right now because everyone on umbrella has been pumping. So we should probably do a, can we do a last minute swap on uh, <laughs> on uh, Mike possibly here. <laughs> It's our, I have faith in this. I, think I swear I balanced these teams evenly <laughs> when we drafted this. That's how the races go. I think go. the star side is just unlucky because we had some brutal RNG on all sides uh, throughout the whole event so far. Yeah, that's Resident Evil speedrunning for you. And hopefully uh, we can hop on the audio back on Nevs here. We do hope that Nevs will get kinder RNG. I will say, though, um, Nevs has been killing it in the back half of the run, and hopefully we can keep seeing uh, good moves here. Uh, we get the same aim on the Hunter. We get a good uh, miss there uh, on the backtrack. Let's see what we get. Uh, going for a different try, looking at the ceilings to the ground. A uh, nice counter punch, uh, and we are out. Yeah, very clean room as well. Not getting hit too much there is basically perfect. Right? You can sometimes take a hit, and that's totally fine, but uh, both runners getting through pretty scot-free. And now Mike uh, got the vaccine he needs, and he's on his way back to Jill before he starts the cabin section of the Carlos area. It's kind of like Cabin of Resident Evil 4, except it's it's way more tame. Uh, it, is, it is based on kills to a certain degree. You just have to kill all the enemies, but it's very... Um, to know was what the it, it's very forgiving for the most part since it's on standard and you have this assault rifle which kind of pumps so you'll see Mike kind of blasting every enemy until a hunt a forced hunter interaction happens about halfway through uh, luckily we still have plenty of run here uh, there are some parts later that uh, could affect things it's not out yet but I guess it'll really come down to uh, what uh, going into nest yeah Ness is is just as lethal. Uh, any like any big mistake in Nest could could just tip the run in either favor, because uh, Nest is very unforgiving as well. If any mistakes happen, uh, I definitely have a good feeling that I think Nevs will close some of the gap here. Like at the very least, we don't know how much, but uh, I think Nevs's back half is he's getting a lot more comfortable in the run now. Uh, he's been playing a lot of sections pretty well here, and hopefully we'll be able to continue seeing that. Yeah, he's also coming up here to start his cabin section now this section just take a few minutes so both runners will be sitting here kind of blasting zombies with the assault rifle and the pistol um while we wait for basically waves to spawn and a timer to happen so what we're waiting for right now is you'll see on mike's end shortly is the power will go out and we'll have to go into a room and uh, take care of a hunter and grab some grenades and stuff that we'll we'll need which uh, we can probably bring the audio back on uh, mike right now as we finish up his cabin uh, and then we'll probably keep it there just for a wee bit since we'll be hitting the uh, the fuse puzzle. Or pu could we call it a puzzle? I think it's a puzzle. Uh, the fuse yeah. gathering. Let's go with that. It's gathering the yeah. fuse. The game Resident has like, the one puzzle. <laughs> it really does, yeah. <laughs> Fuses. You're basically, oh. it's electrician simulator. Oh, no, the only puzzle is the, uh, what, you're making the, the cure. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, and the, the train station one a little though. bit. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, so you see the power went out and the hunter breaks through the wall. Grab a bunch of grenades here. We're gonna throw the grenade to kill the hunter and the zombie. And now we're essentially in that same sort of dance we were in before, killing a bunch of zombies. Now what we're waiting for here is uh, we're gonna kill zombies until another hunter spawns to that window there uh, to the right of those glass doors. Um, so the second most uh, left window there is where a hunter will spawn in a bit. Uh, as long as we have all the zombies dead. That's kind of the check for this, is all the zombies have to be dead for the next wave to spawn. Uh, that being said here, uh, cabins, uh, I guess more of a fun, uh, not a fun, but not fun. Uh, if you do die in the cabin, if Hubris does get you, I think you have to reset the very beginning of the cabin, don't you? Yeah, you go all the way back to the start, I believe. Um, Part of me wants to see you might go back to when the power goes out, but I can't remember. I guess I'll see a Nev's end if he gets a checkpoint. Um, but yeah, if not, then yeah, you go all the way back to the start. It's pretty brutal. I mean, in most cases, runners will almost never be dying here, but uh, Hubris can get the best of us. I don't think it'll happen here, but it's just one of those things that could occur. Yeah, it is. It it's easier to die here than you might think, even though you have so much ammo and so many heals and everything, is it just takes a couple of bites for you to die. <laughs> and, it, and then you're just dead. Um, especially with hunters running around too. So you can see the metal grates are starting to close now for Mike, uh, which means the hunter will be spawning relatively soon for him. And when it does, he'll throw a grenade. He's kind of getting ready for it now. kind of like a bit of a pause here it's kind of very pause champ as we wait for this hunter to spawn and there it is and now what's gonna happen is a cutscene's gonna play and we're going to grab uh, the detonator and set it off on the pillar and then we're basically on just a timer then until the detonator goes off and that'll be the end of the carlos section Take that, now Mike's gonna run over and grab the detonator, put it on, and now we're just kind of waiting. And you see the timer at the top there. 30 seconds is what we have to do. And we, there's really no risk of dying here. You can just chill, you can throw a grenade, throw flashes. You kind of have a whole bunch of them here. The whole idea is you can't let them break down the door where Jill's laying, but it's really hard for them to do that And when you have so many grenades and flashes. Um, and just like that, we are done with the Carlos section. Now you're going to see on Mike's end, he's going to take control of Jill and he's going to dash forward and grab a, a pistol. This one is a burst pistol that we're going to need for later. It plays a pretty big part in the boss fights and the areas coming up. And now uh, we are going down into Nest on Mike's end. And on Neb's end, he's just now finishing up the first part of the cabin. And he too will be setting off the detonator soon. Oh, this must be the way underground. All right. Getting more chain dodging here. Chain dodging, uh, it, at the very end of the dodges, you'll get like a little slow down, you'll stop. So it's not optimal to just always dodge like that. Uh, but when you dodge into an interaction, it'll basically interrupt it, and you're able to just use the interaction. Now, chain dodging when you're in caution is slower than chain dodging when you're in fine. So if you're in fine, it is actually faster to chain dodge than it is a chain dodge in a straight line than it is to run. Um, so you'll notice that now that we're kind of forced to be in fine here, uh, for a little bit at least, uh, you'll see more chain dodging. Uh, however, uh, a very, very important uh, slight RNG interaction coming up here in the nest on Mike's end is a pale head uh, zombie. Uh, these zombies essentially uh, are very, very lethal, and we need one to put us into caution. Uh, there is one that's going to be laying here up on this railing uh, to the left of Mike that is going to fall after we turn off the power. We need it to be in a certain... Uh, a uh, certain way it falls. So it can either fall and get up standing, or it could be on the ground crawling. And I believe crawling is the bad one. We want him to be standing. Oh, standing and, it is. Yep. 
just like that, just so we can set the damage enough to be in caution and mash out after we've entered the caution state. Any longer than that, and uh, you'll you'll go into crit really fast because they they hit really hard. All right, so uh, Mike is beginning the first of the few fuses here. Every fuse is gonna kind of have the uh, little things that go along with it. Uh, I think the most dangerous fuse is the second one. I think that's the one that spawns the uh, the gamma hunter right and the uh, just the enemies in general. Uh, yes, I believe it is the second one that does that. Wait. But the path, like it, the the getting the second fuse spawns the dangerous gamma, but the path to the third fuse is probably the riskiest part of this area since there's a room with three zombies and one of palehead included that requires a very specific dodge to get through. Um, now on Nebs' end, he's going to also do the same D, uh, not DA, but health uh, drop with this zombie here. So let's hope he also gets the good RNG on this. Yep, looks like he did. The zombie will be standing. Perfect. And we have Mike coming along to the fuse right now. Uh, luckily, though, the enemies are pretty spread, so they shouldn't be an issue. But we will be going to that room where Zeke just talked about that we'll have the three zombies. Okay, you'll see Mike dodge into a gamma spawn here. Then he's going to do a triple dodge, or rather, sorry, a double dodge into this ladder before he goes into this next room. So far, both runners having a pretty good nest start, at least. Uh, but this is kind of where it gets a little bit scary. So uh, Mike's going to go into this room with the mines equipped. He's going to shoot a mine, I believe, uh, possibly. Yeah, he's going to shoot a mine in this zombie to... Ooh, the, the, that zombie did not get touched by it, but he does dodge it nicely. And now, uh, on his way back, that pillhead's going to be on the opposite side of the room, which is very, very important, because uh, we have to go back through that door. Oh, that hunter kind of a body A bit of a risky Mike, dodge. But... almost got stuck there. Yeah, getting stuck next to this It's actually easy to get owned by this hunter because of how tight that little corridor is. And let's uh, check out the pale head. Looking good. Uh, yeah. We can probably bring audio over to Nev's right now as we go through the same thing. We do have the second fuse coming on right now. Luckily, this one will be easy with the uh, quick dodges back to the ladder. But we're going to have those three zombies. We're going to have that hunter. Uh, let's uh, cheer on Nev's right now and see how this goes. Yeah, so just like earlier, he's going to grab that fuse. And he's also going to double dodge to this ladder to avoid the gamma. Thankfully, we have iframes on these ladders, or else that would be so much worse. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> All right, so Nevs is going to go into this room, and uh, hopefully he too gets the same explosion dodge. There's the dodge. So that one is a little scarier with that setup, because now that pale head is actually towards the side of the room that Nevs is going to be on. So it's a little spookier. Uh, we'll see how he gets through it. He uh, does the lane check like there leaped he just vanished he's not even around anymore he just <laughs> like mike had like a whole dodge he had to do now just like that was that was good uh let's just make sure it's clean here with the pale head uh, playing a nice to save the shotgun shell all right nevs gets through pretty cleanly uh we can yeah, bring back over to uh mike now as well for audio just as we are entering the nest yeah uh nevs knew uh i was easy very experienced runner that pale head was going to be there uh based on the room's interaction before so nice reaction from him um, and now over on Mike's end, uh, he's essentially going to get, uh, make, uh, this, this kind of, I guess, injection for Nemesis later, uh, and also getting this, uh, USB to get us through the labs. Uh, there's some, a lot of pellets in this room. He's going to be dodging around and avoiding. Now the way through the first time is pretty static and pretty, you know, consistent, but on the way back, it's when it gets kind of, can get kind of messy. Um. So we're gonna go down here and he's gonna pull one of the big generator batteries, uh, or rather push it in, I believe, uh, to power up these doors. Uh, there is a zombie that's right behind him, but it kind of sleeps. It doesn't really do anything. Uh, you're gonna see Nev shoot a flame round into the wall here. This is to skip some dialogue uh, and let him through this area instantly instead of having to wait for uh, our little friend back there to talk. Uh, that being said, right now, uh, in case we are wondering, how is this race going? Uh, currently, Mike Wave is uh, ahead by a little bit here. However, we do have one final moment that will probably be the decider, which will be the Acid Nemesis fight that is coming on up. Uh, it still is a pretty heavy fight. We have a lot that can happen here. Um, but yeah, I think we are approaching that one moment here. This room that Mike is entering is a very, 
it, it relies on a, on a sidestep here and then a grenade shot to stagger the enemies in the room. Mike's going to grab this and turn into another shot to get this guy out of the way. And now if all the enemies are staggered long enough, you can get out. That room is very, very hard to do consistently. And that was very, very well done by Mike there to get out of it without getting touched. That room is very, very scary for sure. Mike playing exceptionally well right now. Uh, virtually mistakeless. Uh, now he's shooting a couple mines down. A hunter's going to spawn there in a moment, and then he's going to shoot this hunter once, and then shoot it again. And then this hunter's going to spawn. He's going to drop another mine there and kill that one. As long as all three hunters are dead, you can progress the arena, and just like that, perfectly done. Uh, we'll have Nevs coming on to the same set of rooms. Uh, has to dodge the zombie there. The zombie was uh, much more awake on Nevs' side. Yeah, th that... It's very rare, but sometimes that can happen if you maybe interact with the thing a bit too late. But I'm just he saying, dodges I think it. the star side has been cursed as one of the meanest RNG. Like, <laughs> yeah, we it's the way it goes on the star side. But it's okay. We're having a good time. And Nev's right. playing very, very well. Let's still. bring the audio to Nev's really quick here, uh, just because we are entering that one room once again. So Nev's is gonna sidestep the zombie. He is not using the mine shot for this. This is very, very risky. It should have see how this pants over him. He does it on the way out. Wow, that's actually so incredibly that impressive to do that. Yeah, to do that first part without the mine, very hard. So that was very, very well done by Nebs. Great job there. And then we have the same hunter fight. Uh, once again, we're going to be setting the mines. Uh, just to make sure we can tag them right when they get out. Uh, we do have to kill... Uh, it's all three, right? Yep, all three hunters have to die. So you're going to see him line up these shots here. The hunter now dies as well. Nice. Good job by Perfect. Nevs. And now on Mike's end, he's starting what we call the boss rush section of the game, uh, where we fight basically Nemesis back to back. So a Nemesis 3 here, which is Acid Nemesis, um, is an interesting fight uh, that is, uh, I'd say, has a very similar premise uh, to the uh, uh, Nemi 2 fight. Oh, Oh, the bad RNG camping the corner for Nem oh, uh, for Nems there. Nems we don't there. have a. God's name is this place. We're still in danger. Uh, hopefully we can't. Hope there's an herb nearby. There is an there is a safety herb uh, coming up that he can get, but he does have to get through this room first. On uh, Mike's end, he's gonna start uh, Acid Nemi by shooting it once with the fire round and then dumping into the weak point again. Uh, and he got a crit, so it's actually gonna go straight in. That's actually can be kind of hard. Um, so he's gonna shoot a fire round and shoot him again. Now Acid Nemesis. Uh, will choose a pattern based on uh, how many, uh, what his actions are after this part. So he's lining up some mines to bring him down. He's again going to blast into his weak point. And now Nemesis is going to get up. Now, based on what Nemesis does here, will determine what tank he goes to. If it's, uh, he's doing uh, this little tantrum here, and then you'll see if he does uh, a swing in a moment, or if he'll do a run. So he's doing a swing, which means we know he's going to go between six and seven. So Mike's going to drop that mine there and wait for him to come down. He's going to start pumping more damage into the weak point. And just like that, he's dead. Very, very well done by Mike on that fight. All right. I'll be having the uh, same fight come on Nevs' side right about now. So let's uh, get the audio on Nevs, hopefully, here. Uh, although we do have Infernal Nemi, that fight's pretty straightforward. I don't think there's going to be too much more going on there that we don't already know. Yeah, Nebs will be walking up to uh, Acid Nemi here now, and on Mike's end, he will be doing the essentially scripted ne uh, final Nemi fight, where you shoot Nemi with the railgun uh, and blow up his weak points. Um, so let's see how Nebs does this fight here. He's also going to start it off with a flame round on Nemesis. And do a uh, perfect dodge to get right into position for the weak point. He's going to reload his gun as the fight now progresses into the next phase. Another flame round to pull him out of that roar, because if you if you don't flame round him, Nemesis will just scream there and stun your character. He's going to line up the mines, and that mine right there is to kill some zombies that spawn. He's going to reload his gun. Jump more ammo into the weak point. Reload all six shots, flame round him to pull him out of this little tantrum, and now... Again, more shots into Nemesis. 
And then we're going to see what he does here. He does a swing, which means he's also going to go uh, on this side here, since Nemesis didn't have to uh, do any sort of wind-up attack for that. So again, more shots into the weak point, and he's dead. Very well done by Nebs as well. I like how both Nemesis fights went down about the same time uh, during that section. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, we'll probably just keep the audio on Nevs because we are approaching uh, the uh, Inferno, ne uh, wait, the final ME fight there. Uh, on mic time will be coming up in one moment as we get the shot on Nikolai. Yeah, there is one little part. You can still lose it at the very end. Do you imagine uh, he misses the shot? If you miss the shot on Nikolai, uh, you do have to go back to like, the stair climb before. Um, hopefully not, but it does I don't happen. I think he will, but I mean... What if he just wants to take a dive right now? <laughs> <laughs> uh, on Nevs, you're going to see him use the burst shots on the pistol and one shot with the shotgun to break those two on the right. And that gives you enough time on standard to push in all the batteries to power the railgun, which is what you'll need to kill Nemesis here. Uh, and then while he's doing that on Mike's end, uh, time will be coming shortly. Uh, we'll call it on the cutscene. So he's going to go up here and he's going to shoot Nikolai, kills him, and time. All right, Mike is all on time. Let's go back to Nevs really quick as we finish up with the final Nemi, and uh, hopefully we'll get that shot as well. Go ahead. I'm gonna put you right back on your uh, Once again, we are timed by RTA, so uh, Mike, uh, I, I don't know what time we got R uh, RTA. I think it's like a 45 something. Yeah, it's like a late 45. That's a very good RTA. What is up? Welcome back. You're joining us. Uh, we're finishing yeah. up the Nev side. Uh, we will be uh, talking for a moment, but I believe you are back currently. Yep, I am. All right. GG's on your run, Mike. Thank you, sir. Uh, we'll All definitely right. uh, be talking a little bit more once we got Nevs in here, but you did good. Thank you, sir. And uh, during the run, we're saying how um, I feel like we've cursed. We put a curse on the Stars Runners, and we don't know how. Like, Star Side <laughs> has been getting brutal RNG, and. I'm hoping that the back half of this event will get some wins on the star side. Yeah, you know, you never know. Yeah, it, anything could happen, especially you with that four-hour run. <laughs> RNG oh. giveth, RNG taketh yeah. away. It's uh, like well, I mean, say. the next. Uh, <laughs> I, speaking of that, we'll have a lot more to talk about. But we're just rooting for Nebs right now as we get to the final shot. Hopefully, he does not miss it. <laughs> uh, we're I, yeah. joking that you're going to take a dive. But you're going to miss the shot. I was uh, I was a little bit anxious. I'm like, oh my god, it's going to happen. It is going to happen during GDQ. I'm going to miss the shot. Which right. And uh, Nevs has time. the shot. That's time for Nevs. Nice job. Good job to both you guys. That was, yeah, uh, that was a very, very uh, entertaining run. I very believe fun we race. back. Although I think Nevs might need to unmute on the Discord side here. Oh, there we go. Hey. Welcome back. Uh, yeah, so that was the RE3 make race. Uh, I believe we had a 45-52 on uh, Mike, and I think about a low 47 on Nevs. A low 44 looks like there's the... Uh, oh, yeah, 47 on the RTA, sorry. Yeah, yeah, RTA. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah great round, you guys. Thank you, uh, yeah. Absolutely. That, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Uh, yep. as, as we're talking right now, uh, let's start with Nevs uh, over on the, uh, the Stars side. So, Nevs, how, how did you feel about the run? Um, num, num, num. Where should I start? <laughs> so, I'm bad at the game, right? And the game <laughs> no, is not very you, you easy. Good. And the game is not the easiest game. No. Uh, it was actually a nice run, not gonna lie. If my sewers was a little bit better, I would have a yeah. shot. But yeah, I, I enjoyed the boss fights. Can't complain about the boss fights. They are usually what kills most of the runs because this game is amazing. If you get a crit, you lose your run, basically. And you mm -hmm. definitely hung in there. Uh, me and uh, Zeke were commentating that, uh, you know, early game was a bit rough. Uh, the sewers weren't kind. You had to take the reload there. But late game, you had some pretty yellow stress that paid off. Uh, there was the, uh, the one room in the nest with the... Uh, Right before the 300 fight, it had the, uh, what, the the tentacle guy. Uh, you didn't use yeah. the grenade there. You just ran in there, I think, one shotgun shell and then grabbed it and then grenaded on the way out. Oh, uh, yeah. I think Mike does the other way around, right? Yeah, yeah. we did different strats for that room. Yeah. Uh, it was definitely a uh, it, it paid off, and then as well, just going to the uh, the yellow Carlos that happened. Uh, we noticed on Mike's side, Mike had the pause in the middle of that, so it was line. You just went for it. You just went for the line there. 
Yeah, I, I can't do the pause thing. The, it messes hey, me good? up. Uh, you did good, and uh, we do want to say cheers once again. Uh, while yeah. the run wasn't the kind of snare and G, you did great, Nevs. Thank you, thank you. GG, Mike. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah GG. Uh, as well, uh, Nevs, if anyone did want to find you on Twitch, where can they find you? Oh, my Twitch is Nevs. I've been doing some, I don't know, some crazy RE4 runs now. And yeah, expect me to be running every game mostly. Sweet. Nice. Uh, and let's hop over to the umbrella side. Uh, Mike, how did you feel about your run? Uh, mostly good. I think my run was like pretty clean overall. I had to like pause a couple of times, uh, make some inventory optimizations because I know I messed up on some pickups. And I had to reset at the beginning of ME2 because I messed up the shot. So, oh, yeah, me too. Unfortunate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you I, both have out the same there. <laughs> I'm usually pretty consistent with it, but uh, it, like the rest of the fight was good, and uh, my Nemi three was like incredibly good, like really, really, really good. Did you get so, tank five? Pretty happy. No, uh, tank six because he, I, I got a crit and he, and and he uh, yeah, yeah. So it was tank six, and uh, I got a crit towards the beginning as well, but I was able to kill him at the end like faster than usual with like one less shot. So overall, I can't complain. It was it was a really clean run, I think. Yeah, well, you nice. did. Uh, you did pretty great, and you scored uh, another point for Team Umbrella, Mike. Uh, <laughs> Wait, as well. How, how's the score right now? It's Don't one to me. six. Uh, I'll yeah. definitely say that. <laughs> no, when no, me and no, Kat... no. Wait, no, no, no. Is it seven one? Oh wait. Um, yeah. You, oh, it's seven one, isn't it? Mike, yeah, why did you now. why did <laughs> you save the seven one for the Brazilian guy? <laughs> oh, what are you doing? What are oh, you doing? God, you're right. You're right. Oh, God. Well, when me and Kat seeded it, we weren't expecting the star side to get so much bad RNG. Like, <laughs> yeah, the RNG the... just kind of put a fork in everything. It was just like, well, we had it even, but, yeah, uh, you well, know. It was even when we drafted it. It just <laughs> it goes live. It's harder to say, but hopefully we'll be looking at some wins on the star side as we go on. Uh, but before we do go, uh, Mike, if anyone wanted to find you on Twitch, where can they find you? Uh, I stream over at uh, twitch.tv slash Mike Wave. No underscores anymore. There used to be, but not anymore. And uh, yeah, I run a lot of RE. Uh, I run other series as well, like uh, the Mass Effect games. I run a lot of Mass Effect 2. It's one of my favorite speed runs. Uh, I've been looking at picking up some other games, though, exploring some other franchises. But yeah, like whenever a new RE comes out, I always check it out. 3 R's, probably one of my favorites in terms of speed runs. So yeah, put a lot of hours into this game because I just find it so fun. Yeah, you put a lot of time into that Mike, game. You're, you're cold with the seven one man. You are uh, that's cold victory. Yeah, that, that's uh, yeah. I, I didn't see it until Nev's brought it up. Yeah, I didn't know. I was like, wait a minute. No, wait, you're right. <laughs> but I do want to say thank you both again. You're both uh, very excellent yeah, runners. You did great, so and it was a pleasure having you both. Yeah, of course. Thank you for having me on. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Yeah, and GG's again to Nevs. I forgot to say that. Yeah, GG, Nevs is a homie. Mr. Mike. Love, yeah, absolutely. Love, love that guy. <laughs> I love you uh, too, sir. <laughs> hey, that's who we love to see. Uh, once again, if you are watching this and you have not checked out either runner, you can find both at twitch.tv slash Nevs or twitch.tv slash Mike Wave. No underscores, just Mike Wave. Uh, as well, joined me on commentary, we had uh, Captain Ezekiel, who did a great job explaining the run. Thank you. Happy to be here. Good job to runners, and uh, thank you, Ed, for helping me commentate. Absolutely. And uh, for all of you in chat, we still have plenty of runs uh, left for tonight. Hopefully, you can see a star's wind uh, hopefully shake things up. Uh, we'll be setting up Resident Evil 1 Remake Randomizer coming up next. We'll be right back. All right, everyone, we are back from the break. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, once again, I am one of your hosts, Sick Dysis. And I am Catlink. Welcome on back, everybody. At RE3, a remake race was surely something. And also, everybody can say hi to Mr. Koopa here, our fellow oh, uh, he's back. host. Yeah, he is back for today. Um, so today and now going into a Resident Evil 1 remake randomizer with Pessimism and Marforia, which Before are... Before we get into that, uh, yeah. you know, we have... Uh, it's going to be a lot of interesting details we will go over when we get to that. 
but for those of you just turning in, uh, currently uh, the score uh, has extended a little bit here. Uh, the star side is one, while Umbrella is seven. Uh, hopefully in the back half of this event, we can see a bit more on the star side, uh, but you never know how it's going to go, especially with the randomizer, which if you've never seen a randomizer, uh, Kat, can you give a brief description of what exactly that does for Resident Evil? Chaos. <laughs> yeah, um, pretty much. Yeah, so basically think all... The enemy you would think would be in one location is in a complete different spot. Sometimes you'll get a tyrant. Sometimes you'll get hunters. Sometimes you'll get bees, sharks, land sharks. Have Lisa. <laughs> Lisa sometimes as well. Uh, and on top of that, there's going to be randomized items, which means a key you key item you'd think would be in the spot it should be is no longer there. It's somewhere else. So both the runners are going to have to scour the map to find specific items that they're going to need to proceed into the game. It should be very exciting. I, I love this randomizer. That it's it one should. of my favorites. Uh, and that being said, how about we meet our runners? Kat, would you like to introduce both sides we got? And let's hop over yeah. to the uh, the game side. So on star side, we have pessimism. If you'd like to say hi and hello and introduce yourself. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> That's fine. It looks like we are having a little bit of audio uh, difficulties. Just going to take one second. We all good? Oh, sure thing. And on the umbrella side, we have Marforia. Say hello hey. and introduce yourself. Hey everyone, uh, my name is uh, Marforia or Mar. Uh, I also speedrun a lot of Resident Evil stuff. I speedrun other stuff as well, but Resident Evil has always been my bread and butter. Um, Resident Evil 1 Remake is my favorite Resident Evil game of all time, so I love speedrunning this game. But I also speedrun Resident Evil 2 Remake, uh, Resident Evil uh, 4 Remake, uh, 7 Village, a lot, a lot of stuff. But this is uh, definitely like one of my favorite ones ever. So I, the randomizers have been so fun. So I will be doing a lot of those more in the future. Yeah, you finally got the uh, to test out the excitement of the randomizer, and I'm super excited to see how you go about it today. Uh, and you, you've always put so much effort into this run, so very exciting. Um, hopefully, Pessy, are you good on your end now? Can we maybe say hello and reintroduce yourself? All right. Awesome. Hopefully, ch chat was able to hear that one this time. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Uh, hopefully. Um, is it still? No. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. You might have to unmute in the OBS real quick. All right, though. How about we take a look at our commentators? Yes. Uh, so with us, we're having us uh, join today. J Rock and Egdysa. I'm back. I was in, uh, <laughs> I was asked to come back. <laughs> uh, I'm also back. I was here earlier for RE2 Classic, and uh, I'm here for Resident Evil Randomizer. This is 100 percent like more my speed. I'm very excited to do the commentary. I am also the orchestrator of the chaos that you're about to witness. Oh, man. Yo. Okay. I believe uh, it's next. So, uh, looking at it, uh, well, one, uh, we, we just wanted to want to repeat for general good measure, uh, Pessimism, uh, I don't know if it came out on the stream, but Pessimism did say that, one, this is uh, one of his main speed games, uh, primarily this and RE0, although I think he's done a lot of the Resident Evil titles. CVX uh, as well, in, yeah. Yeah, CVX. Yeah. And uh, he's excited to be here. Um, Much I love. I get that right? <laughs> Much love. Yeah. yeah, about that part. Um, but uh, going into it for our runners here, uh, J-Rock, what exactly have you cooked up in terms of variables? Because while we can say chaos, we don't know what kind of chaos we have. So what are we looking at for a base of rules? Uh, for a base of rules? So the basic rules are the usual agreed-upon rules. Everyone's going to be running... Still, um, it's going to be item randomizer and enemy randomizer. Uh, there are options for locks and door randos, but we chose not to use those. 
It's also going to be energy sent. So the goal is just to get the items you need to finish the game and head to the exit as quickly as possible. All righty. Right. Uh, and probably not that long away. <laughs> sounds Ooh. good. Uh, as well, uh, I think a bit of fun, our runners can pick uh, whatever jewel costume they want. And uh, while they do that, uh, third time is the charm here. Pessy, would you like to introduce Pessy, yourself officially? Yo, what that. up? What up? What up? Yo, I'm Pessimism. What's up, everyone? Spinning Resident Evil games. Appreciate your time. Hope you enjoy the runs. Much love. And yeah, let's get it. Good luck tomorrow. Good luck to you right. too, Pessy. Uh, when do you want to hop over to the uh, the other Jill? Oh, the I'll, I'll, I'll do B BSAA. Yeah. Got you. Oh, yeah. uh, let's see. Yeah, okay, cool. Makes it a lot easier. Yeah, this is really good. All right, so we have Pessy on BSAA. We have uh, Mar on Classic and J Rock. Uh, we're going to uh, have you do the honors here. Uh, that being said, our runners will not be able to hear the uh, commentary once it begins. So, runners, are you ready? Yes. Indubitably. All right, J-Rock, on your count, how do you want to do this? All right, it's going to be three, two, one, go. Oh. Two, one, go. All right, oh. Uh -huh. Oh. <laughs> oh. I made a mistake. <laughs> we're we're, we're, we're oh, starting my fault. Ready. My fault. This is how bad this man is. <laughs> I was about to press go, too, so... Uh, we'll get back to the main right. menu. It's no worry. It's no okay. worry. <laughs> Wait, he's shooting. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Try one more time. My apologies. No, it's, it's okay. all good. No, I get it. I get it. <laughs> okay, so we're going to, we know it's going to be on. Th it's going to be on the word "go." We'll count yes. down. All right, J Rock, when you're ready. All right, all right, brothers, are we yes. ready? Yes, sir. All right, three, two, one. Go. All right, let's dive into the Resident Evil randomizer. Uh, j -Rock, I know uh, we actually raided into your uh, channel while you're drafting the seeds. I'm really excited to see what you've cooked up. I've, uh, For anyone who does not know, J-Rock had uh, been DMing me a little bit about some of the shenanigans he's getting up to, because he's getting quite mean. Uh, general idea is Miller are going to be uh, seeing them unequip their weapons so we can get faster movement speed. And uh, we start with a nice herb. Yeah, the, I, the herb was the uh, the first item here we had been tested earlier to make sure that it was the uh, the seeds were working correctly, which is, you know, kind of risky because there's so many different green herbs in the game. <laughs> but things to be working correctly here. Um, but yeah, they are they're in for a very, very interesting seed. I will say that much. No, <laughs> they cannot. They are so totally will, uh, definite. I will say this. Uh, I will say this, um, I've made sure that um, most of the enemies weren't in super dangerous places. Um, it should be a... Not gonna, it should be a, a mostly pretty run. Mostly, huh? Uh, it's gonna be very, very... Mostly, yeah. We've got some issues like this uh, this, this little guy here that they're running right. into. Um, spiders are typically run killers in speed run, <laughs> in uh, randomized runs because you have no idea where your blue herbs are going to be. Okay, it looks like both runners get a dagger and a first aid here, and both uh, decide to ignore the shotgun shells. Um, okay, we avoid the spider, no poison. That was me, you put- Actually, I think Mar picked up the oh, shotgun did she? shells. All right. Yeah. Uh, looks like Pessy ignores the- ha both are ignoring handgun ammo. We have sharks already. Uh, land sharks are fun. We get one of the gems. We have uh, both runners taking the gem, and we have that's all. We already have an insignia. So people who do not know, the winning move here is that you need uh, the seven specific yes, items. Uh, which are the blue book, the red book, um, the full insignia, um, the talisman, and the insignia like shell, whatever it's the frame shell. What, what, what's it called? The uh... The stone and metal object. So the stone and metal object comes in two parts uh, for one of them. So it's going to be seven items would be the two last books, the uh, stone and metal object, yeah. the stone ring, and the metal object, which make a second stone and metal object. Uh, the fuel capsule and the key to the power. I think I got them all. Did I miss no, one? I think, I think that's I about right. Um, yep, yep. So another beautiful part about this randomizer that makes it very interesting is the end of the game is actually five rooms from the start of the game. So once you have the items, you can get to the end of the game at any point. All right. So it's just a matter of where those items are. Uh, as well, uh, Runner Flare is pretty interesting. Uh, well, apparently, Pessy did all of that work on the statue just to get a knife. Uh, well, Mara's put a lot of work in the uh, graveyard, uh, getting the one of the books there early and being able to go while Pessy's just making his way over to the graveyard. 
Um, Mar finds a sun disk but has no room. Uh, up, decides to use one of the herbs and gets the sun talisman disc, whatever you want to call it. Sorry, is my mic better? I think it's good. Did be good. All right. Um, yeah, so it, they've taken two completely different routes off the bat, and they've gotten to two different items right away. So. Looks like Mar is a little ahead as she's managed to get the sword key before Pessimism did. So we'll see exactly what they do here. Looks like Mar's plan is to take towards the safe room, probably making room to go grab a shotgun. There we go. Uh, we do have um, Mar putting in a lot of the items to the box and also grabbing a blue herb, probably to also drop that into the box. Yep, there we go. Um, it is interesting that Mar wants to keep the shotgun shells. Because, uh, you know, if she doesn't find that shotgun, I mean... Oh, no, Mar's 100% going to get the shotgun. The beauty about running Jill is that Barry will save you if you come to the shotgun immediately. And the shotgun will always be in this room because it is a hard lock if it's not, because you're just stuck here. If you grab the shotgun without the broken shotgun. Oh, yeah, oh, but so, Pessy has uh, one of the final books. That is the blue book right there in the... Uh, what is that room called? Like, it's like the side garden. That is, yeah, the side garden slash, I guess, outdoor boiler Yeah, it's where you get the fertilizer, but we have a hunter on Pessy's side as he checks the tub, gets an herb, and not much. Uh, luckily, we have Mar going to the same room. We'll hopefully find the book out there. Should find the book. If they don't find the book, then we have a serious issue because <laughs> then it would be, you know, different seeds. But it looks like the same items, so. Yeah, it looks good. Although it is really neat uh, with Mar wanting to stick to uh, shotgun while Pessy maybe just isn't expecting these shotgun shells here. So Pessy's playing it a little different and he's playing it definitely much more risky than Mar is playing it. The one thing about a randomizer is you're never sure entirely when you're going to get your first gun beyond the shotgun. So for most uh, seeds, if you're trying to play the safe and you want to grab the shotgun as soon as you can, because we definitely have the case there. You just might not run into a grenade launcher. Uh, we did get um, Mar fighting the hunter there, but uh, Pessy also eats a bite. Uh, luckily, finds an herb very quickly to heal that. Um, but runners are making their way through. And it's kind of neat to see right when we're talking about it. We had a uh, fight with the uh, the hunter there. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, wait, she's, so, she's dropping off the shotgun now. <laughs> I'm taking it back. No, no, she's just reorganizing, reorganizing the inventory. All right. Oh, so Pessimism is in a very, very dangerous room. See how he handles this. A couple of Elder Crimsons right here. Uh, meanwhile, it looks like Mar is dealing with the dogs, and she's just clearing the room. Uh, it does look like she wants safer hallways, probably upon uh, backtracking. Yes, so that's definitely... In a randomizer, it's a bit of a different strat, because some enemies perform very differently in rooms that they aren't. The uh, the dogs in those rooms have the uh, hopping ability of a prime LeBron James. <laughs> so you, you, it's a good idea to take them out, because they can hop from bottom of the steps to top of the steps easily and it's quite often unnecessary damage and a lot of time loss to repeatedly go through that um as we can see now um i think they both still only have the the two items right uh although i think mar did just get uh one of the keys i believe that's the key that goes to like the water area right or you get it around there yeah I they can't hear me, so I can tell you for a fact that none of the keys that they need for the mansion are in the mansion. <laughs> oh, this is going to be fun. This is going to be a lot of yeah, fun. Yeah, this here. is going to be great. Yeah, they can't hear us at all. So, like, I don't know the seed you're on. You obviously know all the devious plans you've seen. Uh, I'm going to be uh, kind of commentating as I see it here. Uh, I have done a rando or two in my time here. Uh, it does look like uh, Pessy does get another taser down in the kitchen. Uh, Mars finally catching up on the statue, and uh, she's going to find out it's a knife in a little bit here. Uh, let's see what kind of enemy Pessy's gonna get right here. Uh, I believe it's supposed to be like a... Is that a bee? It's a bee, isn't it? It's a bee. It's a bee. You can tell from... Uh, if you play these enough, you can eventually tell what enemy oh, it is. Oh, it sounds terrifying Based off bee. of what sound, yeah. If it's, if it's just, yeah. 
Uh, that'll be fun for the uh, the audience to also. Uh, oh wait, hold on. Mar oh. is eating the same. Uh, Elder Crimson Room does eat a bit of a hit, but luckily has a the, the herbs from earlier. You heal. Yep. All right, pessimism is sneaking his way back through uh, dog window hall. I guess um, um, he didn't have the inventory the first well, time, did he? No, I don't think he did. Well, I will say this. Let's pray that they don't have to come to this room in reverse because it will be a problem. Oh, yeah. Oh, you mean it off of the... Yeah, they, they, they don't want to find out what's on the other side of that window. Oh, boy. Uh, I'm going to guess. Uh, obviously, don't tell us yet. It might be fun, but I'm guessing it's yawn. That feels like a mean I yawn room. I won't say. All right, we'll see. Uh, hopefully, they won't. Uh, we do see another hit right here on the other crimson. Uh... Let us see. Uh, also, uh, out of good nature, uh, if it's still early game and one of our runners does eat a death, we will allow them to try uh, and go if it's early enough. Because uh, obviously, if, yes. you know, uh, we, I think that we've also agreed on a rule of one safety okay. save. So they are allowed I, to save because things can potentially get dangerous and randomized. I know Mars made as one. As we said earlier. Yeah, uh, when enemies are not in rooms that they're supposed to be, they do very, very weird things sometimes. Uh, you'll see some enemies that might be stuck on the ceiling. You'll see some enemies that might be upside down. Um, and you may or may not see an enemy that'll push you through a wall. All right. Uh, I believe uh, Pessy is taking a bit of a lead here. He's ending him outside. Uh, you do need this talismans from the endgame talismans to go outside. Um, oh, oh, we get a key there. Uh, which one is that? That is the helmet key. So that is going to open a few doors in the mansion. Right. Um, that opens one of the most important checks in this run, actually. So, Helmet Key opens the pathway to the basement. And the basement has 18 different items that you can check. And I think there's about maybe 177 to 182 different items. So, you have like a chance of one of those 180 being one of the seven items you need to finish the game. So, it's usually very, very optimal that once you get the Helmet Key to head to that basement as soon as you can. Uh, we do have uh, Pessy making his way over to uh, Lisa's cabin here. Um, this is this is a bold move by Pessy. This is a very very bold move by Pessy. This is about two or so minutes out of the way for a single item check. What you want to do is try to remain as efficient as possible. Although, so we'll see if this pays off. Uh, we do know that he did grab a couple of the talismans. So I do know the box is in there. In theory, uh, you know, even if it doesn't work out, he could get those talismans and try to get more items. Because uh, uh, yeah. we got what? Uh, he had the sun talisman, which I think the wind's the one that gives you the three items. Yes, you need the wind crush to get the three items from the grave, which is also a fun pickup. Taser, because you need oh to pick my up God, all you put a taser back there. Wait, did he ignore <laughs> the taser, by the way? Yes, so you want to ignore that item if it's not a key item, because if you Lisa. do, Lisa doesn't spawn here, yes. Uh, but he actually didn't grab the uh, the talisman either, so he just you just made this man come out for two minutes. For it to... I didn't make him do anything, he chose this uh, That's true, he did. Uh, hopefully Mar does not fall for the same bait then. We will that see. That is a mean, we will see. mean decision you've made. Oh, it's not the meanest. Oh god, I'm excited. Hey, you know what's kind of funny? Uh, yeah, I, I mentioned that Star's been having horrible luck here, and uh, we're on probably the most luck-based uh, run of the day. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to be fair, both of their luck should be... It's not going to be similar. I think this game also runs on a, uh, a DA system, right. so it, I think that affects zombie lunges. So we'll I see do want to mention... Oh, uh, hold on. This is where Pessimism may be in trouble for not having a shotgun, by the way. Oh, he is going back. I do want to mention as well, on Mars' side... Uh, Mar did use the one of her three free heals. Uh, for those of you who do not know, that uh, one little uh, balcony cover where you would use the dog whistle, uh, those herbs there can be used three times, and they'll heal you to full. Mm -hmm. So on Pessy's screen, you see him run by those three dogs. An interesting thing about those dogs is if you see one of the dogs hanging with a chain from his neck, he is a glitch dog if he does not appear on the balcony, and he only spawns in with one HP. Huh. So a single knife stab or a shot from a handgun will take him out every time. He's also the LeBron James of dogs. He's the one that acts very, very weird and has ridiculous amount of hops, hopping up and upstairs, quick, uh, an inexplicable recovery time after his attacks. He's 
He's a menace. He's a menace to put it as 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 plainly as possible. Uh, it does look like Mar is making her way down to the kitchen now. Uh, yeah. Throws out the key, and we'll probably run into the the B. I do wonder on Mars' side. Uh, it'll be kind of fun to possibly look at the uh, the face cam there, just just in case. You never know what enemy you get. Uh, you probably get to see a sense of relief with the uh, the B. Yeah, so pessimism now has both books. <clears throat> And he said it to the basement. As you can see, immediately the first item that he got was one of these seven items that he needed to finish his game, which is why I always recommend coming here as soon as you can, because it, it's not a guarantee, but it is a very high chance that once you get past that first statue, that one of the items you need to finish is down here. I feel so bad still ignoring shotgun shells. that Pessy ignored the shotgun because you have dumped so much shotgun ammo here. Yeah. Like... Yeah, it, it's interesting because huh? uh, as we go through, obviously Mara is going to see a lot more relief knowing um, she can clear more rooms, so have that ability. You know, Pessy, uh, it's going to be like the symbol of regret, just knowing, hey, I didn't grab the shotgun, and the hunters are in action. Uh, for anyone who's unfamiliar with the Resident Evil One remake, if you are on caution, you can get one shot by a hunter. They are brutal enemies, and we have quite a lot of them, in fact. So, pessimism has a. Walked past an item, trying to uh, be fast with the hunters. We'll see if he goes back in and ch checks it. No, pessimism is just gonna not check that one item. Um. Well, we leaving it up I'm to fate. I'm guessing right now what he might do is maybe it's gonna be the sunk cost. Maybe he's realizing go back for the shotgun now. Uh, Barry will not be there to save him. So now, if he oh. wants the shotgun, he will need to find the broken shotgun. I uh, just get the green. Oh, more shotgun shells! How many did you put? Uh, I think there's a total of it's at least a hundred something shotgun shells. So there's going to be a bunch of them in the oh, game. Oh God! Pessimism now has the stone ring. He is one item away. That last from being able to get into laboratory. That last item's not going to be in a pretty spot, though. I bet. Who's to say? Ah, we shall see. Mars finally heading outside of the guardhouse. Uh, Pessy does dip into a fast to get a key. Bold move, considering that he doesn't have a shotgun. Uh, Pessy is going quite bold here. Uh, hopefully he will make that safety save uh, possibly soonish, but I think he's actually going down right now to the item box. Pro uh, maybe? No. No. Uh, uses the key first to op open the door. And now he's going to the item box. I'm like. not entirely sure. Maybe he just didn't realize he didn't have any item spaces. Um, I'm thinking maybe he just wanted the RNG to reset, or not the RNG, but the uh, enemy placements to reset there, maybe. Possible, possible. Uh, keeps the crank and keeps the key. I'm very interested to see what Pessy's going to do. We have Mar going back to an item box as well, probably just dropping off the grenade shells for later. Um, oh. Pessy's in a bit of a jam. Luckily, he did find plenty of knives and tasers. Oh, they're going for the gem. They did get that earlier, didn't they? Oh, wait, it wouldn't matter about yes, here. Yes, it wouldn't yes. matter here. This is where you get the gems. Yes, this is where you get the gems. Uh, this is uh, the way the puzzle works with that little hawk in the corner. You have to make sure that you're not getting the gem while the hawk is facing it. If you're fast enough climbing up that ladder, you can get that crank there or that item there, and it makes it quick. As he's still not grabbing guns. He's a pacifist. <laughs> I know it's only a self-defense gun. But, more you know, he finally grabbed a shotgun shell. Sh he has no choice but to take the item that comes out of uh, there. Oh, he's probably going to put it back. You know, we're going to see. So, uh, as he's about to run into his first issue. Well, maybe later. <laughs> I was about to think he was going to go down to the uh, back room there. Yeah, I thought he was going to go to his library uh, where there is a surprise waiting for him, and we'll see how he reacts to that well, surprise. Well, he only has the pistol uh, so far. It's uh, it's very neat. Also, it looks like Mar might be yes. getting uh, one of the final items in a moment here. Yes. So, um, in that library, there is a very, very, very pleasant surprise that is a boss fight that you have to be able to defeat. Um, and Pessimism if does not have the ammo currently to defeat that enemy. But... The way that enemy spawns into that room, there is a 50-50 chance that that enemy will spawn in dead. <laughs> so we'll see if they get luck. Oh, God. Uh, looks like we get a key there. 
Uh, we have some blue herbs in the corner, which are... I'm surprised you didn't take the herb. I'm really surprised. Because you're going to go back to that room, you may as well just keep it in case you need it, because you can always just throw it out later. Yep. I mean, you already had the animation too, so... Uh, Mars about to enter heaven, the by the way. Here we go. Mars is going to get so much shotgun ammo. And she's actually going to take out the hunter. So Mars doesn't realize that the guy in the background is stuck. So she's waiting for the guy to come around the corner, probably. Uh, there we go. Here we go. Yep. Uh, Pessy gets the shotgun right now, but Barry can't save him, right? Can he? Oh, he has the key. Wow. Wow. Barry came here this late. I guess that huh. pessimism just completely changed the way this run worked. He just got himself back into uh, a lot of rooms and a lot of tough spaces by coming to get the shotgun now. I mean, there's just been so much ammo dumped throughout the entire game and, you know, no pistol ammo. May as well just get the shotgun at this point. And he still has the item down there he never Absolutely. saw. And it's the other half of the music sheet. He never saw that. But Mar already has the other half. So she can go to the piano now and see what's behind the uh, the wall. That would be an interesting check because it's also not a very efficient thing. So it's a matter of, do you believe that that one minute that you're going to do solving that puzzle and grabbing all those emblems would give you a, an important item? We'll see what Marv does. Mar does. But in terms of like spacing, because Pessimism had to double back through so many rooms because he didn't have a shotgun, uh, Mar was able to catch up quite a bit. So now I think it's more so about like which route each uh, each player takes at this point. We shall see. I'm glad they have a lot of knives and tasers. That's pretty nice for uh, the various grabs we're getting here. Yes. So fun fact too, if you stick a knife inside of a zombie's head and decapitate it, you can pick that knife back up. Hey. So that's probably uh I can see on the ground now. Mars probably can get that in a moment, huh? Yep. Oh, hold oh, on. We have city. pessimism in the library right now, grabbing magnum rounds, grabbing uh, we'll see. uh dog whistle. Dog whistle. Yes. What did you put we'll in see. here? Let's see. He's big. He's I mean. Think he's tyrant, is it? Is he dead? He he's dead. dead. He's dead. <laughs> well, uh, so there's a 50 50 chance he just spawns in this room dead. And oh, no, doesn't he need the book? No, if you reset the room and come back, there's a chance that he will be alive. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, why didn't he so, go for the book? Oh, no. I don't know why he didn't go down and check that last item. That would have been free. Maybe he won't be. Maybe Pessy believes in a fair fight. Uh, we have Mar doubling back for inventory right now. Oh, Pessy can do the dog whistle. Let's see if we get. Is it always a dog with this one, or is it uh, RNG? Uh, it's always okay. a dog, and it's always going to be dog collar because uh, there are sex certain cutscenes that you can trigger that will despawn the dog here, and then you'll just be out of whatever item spawns okay. here. I love how no one is choosing to deal with the Crimson Elders in this hallway. It's just they're just taking their chances. It's their hallway now. It is. All right. Pessimism is going back to fight oh, Tyrant. So now there's a chance that Tyrant will be walking and living. Oh, Can we're going to see. Can you imagine that? Oh, so why is it, uh, Tyrant we're... spawning dead there? Oh, um, I don't know. For some reason, there are some rooms in which Tyrant spawns in and he's just because he doesn't have a neutral spawn position. It's a chance that he'll either just drop to the floor if he's on the ceiling or if he comes out of certain locations, he'll just drop all the way to the floor and just dead. I don't have an exact reasoning for that, but it's because most enemies only have like certain triggers. You know what I mean? All right. Well, let's... that's how they're supposed to be, which is why you'll see some zombies spawning. Eating Wait, air. he's not going. He's not checking. Huh? He's not checking. I'm really curious to see what, uh, what Mar does when she gets to that room. She might check it out, but like, especially if it's dead already, like just go for it, right? Yeah. If, he, if he's dead already and you head downstairs, you should get the cutscene in which the uh, it's just a dead animation. So we'll see if Mar decides to take that route. All right, we have Mar in the same gem room this time. Uh, I believe, what, this one was shotgun ammo, so she's supposed to be regularly happy with that. Oh, we have a Chimera here. That's usually not too bad. Uh, chimeras are, they don't, they're not the most behaving enemies, but 
It's fairly simple to get around them in rooms like this. Uh, we do have an MO disc. Especially if they leap and give you time. Uh, pretty useless item on any percent, since uh, unless you wanted to save the, uh, the people, it won't matter there. Mars just now doing the puzzle in the room. Mars taking a different strategy approach than pessimism to get the items here. Oh, she gets the uh, the red crank. All right, let's see here. Uh, I believe the, it's been so long at this point, the grenade, the grenade launcher is going to be there, right? Uh, oh, it's Barry. Wow. Barry's here. This is just how quick they're moving, I guess. Huh. Oh, we get an herb and uh, ink ribbon, and what else do we have on Pessy's side? That's uh, one Ooh, half of that uh, elevator thing later in the like mines, right? Yes. Yes, so that is a very, very dreaded item, and that is an item that you hope you don't have to use. Because Cylinder Shaft takes you to Courtyard Basement, and there are about, I think, maybe four, maybe five items that way. But it is so far out of your way that it is like a five to six minute time waste. Uh, Mar actually grabbed the gun that Pessy ignored. The self-defense yeah. gun, yes. Which is... It's a play! It's a play. The self-defense gun is probably, I think, the second most powerful gun in the game. Which could come in handy against a hunter. You can just take one hunter out. Oh, we have a couple yourself. things going on right now. Mar is entering the library boss room. Is she going to get lucky? And Pessy is possibly heading for the antidote? Uh, it's going to be quite exciting. Mar's taking magnum rounds. Uh, dog whistle. She finds the dog. Take the dog whistle. Uh, let's see how they're going to move here. Uh, does Ooh, Mar just walked away. Didn't even bother seeing the enemy. Maybe she's uh, not ready for the fight just yet. And Pessy is... Oh! Pessy is getting the antidote. Uh, oh, I'm th I know what's happening. I think Mar might want to get the dog whistle and then do the boss, maybe. Open in and rise up, uh, possibly. That's... That could be a play, yeah. yeah. So thinking about it, the Mars thinking about so it. I'm wondering at this point, is there a point of even saving Richard outside of an easier uh, room in the attic? Uh, ten free shotgun shells. All right. Um, there may also. Uh, so what Pessy did may have also. Saved him, but may make this Richard situation a lot different. So if you have to go into Snake Room and you defeat the enemy in which Yon 2 was supposed to spawn, no enemies will spawn in that room. It'll just be a completely Wait, empty room. Wait, so will that be a tyrant? Which also means... No, that won't be a tyrant. Okay. That's completely differently randomized. But because tyrant was dead, it's a matter of did it register the completed cutscene or did it register him fully as dead if whether the enemy is going to spawn here in Yon's on one's place. He gets some shock and shell up. He's That's not going up. Uh, doesn't he have the armor key or do he needs sh he needs shield oh, key? Okay. All right, so it should be interesting. We're gonna solve a quick puzzle here, pretty straightforward. But we're gonna take a look at Mar here. Maybe she goes to that room. I think we should get the audio on her, uh, just for a moment because we might be seeing the boss fight. We shall see, we shall see. Uh, is she gonna do it? Oh, yeah. she leaves. They're really avoiding the library. I'm wondering why. I no clue why no one's going into the library. It's okay, there's a second tyrant they're gonna run into. Don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, good, and uh, Pessy does the entire puzzle for one herb. Oh, but uh, you know what? The herb worked out, got grabbed in a bit anyway. Um, are putting him in the self-defense. Yeah, immediately. Uh, gun and Well, he didn't mag. take the herb, so... Oh, he didn't take it? Oh, he... No, is that regret? I I'm don't really know. I'm really wondering, Pessy really does not like taking herbs in inventory. It's a it's a very, very smart play on Pessy's part, but it's also risky. The less you visit the item box, the better, because there's so many different checks and but items that you would I need to like take. I feel like with the herbs, though, you can just use them if you really don't want them. Uh, broken shotgun on the wall, gonna be not very useful there, and doesn't have uh, either of the hooks for the puzzle there. Uh, oh, Mars about to find the, the MO disc. Oh, gets grabbed by Chimera. Oh, Mars getting grabbed from the seal. Hanging up in the closet. Uh, luckily, gets out nice and clean. With a self-defense item, that's not uh, a, a terrible thing to happen to get grabbed. It just wastes quite a bit of time. Uh, Mars not getting any type of zombie RNG here. <laughs> oh, there we go. 
Oh, pessimism is going to check snake. All right, let's see how this goes. Uh, wait, is Mar going for the piano? No, Mar's just checking this one item. All right. Let's see what we get the snake. Oh, and so it does spawn in dead because Tyrant was in fact dead. But will he stay dead? Also, just a jar. That is a very important question. Oh. Did you hear that? that I, love, I loved that Richard scream there. <laughs> uh, also, uh, it has been asked in chat. Um, the runners are playing in Japanese just because Japanese text does scroll by faster. So it'll be a lot of time saved as they play. I believe it's actually simply Chinese. Simple Chinese. Oh, my, my, my bad. Yeah. I do not know my language. Mars eliminating the zombie in the mirror room, playing it completely safe in there. You know, I completely forgot what was in that room, so we'll see. Mars three herbs. Has the super herb now. Best continuing to take damage from those dogs every time he walks out. This has, I think, the entirety of the mansion checked because of the uh, the armor key. So Pess is now headed out. Headed out this way. The way that he avoided because he did not have a shotgun. That hunter just tried to one-hit KO from across the room, so... That's something. Is his health even low enough for that, though? I don't know. He definitely did the one-hit KO slash. You just have to be missing anything, and it puts them in the ability to do so. Any type of health. So the lower it is, the more likely they are to do it. But oh, well, we we might be. And they're also very very weird in rooms that they're not supposed to be. So I do know we are going to possibly be seeing the first instance of the old mansion here. Yes. So Pess is headed to uh, outdoors. He made sure to bring the battery with him so he can open up courtyard. We will see if he decides to go down into the courtyard or if he's gonna head towards exit. Oh, uh, looks like Mar did not get out there fast enough for the berry cutscene. Uh, oh, this could be a problem. This could be a problem depending on what spawns here. Because now Force is going to get up because Barry is not in this room. Oh, uh, so we just get crows. It's like the first instance of crow. Like, are crows even like seated in random like enemies? On some occasions, but crows are not randomized in this room because the enemies spawn in very, very weird locations. Sometimes getting stuck in walls, sometimes getting stuck on ceilings. So we decided to not do that. We also decided to not randomize the baby snakes because we found out the very, very hard way that baby snakes spawn in infinitely. Oh, <laughs> so you can just have like infinite yeah. sharks, essentially. Yeah, yeah, war infinite hunters. Uh, which is... Oh, boy. Yeah, I'm glad that we uh, we made that call. Yes. That has to Ben Powell for making sure that that doesn't happen. Uh, and yeah, for the randomizer in general, it is a blast to play. There's a lot of variables, and uh, whenever you have an event, just trying to find something that actually makes it work for a live setting is always so tough. So I want to give shout-outs to uh, both Ben Powell and J-Rock uh, just for the general work. Yeah. Uh, a lot of Ben doing the technical stuff, and when Ben was first making it, he was giving me a lot of things to test through. I think I played the first ever All Hunter Seed, which is how we found out that those snakes spawn infinitely because I came back from Guardhouse and was just walled off by about 30-something uh, <laughs> hunters. Oh, Lord. Yeah. All right, so we have uh, Pessy now exploring the old uh, old mansion, get some grenades. Uh, look, we have an item box right here, so we can start storing uh, the wanted items. Uh, we're gonna have a lot of grenades for some. I don't even know what he's saving them for anymore. Or a gun that we don't even know exists. Yeah. yeah. And also, I mean, like the one boss fight he'd really have to do for right now is kind of just he ignored it. Oh, he'll run into more bosses. All right. 
Uh, he also is grabbing a couple of keys here uh, and the uh, a good grab on the underwater key. I know we can go underwater around here. I think Pest is about to run into a major item right here. I was wrong. Oh, doesn't Pest only need one more major item? Oh my god, is that a bathroom tyrant? Yeah, that is a bathroom tyrant. Oh, the moves are out of again. I, I wonder if there's an item in that room. Oh, uh, wait, we have the medallion. Do we have everything? There is a key item in that room. Oh, it is not. A, I don't think it's a necessary key item, but there is a key item in that room. Oh, well, we'll see. He does take it. He's not going back. Not going back. You know what? And I don't blame him. I don't know if I'd want to fight that guy in that soul space either. That's um, that's quite the quite the risk. I mean, right now, let's see. Uh, they have both medallions. They have both books. Um, but don't they need the uh, like the fuse? Or is that always spawn? That always spawns. Uh, I can't. Did did Pesco go into the empty bottle room? Uh, you mean like where you'd make the uh, the formula for Plan Forty Two? Yes. No. 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 Ooh. Oh. Wait. Ooh. <laughs> so he can't hear me. So I can tell you guys right now that pessimism is making a grave mistake right now by not going into uh, that room. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know he didn't go in there yet. He is going so far away from it. Well, I'm thinking like he, he might think he has everything. Uh, what else would be needed just uh, for the refresher? So. He has everything that he needs to get into the laboratory, but there are two items in particular that you need to get through the laboratory. Those would be the key for the power area and the fuel capsule. Oh my, you didn't. No, no, you did not. You did not. The randomizer did it. It's not a loaded fuel capsule, is He's, it? It's not a loaded okay. fuel capsule. No, that I did not do. I am not that cruel to put a loaded fuel capsule who is super unaware, far away from a laboratory. Uh, the loaded fuel capsule is an item where once you have it, you are not allowed to get shaken. And shaken is defined as, I think, if enemies like knock you back, knock you down, you can die. Uh, if you run too much, you can die. So runners will end up like going, running in like three steps, or running five steps, walking three. Running five, walking three. And if it's that far away, it would be brutal. But this should be neat yes. to see. Oh, God. It also has a different uh, effect based off of whether you use a gun. So knives have zero effect on whether you explode or not. All right, we get Barry's Magnum, um, by the way. Um, not much of a boss right here. Is that just a bee? Yes, it is just a bee. Huh. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. It is a Camaro on the ceiling. Oh, okay. So you should be able to avoid him. Ex unless you get absolutely horrible RNG, the Camaro should not do anything. He should just be stuck up there, just hanging around. The real question, though, is because I, I know Mars not super far behind, and it's likely that, you know, having the, the cranks, um, she's probably going to be making her way out to the... What's the word? The old mansion pretty quickly, I think. Also, I like how the skull is just floating. <laughs> With the the, the cutscene still here takes place if you leave the enemy, but it doesn't have an enemy to that takes the cutscene over, which would be absolutely hilarious if it would just a be making the skull just drop off the edge. Oh, but unfortunately, God. not the case. Fun fact, we once tried randomizing the giant shark in the aqua ring with a bee, and it crashed the game. Oh, oh I wish we wait a minute. That Hold work. on. So we actually get to see the enemy here this time because Mar never actually uh, spawned in the tyrant. Wow, an enemy never spawned. Is it because it, there might be a different trigger to making the enemy spawn? Possibly leaving the guardhouse or leaving towards guardhouse. But I have, honestly have no idea what enemy was in this room. I can check that. God, this is the like the biggest he doesn't know uh, that I think we're going to see in all of the event. It just just thinking about it, Pessy is going deeper and deeper into the lab and he's with no clue. All right, so he takes the uh, the puzzle you box. The, you can see the hesitation in the pause and picking up that box. That I, that felt to me like a sign of prayer that he doesn't have to go back. We're gonna find out though. 
They've got bees in this hallway, which is a very, very dangerous thing to leave alive. So, pessimism knows. Uh, what would the Picking bees the do if you leave them alive? Uh, just the general shakeup? Uh, when you have to come back through here with fuel capsule, yep. uh, bees can shake right. you up. Oh, we get a second oh. magnum? <laughs> but it's probably useless at this point because Barry magnum, Barry's magnum one-shots everything. All right, we have the uh, we'll see exactly what mandatory here. puzzle. Uh, the answer is always going to be Ada and then Cell. Uh, this is going to just open up the labs down here for all the rooms. Uh, meanwhile, Mar is making her way uh, around the uh, second floor of the mansion. Um, Need to to her items. I'm not quite sure where she's heading yet, but she's uh, wasted a couple of the defense items there. Uh, we'll see what she is going to pull out in a moment here. I hope she isn't trying to leave the mansion from this direction because this could get very, very oh, dangerous. Oh, yeah. The, uh, very, very quickly. We don't know what enemy is going to go through those windows just yet. They won't spawn because you're coming through this the direction. Other way they only open if you come. To yes, it has to be the other way around. But there's going to be about five or six hundreds in this room if Mara got here too late. Oh, no. That is so many hunters. Oh, God. When is the last time Mara saved? Hopefully. Oh, my God. That one shot sweep just barely missed. Mara's out of the hunter room. Saved by the iframe. That is so clean. Thank God Mar was able to get through that. We have a Chimera too. She's back to full health. Mar is, I like, I'm just going to look really quick on the, the stream for that. Uh, just the camera, that is wild. Yeah, we're going to, we need to see what happened here. <laughs> that was absolutely terrifying. Derek, I don't know if you're, because uh, I have both the, uh, obviously our, our runner I do, feed I do. and the, the, the GDQ, uh, you know, stream. Just looking at Mars face relief getting through that room is wild. I think I might be a bit behind. I, well, we know we're going to ask about uh, Mar when we're all done with this, uh, <laughs> the race. Tell you that much right now. Yes. Yeah, I want to ask Pessy what was his thought process oh, in of course, of being course. dead tyrant and just running away. <laughs> oh, God, and then just never checking out the... Uh... Just never checking that item. Oh, God, I feel so bad, because I imagine right now Pessy feels pretty good. I, I, You know, deep in the lab, you're doing good, making good progress, but he doesn't know that that key is back there. Mar might find the key, and that might be a difference here. It might be, truly be a difference. We're going to find out if Mar decides to check the entire guardhouse. Yeah, the look I just got yeah, to the point right? to look on Mars face. Oh god. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, I don't know if we can have like a instant replay at all, but that would that would be worth one. Mars <laughs> going through it. TM. Pessimism is leaving the lab. <laughs> Pessimism is now leaving the lab. We'll see which route he takes here because he can make a really, really bad decision. He can go back into guardhouse and check those items. Or what he can do is head towards courtyard basement, which will effectively waste another 10 or so minutes, maybe. Let's see. Uh, Mar is activating the uh, elevator here. Mar's also knocking this out in one shot. Oh, no, Mar's just putting the battery in. I mean, it gets rid of the inventory slot. It's not going to do any harm. Yeah, no, it's actually a good move just to get rid of it yeah. right now. Uh, I'm definitely uh, cheering on uh, Mar right now. Uh, you definitely uh, have a round of cheers here. Hopefully, uh, she will make the correct move, uh, as we know. Uh, obviously, we're rooting for both runners here, but right now is a major moment. Pessy is actually taking back one of the uh, the crests. It looks like he is going back to guardhouse. He has to. Yeah. He, there's nothing left to touch in a mansion. He has to go back outside. But it's a matter of what turn he makes when he leaves towards guardhouse. Oh, pessimism is going down the 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 uh, uh -oh. the hallway oh, of death. The hunters are uh, gonna be. Oh, we'll my see. God. We'll Pessy. see. Oh no, uh, Pessy, no, I'm deaf and listen, oh, Pessy, no. There it is. All right. Oh, he. Oh no, no, wait, he's gonna go back. Oh no, okay, he's gonna take him out. For a second, I thought he was gonna try going back in the other room, maybe try to get the respawn in a better position, but no, he's taking the fight. Uh, probably because he fight. knows another enemy might spawn. And Ooh, that was so close. Oh, wait, he has the door for safety, but that's gonna be so bad if he goes back. This is the worst spot to be because you cannot see what's happening in front of you. Oh, God. Gets the kill. Okay, Pessy is nice and safe. That was risky. That was... <laughs> By God.
<laughs> if only Pessimism had a camera on right now, too, so we oh, can see the look on God. his face. Oh, Mar getting... Mar just got the metal object. Mar is checking more of the room, though. She's not dipping immediately, so that's really good. It might prove useful. It, it wasn't in this room. It wasn't, wasn't that in well, this room. Well, just in general, just the habit too. of Mar wanting yeah. to look around does prove that maybe she'll keep going for the rest of it. Yes. Let's see. Oh, wait, no. All right, hold on. Hold on. The item box is good. Make some room. But uh, for anyone watching at home right now, Mar does need to go to the empty jar room where you would be making the uh, the uh, the potion to kill Plant 42. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Oh, Pessy's back in the room, too. So Pessy made the right turn. We'll see if Pessy goes to grab the item, but he probably will. He's grabbing the gallery key. Oh, Mar's grabbing the control room key. All the keys to check this house. We'll see if Mar makes the right decisions here. Looking for the red book. Mar doesn't realize that they do not have the red book. I believe the red book is uh, one of final items in laboratory. Not needed. The gallery key on Mar's side. Mar's grabbing more shotgun shells. We'll see if Mar makes the move to run oh, in and out of the bathroom. Room. Hold on. Oh, here we go. It immediately leaves. <laughs> Mar all immediately leaves. pondering, pondering, pondering. All right. Leaving. Doesn't want to go for it. Probably a good move. So I put one special surprise at the end of this game that could completely affect uh, any difference in time. So we'll see. Oh, Mars headed here. So we'll see uh, now. Pessy is going to the, uh, the jar Pessy room. Pessy is, he's, he's super warm. As is Mar. Mar hopefully will go. She think, uh, she left the Magnum rounds. Searching around, searching around. All right, let's see. Pessy finds a jar. There it is. There it is. But we don't have the capsule yet, do we? No. So the capsule is in laboratory okay but it is in an item space that most runners would never ever think to check also just saying right now the fact that you've already hidden items this far back i think pessy might be second guessing himself that the lab's gonna have anything yes pessy is now going to search everything probably as he's in his own head, we're going to see. Mar in the upset has more refreshed perspective because she has everything she needs for the endgame right now, and she hasn't made that gamble for the lab yet. In theory, I mean, it does look like she's playing pretty responsible right now. Um, you know, I think she also grabbed the... Um, what's the word? Well, both of them have the... Uh, what's the, the the bug spray? Yes. Uh, Mar is going to be getting that right now, though. Wait, it did... Okay, no, I mean, she got it. There's the lab key. Got it, Good. Got it. Double checking items to make sure that they grab Did everything. Did you grab that? Oh, there you go. Knife doesn't need it. It looks like Mars gonna continue searching. Probably for the best, all things considered. Cause right now they are both on pretty even tracks. Like honestly, I think Pessy has a slight lead. Um, as long as he keeps searching. Oh, Pessy's heading out of here. Oh, wait, no, he's going to the safe room. Could you imagine if he tries to fight the tyrant? We're going to find out. Well, he can defeat the tyrant now because he has Barry's Magnum, right. so it would be a one-shot kill. Uh, we will say as well that uh, both of the runners did agree on making a, I think, a safety save somewhere, right? Or one? Yes. However many they need is probably fine, honestly. I mean, if you make the save, you just lose time. Oh, here we go. Uh, still looking around, find some MO disc. Does not need it because this is the standard bad ending any percent route. Did he get oh, poisoned? Oh, he got poisoned. Oh. Oh, God. That is going to hurt. He's thinking. If he just ran around in a circle, he's thinking right now. Doesn't know. Second guessing. He's headed downstairs. Mars gonna wait for the enemy to spawn in the bathroom. We'll see if this is a good idea or not. Well, if it, it is a bee. Bees don't spawn in this room. They just they're they're very very weird behavior. So Mar avoided the spider. So Mar avoided potentially being poisoned. 
Uh, uh, do remind me, poison can only bring you to like one health, right? It can't kill? It can only bring you to one, it can't kill you. Pessimism's making a bold move by just allowing the poison to eat through him. Oh, uh, that is wild right now. Um, honestly, I think a lot of these decisions might pay off for Mar. Get a, little, a nice little chill point. Jarrah, how are you doing right now? I hope, you, hope you're having a fun time. Oh, I'm enjoying this. I'm it's enjoying fun. being on the puppet master side of this. I, I'm definitely happy that uh, you wanted me to co-commentate. It is nice being here. It's been a lot of fun. It's very nice to be able to bounce, you know, commentary oh, off absolutely. of you. Oh, absolutely. Oh. I like, uh... Definitely changes the dynamic. We got, uh... I like seeing the devious things you planned. It's fun. I've, yeah, we have not seen all the surprises. So, I, there is one major surprise, which I have not said yet. And I will not be saying it, because it's going to happen, and everyone's just going to... <laughs> okay, I gotta ask if this doesn't pertain to the surprise, because I don't think uh, we're gonna see it anymore. Uh, what was in the library? The surprise is unavoidable. Right, what was in the library that they missed? Because both of them just ignored the library boss. Okay, so the library was one of the death masks. Oh, okay. So, probably not even needed. No. Uh, although, yeah. I see right now, going into the sharks... He's in trouble because he's poisoned, so he's slowed down for the sharks. That is... I like how he thought ooh. about the using the fast, but he has to save it. Uh, if he gets two drains, be bad. Yeah. Uh, Mar does eat a hit, but she makes it through pretty, pr uh, you know, nice. Uh, because um, she doesn't have to worry about poison. All right, let's play a game. Pess I might, think Pess might have a little bit of trouble I think here. Pessy's gonna get uh, three. We'll I think can... Mar's gonna get one. I uh, have a slight RNG puzzle. Uh, it can be one, two, or three. Like I said, I think Pessy gets three. Mar gets one. That, that's my guess right now. Oh boy. Well, it looks like they're probably going to Neptune right now and also see uh, what item we might be getting there. Yeah, well, we'll see exactly how... Because I'm not familiar with how poison affects the Neptune uh, the Neptune skip. So we'll see if Pessimism is willing to risk it. Uh, I missed what Pessy had, but Mar apparently had two. I, said, I think Pessy had a one. I got both wrong. I also missed it. I had two guesses. I didn't. I didn't bother guessing. Uh, so right now it is asking in chat of what you need in order to beat the game. You need all the major items, which uh, our runners currently have uh, both. It is six of seven. Um, yes. So the seven major items would be the stone and metal object and the second stone and metal object, which is broken into two pieces, which would be the stone ring. Oh, the wait a minute. Has he just got a uh, clean of poison? Oh. Uh, that's about as lucky as you can yeah, get. Yeah, Mar does take the blue herb for safety, but uh, that is a well, well-timed uh, herb. That is a very, very well-timed blue herb, yes. All right. So both runners are really, really close, but Pessimism is slightly ahead because he decided to go into laboratory already. So now we'll see. We get an ink ribbon for Neptune Skip. Uh, Neptune Skip is a minor thing you can do here where you just run past the uh, the attack uh, and you can just get out of there immediately. Uh, that is a one-shot kill otherwise, but uh, they did for an ink ribbon. Yep. So this run right now is going to come down to two things. One, I'm not going to say oh, we, yet. We, there's a surprise, two, you know. Two is going to be what path they decide to take here. Oh, if they go back to that one uh, window hallway, it can get really bad. I don't think they have any reason to go back there. At least Mar does it. Mar should not take that pathway back because that means Mar would have to go back through those that right. hallway. We'll see. We'll see. And then I guess it really goes. Are they going to go down the elevator uh, for the battery? Well, we're going to find out. They both put the battery in, so it is a possibility. Uh, let's have an eye on because they all Pessy right now just to see. They both have. Yep, yep, yep. Oh no, he's going to keep moving gonna keep moving there's still a chance he could go down i don't know just yet uh mars also leaving uh going for item box uh we'll see what she uh does there 
Uh, right now, the eyes are on Pessier as we see. Oh! Ooh, he makes the turn. Oh, he's going for he it. He makes the turn. He's committing. That might not be good. Uh, we did get a little bit of a preview We're from We're going to see what Mar does. Uh, we do know there might not be much there. Oh, Mar's going back to fight Tyrant. She Don't oh, do it. Mar, she's going for the item. Why did she get out of it? Better be something good. She death gets out of it. Death mask! Oh! And, and you know what? That's a fitting death mask for that room. Yes. Has to eat the hit and loses the uh, the herb. I mean, at least she knows. Uh, clears her conscious a bit. But I'm actually really worried yes. right now. Um, I'm very worried. Mar has all of her key items to finish the game spread out. So maybe she's not realizing that she has everything she needs to get I into the laboratory. I think she's looking right now, looking around, saying that she might. Um, pretty much, uh, my guess right now is... Oh, yeah, she's counting. If Mar gets bold, she might take it. Mar yes, wins. Mar has to be bold, if though. Mar gets bold. It all depends on how bold she's going to be right now. Because Pessy is in a dead end. He is not going to be able to... Uh, he's going to lose a lot of time searching down here, and he's already learned searching lab once that... He might be in uh, bad straits. Although it is funny that he did look around. Oh, I guess the fuel capsule has to be behind the lab key, right? Yes. Eric, yeah, because yes. there's no, I, otherwise he would have found it. Yes. Mar, I think she's going for it. She's starting to loot things uh, that are. She's grabbing the items. She's, she's, you can see the wheels turning. You can Ma see the wheels turning. Hey, wait a minute, Mar. Wait, there's an umbrella in that. Wait, wait, wait. No, 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 wait. Wait a minute! Wait, what happened? Oh no, not that! Oh god, uh... I'll, I'll, I'll let you... Oh no! <laughs> I'll let you know, you, you, know, you know what I'm talking about, right? I just caught it! <laughs> you caught it? <laughs> yes! Oh god, for anyone who didn't know... Uh, so as you, you know, running the event, we see the event, and you know, we're never sure how it's gonna go. Uh, originally, uh, the teams were actually going to be swapped. Uh, Mar was actually going to be on Stars, and Pessy was going to be on Umbrella. Uh, however, uh, we kind of felt that maybe Stars could be thrown a bone. Um, and, you know, uh, both run it is randomized, both runners are pretty uh, talented here, uh, but Pessy is a um, world record holder in uh, both this game and RE0. But with Stars' luck, I I I'm hoping he didn't accidentally jinx anything here. <laughs> No, we're going to see. We're, we are absolutely going to see. So there's going to be one situation in which we'll see. <laughs> oh, my God. That being said, you know, organizing the, about uh, organizing the uh, the races here, I did think it was going to be a lot more equal. <laughs> Mars going back down. Oh, no. Oh, hold on. Mar goes for the... No! Wait. Where are we going? I mean, she's... Where is she going? Oh, to continue using the armor key, but why did we come all the way back I here? I have no idea. But uh, Mar, if she heads back to the mansion, I think Mar's going to be in quite the lead. Mar's going to be in... Depending, it all depends. Just going to be looking around and obviously, you know, might vary there. <laughs> yep. But Mar has... Uh, oh, wait. Mar. Mar. Mar's broken away from the... Yep. Oh, no! Don't do it, Mar. All right, no, we're good. Good. Mar's headed back to his oh. match. Mar's oh. Second items, second items. All right. Dude, I am just so worried right now. Because Pessy, um, he is just searching dead ends all the way. He had to fight. Uh, we, we didn't even talk about what Pessy was doing the whole time. Uh, Mar is back in the mansion, though. Oh, Mar's picking up the emblem. We're, we're not going back. Mar is confirmed going to the lab. My god. Uh, Pessy hopefully will possibly think this is a dead end. Maybe the wheels will turn about the lab key. 
Um, I don't know if they will. That's why Mar picked up the key. They didn't open this door. You know what? Sorry we doubted you. I have to eat my words immediately. I'll say it right now. And uh, I do want to give a lot of props to Mar as well. I know Mar has been putting in a ton of work in the past couple weeks specifically, and uh, yes. it is paying off. Oh, we're getting interesting. Oh. Pess is not checking the other half of the basement. Wait a minute. Pessy's coming back, though. We we're have getting a, interesting. This is a close race. All right, Mar getting down. Now, keep in mind, though, the lead has uh, diminished just a little bit here. Because while Mar is further ahead, Pessy has searched most of the lab. This can still go either way. Yes. Why did Pessy just suddenly decide to go back, I'm wondering? Pessy probably realized because going the other direction for Cylinder Shaft has such a minimal amount of items. I think it's only about four or five, and it's like five, six, maybe seven minutes out of the way. So he probably came down there because he was second guessing himself. And now he's realizing he should probably just go for it. Maybe in a panic of thinking I lost so much time doing that. Well, he is going for it right now. And I do know you have one special surprise waiting down there. It's wild, but in this time right now, uh, we're incredibly close. Um, I would say it's... Honestly, it's kind of hard to say who exactly is in the lead right now. Uh, Pessy may have just uh, taken the lead because he's already searched the Pessy's... lab entirely while Mar does have to set up. Yes, Mar is... Mar is second-guessing herself, it looks like, over what items she needs. She forgot the books. She's already done this. Mar has to do this fight. But I will say, all is not lost. All is not lost. Anything can happen. Anything can happen with Fuel Capsule. Um... Yeah, anything can happen with As the well, we have the... No way, you did not. I didn't what? Tyrant fight, that's not yawn, is it? Anything can happen with fuel capsule. <laughs> oh, God. Anything can happen with fuel capsule. Oh, that's... boy, okay. This is going to be interesting here. Uh, well, obviously, you know, you didn't confirm or deny anything. We, I just know that that Tyrant fight's going to be something big. Uh, for the record as well, for uh, chat here wondering about the commentators, J-Rock uh, created the seed. Uh, I am guessing parts of it from what I know about Resident Evil 1 Remake. Um, also, Pessy seems to be searching more rooms, actually. Pessy is playing things smart because he only has two rooms or so to check. And he is checking both rooms. Mar seems to have taken out the uh, Chimera in uh, Lisa's fight room. It's weird that the Chimera spawned for Mar, but like, we didn't see it on Pessy's. Oh, Pess has found There's it. fuel capsule. There's the fuel capsule. Pess is now a straight run to the end of the game. It's a matter of what's left to run into. He's taking the, the, uh, the smart route here and checking uh, this hallway to make sure things are We're going out. to have to ask Pessimism about the, the just wild turn. I gotta know what was going through his head there. Like, when that comes up, it just, why did you decide to stop looking at the underground and push forward? Mm -hmm. Taking the pause here to let the, the spider completely die so he doesn't get accidental poison. All right, so here's the full capsule room. Looks like we have standard chimeras right now. Standard chimeras, yes. Uh, Pessy is playing it safe here. Um, shoots him down. Uh, we did mention it earlier, but for the fuel capsule, you will have to load it up, and it is explosive, so if you get shaken up at all during that, which is running too much, eating a hit, a uh, big amount of things. Yes. Uh, hopefully, Mar also does think to kill the bees. I'm not too worried about that, but uh, just something to note. All right, let's see how Pessima handles the fuel capsule. There's that walking we're talking about, and they're about to be counting uh, five and three. So five is a very, very dangerous game to play because if you get that five and a half, you can explode. But if there's anybody who, who we think can get that done accurately, it's the guy who's been running this for forever. Right. <laughs> so. 
Although, Mar did have him on the ropes for a bit here. Yeah, Mar did have him on the ropes, and like I said, things are not over. Um, there are still many rooms left to be checked. But not many, but there's a few rooms left to be checked. I am wondering though, since Mar does have the uh, lab key, will she just beeline straight to the lab key and look around? We're gonna find out. We're gonna find out. Also, I didn't notice, but does Mar still have her shotgun? Because I might come in handy for the bees. Running into su surprise number one. Ness is now running into surprise number oh, two. God. Oh, there he is. Ah, uh, looks like he's. Ooh, Pest is just gonna fight. That's a yawn. Yawn is the <laughs> giant snake. Pets got yeeted! Does he come back? If he can figure out which way he needs to walk oh into the wall. Oh my god, wait! <laughs> oh lord! He just needs to come towards the camera. He found the door! <laughs> well, he's out! I'll try to fight again. He's out! Uh, going back in, maybe he won't get it again, maybe. Well, that's a meter surprise in the tower. No, he yeah. killed the he killed that yawn, so it doesn't eat okay. him again. Uh, hopefully, Mar won't run into that uh, same issue of getting yeeted. But we still have the tyrant. We don't know what's gonna be. Could be a hunter. Could be yawn. Could be Lisa. Lisa would make a lot of sense, wouldn't it? We haven't seen. Uh, he actually just ran into Lisa. If you didn't pay attention. Oh, that was the first room. The room right before yawn. Lisa was coming out of the vent. Of course, she didn't come out in time. Uh. She moves a little slow, so if you hesitate, uh, by the time you get to the other door, Lisa will be there, and there will be two of them, and that will be a very, very hard door to get through. All right, so we're going to hope Mar doesn't run into that. Uh, right now, Pessimism is coming up on the first Tyrant. Uh, last Tyrant will always be, you know, final Tyrant, but this one oh. is a bee. A bee. Just a little, just a little guy. Yeah, that's kind. That's that's quite kind. Okay. So, fun fact. <laughs> that B was initially Lisa on the original I it. setting, but I wasn't sure if anyone was going to have the ammo to deal with Lisa or if they knew how to deal with Lisa in the Tyrant room. So I said, you know, I'll take it out. Oh, I think Mars I got put, poison really quick. Hold on. in a different room. Oh, Mars looking at poison. Ho I think she does have blue herbs in her inventory. Uh, but hopefully we can charm Mars there. Uh, Pessy is gunning straight for the end right here. Uh, he will likely be uh, cleaning up unless he runs into some issues. Uh, hopefully we can cheer on Mars here as she does go through the ending here. Okay, now I feel better about the the seating. I feel better about the seating now, a little bit. A little bit. Oh god. We were we were dangling close to uh I'm just saying because like real comedy. I there. Eaten my words immediately. Not say I didn't because it's been a really close race and that's what you want out of this. But it is it's yes. one of those things, it's like, wait a minute. Wait. How badly I through, did I jinx this person? I went through at least twenty-five different seeds to make sure that I would get a seed that wasn't necessarily overly difficult, but would make the runners absolutely second-guess right. themselves. And we saw quite a bit so of that. Pessimism here, we are hitting the final boss. He has all the ammo he will need, and he has... Oh, wait, he just ditches. Doesn't fight the... Uh, yeah, we're doing 80%, that's right. Time. All right, time on Pessimism. Uh, how about we bring Pessimism back in here? We'll uh, undeafen him, and uh, yeah, uh, we'll talk in a little bit while uh, we watch Mar. Hey, Pess, can you hear us? Congratulations. Congratulations. First off, um, very well played. Um, you want to take us through some of the tougher moments that you were going through, like between the ears or in the game that you can recall off the top of your head? Yeah, that spider completely caught me off guard when I was going down into the aqua ring, and I thought oh, yeah. I was in big trouble like because I was poisoned. And I was worried about what enemy was going to be in the aqua ring. I was like, ah, uh, I, I was, I almost went back to the man to play it safe. I almost went back to the mansion, and uh, I went to the room really and quick. Did uh, the blue herb? I don't know if your mic is back yet. Uh, oh, cool, we got, all right, we got him back, we got him back. Yeah. All right, go ahead. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, I was just saying. <clears throat> the spider caught me off guard. 
I was worried I was going to die in the aqua ring. I was considering running back all the way to the mansion to go get the blue herb in the big mirror room. But uh, I decided to not do that. And fortunately, I found a blue herb. And then y'all... I, uh, oh, mm, I was going to say, I like... I thought when Yon grabs you in that the the power room, I thought if he grabs you out like you're out of the like you're stun all you're soft locked out. I almost reset right there. When I hit start, I, saw, I, I was saw about you to restart. Out, hey, man, I was thinking, I was like, no, don't do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's really just as simple as walking back towards the camera. Oh, to get out okay, of that, thank you. That thank you, Brian. So, I didn't know that. Uh, really quick, we still have Mar here. She is on the capsule room. Uh, the run was a lot closer than uh, expected. Uh, there was a moment where Mar uh, took the lead right at the end. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Where is uh, she at now? Oh, okay. Uh, so right now, she's is. on the fuel capsule. Uh, she's clearing capsule. that over. Uh, mm -hmm. Pretty much the main difference is uh, Mar has been finishing in the laboratory. You got to the lab early, and then mm -hmm. the lab key just wasn't there, so you had to go back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I... Uh, it, did did she go through the caverns or no? Ew. No. Oh, she she didn't go through the caverns. caverns. That's so, okay. how she was catching back up. Yeah, that, yeah, that's how she caught up. Yeah, yes. yeah. Okay, I see, I see. Yeah, I was originally I was gonna go back and go into the even the deeper part of the caverns, but I had the lab key. I was like, I'll just risk it. Hopefully, it's we the fuel yeah, supply is not that. there. Uh, I was actually telling J Rock. I was like, wait a minute, the last second swap. Did I accidentally jinx the run here? Because you went from mm -hmm. lab, you got the lab key, and then we're, we're wondering, like, all right, is he going to go into the caverns? Is he going to go into the caverns? And then mm -hmm. you went right to the caverns. Uh, Mars yep. also coming up right now on the, uh, the Lisa room. Mm -hmm. Yes, we'll see if, how Mar deals with Yon room. Oh, that's going to be fun to see. I think she saw the Yon. Yeah, uh, you know, switch. As, as soon as I heard Lisa, I was like, Jay, put Yon in the next room. I know, and there he is. Oh, she got yeeted. He was almost at the door. So if you go to the right side instead of the left, you can avoid it if you're fast enough to the door. Oh, really? Yeah. To go to the right. Her That's good. Expression is priceless right now. Yeah. Oh, oh God. So she, she, she knows. Yeah. Oh, she did. Room. I do have been. Uh, I'm going to ask you both about this later. I don't, I'm just going to prime the question. Not yet, though, because I want to hear both of you. But mm. the 500 room is wild to watch. Mmm, yeah, that caught me off guard. Yes. When I was in the corner and I was pump canceling, oh, I yeah. almost went through the door because I didn't know if one was setting up a one shot. Oh, yeah, so J Rock, uh, what enemy did you put in that uh, hallway behind the windows? Um, don't worry about I'm it. I'm not gonna see it now. I don't worry about it. I might be a little stuck. Yeah. Uh, we might have to undeafen Mars so we can tell oh, Mar yeah, how to get out of there. Uh, don't quit, don't quit, don't quit, Mar, don't quit. All right, Mar, uh, we unmuted you really quick. Hold on. <laughs> Jarek, how'd you get out of that? Uh, Mar, just come towards the camera. And eventually you'll walk back through We're the still wall. still muted in terms of mic, uh, but uh, you can you can hear us at least. Yes, just keep coming back towards the camera. It might take a while because you struggled in the wrong direction, but as long as you keep coming back towards the camera, you'll eventually get to the wall. If you mash A, you might get to the door from another side. Chat is cheering you on. Yeah, let's go. You might have to wiggle it around a little bit because the camera does get stuck. But yeah. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. A little bit of a predicament. <laughs> yeah, I mean, both runners got yeeted on the room. Yes, this was where. Truth be told, I thought the time difference was going to be made Actually, up we on whether Mar? we can get out of the wall or not. How fast anyone can, can get out of this wall. Yeah, maybe we should unmute Yeah, let's, 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 let's unmute. Yes. Hold on. Yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah. Hold yes. on, yeah. hold on. You're unmuted, Mar, at least on the Discord side. All right. How do, am I supposed to be pressing down or up on the analog? I, I can't. Uh, you might have to try left and right now at this point because you may be at a different point in the room. But you want to come back to the front because you can only re-enter the walls from the front of the room and not the sides. I, I just can't tell where I'm at, that's all. That's where the the walking too far around like it's to be. You're pretty far away, you can tell because the snake is no longer moving. Okay.
to learn how to get out of this, Jayra? Hours. <laughs> the, Putting in the, the hours. This happened to me as well, Mar. Yeah, Jayrock surprises were uh, a bit brutal here. I'm just stuck. You bad it. I don't. Uh, you have plenty of time with the Esme, by the way. We have plenty of time. I just. Yeah. No worries. It's okay. Take your time. Did I just yeah. spam A, too? Yes, you can also spam A because you may catch the door from the other side. Yeah, uh, for reference uh, as well, uh, randomizer estimates like an hour forty-five. We're at one thirteen right now. Yeah. You know, I thought the seed would be a little bit longer than it was. Um, runners made good choices. I made some bad choices, but uh, I'm, uh, you almost won. I. Uh, you almost. At yeah. what point? <laughs> uh, you didn't go into the cabin. <laughs> You, you you had all the items, you decided to go to the lab, and you were going to the lab. Essie had a last-minute realization that, like, he just mid-cavern decided, hey, what if I go to the lab? I took a gamble, and it paid off, but now I'm stuck here, so... Chad's still rooting you on. I don't know how to get out. I don't know where you are currently, I don't know so. where I'm at either. Uh, Can you hear your footsteps? No. <laughs> And you're probably probably going in the opposite direction. Listen. I mean, if I lost already, there's no need for me to finish it. I don't know how uh, to get out. That's all. Uh, your call to me. Okay, yep. well. If I can't get out in like the next five minutes, uh, I'll call it. Sounds good. Well, whatever you're happy with. Sounds good. Sounds good. So I got some more questions to ask you both, yeah. though. Yes, um, sir. Mar, you didn't see it because you decided to turn around immediately. Pessimism. Why? What was your decision in not going to fight the library boss? <laughs> I uh, I probably had enough shotgun shells to take him out, but I was just like risk wasting all this just for One an time. item that's probably not gonna be required i'm just gonna risk not doing it yeah so two things one the item was a death mask mm. so good decision uh second i don't know if you know this but if you just go down that mm -hmm. ladder that ladder because tyrant was dead when he spawned in the fight was mm. instantly over. i did not know that no i did ah. not i've yeah. never seen that before <laughs> that, that's and, good to um, know mar just exited the room immediately she didn't even check the boss yeah. I, ch I so i checked yeah. the two items and right. then I was like, I don't have, like, I don't know what's going to spawn there. That's the thing. You don't know what's going to spawn there. You don't know if it's going to be actual yawn. You don't know if it's going to be tyrant. And I only had, I think I only had, like, I had less than, like, 12 shotgun shells. I didn't have enough. So I didn't want to mm. risk that. What did people think of my reaction going through the hallway and there was, like, 600? Yes. You had Let's so many good reactions. Questions for both of you. <laughs> yep, that was uh, probably the highlight on both ends. Uh, I actually was telling J-Rock, because uh, I have both uh, the GDQ stream open and uh, how we're watching it here. But, um, yeah, we just watched the uh, your reactions on the camera while that was happening. Uh, you barely made it out on that invulnerability <laughs> hit. Yep, yep. I was literally about to die, and that's why as soon as I got to the as soon as I got to the guardhouse, I was like, "I'm making a save. I do not care." <laughs> <laughs> the the panic was very real in your face. It's just like, <gasps> oh god. <laughs> well, yeah. and then I got I go outside, and there was more hunters. So that was fun. Yeah, uh, and then uh, um, Estimism, in same room, uh, but he had it a little bit rougher than you did. In fact, because while you just kind of went through. Uh, pessimism was fighting I think three of them in the corner and he got stuck in the camera angle where just staring Ooh. at you mm -hmm. yes and I yeah, was I, I, I was oh, go ahead. I don't think I can get out but I had everything and what was what was a tyrant supposed to be B. A so, B. Tyrant was a B. Ah, of course yeah <laughs> I wish I I wish I knew how to get out I'm just sitting here like you're I'm, all good <laughs> It's all good. It know, happened. Like, it's a very, <laughs> very just tell tough situation move. to get out. Like, I would have just reloaded a save. I could do that, but... You can. We have but. 30 minutes on the estimate, and... Come on, uh, do it, do it, do it. 
One, uh, two of the runners There's are. Still plenty more questions. Yeah, to ask. please, please do. Please I'll just. Run. You got it. You're I'll just reload to, yeah. the save so I, so I can yeah. finish it out. That's all. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, that's more than final. It'll be less than uh, 30 minutes. Let's definitely get uh, lots so, of love in the chat from Mar right now. Big, big loving. Mm. Love you so, guys. So, Mar, when you go into that room, if you go right, it's riskier. But if you get to the door before the yawn does, you can get out without getting glitched to the wall. But if you go left, it is easier to get out of the wall. But you're guaranteed to be placed inside of the wall. All right. Uh, which side am I supposed to go in then? The right side? The op When you leave... Go from the opposite side that you left on. Wait, so I, I enter in from, I guess, my left. It doesn't matter where you enter in. Like when you push the button, you want to go the opposite direction. So you came, I think, towards the camera, and that would be what Jill's left, I think. Came towards the camera. So you want to go in the opposite direction. So I just come back the way I came then. Okay. Yes. Because I usually just go all the way around. Okay, so also question, what was in the attic? Because I tried to go for assault shotgun, but nothing was there. The attic was a zombie. I didn't see it. I think it's it was invisible. Because you both, yeah. you both triggered something else. I'm not sure if it's because you went into the library first. Even if you didn't fight the boss or yeah. somewhere else you went, it despawns the enemies in that room. Mm, okay, because I was like... I, I was like, should I go for assault shotgun? Okay, I'll go for it. And then nothing was there. So that's that's like the second time that's happened to me. Oh yeah, uh, another room to bring up as we go. Uh, so we talked to Pessimism about it already, but Mar, uh, when we were in the uh, the old mansion, uh, Pessimism was tagged by a quick spider before going into the shark area. Uh-oh, with poison? So he, went the, yep, yep. he went through the whole area yep. poisoned, and right before Neptune, he just found that blue herb. Ooh, lucky. That's good. Yeah, I found a lot of blue herbs. I was really... Um, oh, no, I got the cutscene. <laughs> oh, it's funny to just watch it hold the skull. <laughs> like, yeah, this is this I is a great so moment. <laughs> um, and also, just talking about differences as well, like on, uh, on your side, Mar, you had bountiful shotgun ammo or just everywhere. And then yeah. uh, me and Dirk were laughing because uh, Pessy uh, never grabbed the shotgun originally. Uh, he just kind of ignored it. Yes. And then shotgun ammo, shotgun ammo, shotgun ammo. <laughs> is every room just shotgun ammo? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, that was almost a decision that came back to bite you, Pessy, yeah. because you didn't figure it out until the end. But Magnum wasn't it until mm -hmm. lab. And you probably didn't see Grenade Launcher. Nope. But grenade launcher was the literal last item in the game. Mm. That uh, battery pack that yep. you ran by, that was replaced as a grenade launcher right at the hell of wow. Oh, interesting. So, yeah, because going back to get the shotgun completely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I completely changed things. I decided to go get the shotgun because I knew there were hunters in the courtyard, and I know there's key. Ooh. Are there's items in there? I was like, ah, I'm just gonna go get the shotgun and kill them. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so, I was trying to think. Yeah. Well, I should make a save again before like. Oh, <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Oh, you can make one downstairs. Yeah, I know. That's that's yeah. what I was gonna do. Um, yeah. I guess since I know where stuff's at, I'll just go. Yeah, uh, you both went uh, kind of massively fast, and uh, I was uh, joking with Jarok as well that I was really worried that I put the uh, commentator's curse on uh, Pessy on the star side. <laughs> I just the last second just turn in the cavern was wild because like you fought uh, Black Tiger, yes. you fought um, well you did pretty much most of the cavern yeah. instead of like the very end of it and then you just right. turned around at one point yeah i just said uh i'm just gonna hope that it's in the lab yes because i mean seed was designed mm -hmm. to make you second guess yourself. yeah because and the bottom part of the cavern <laughs> can take a good amount of time you got to push the box you got to get yes. the broken flamethrower you got to climb up on the thing to get the four or five items on the top it's it's time consuming so i was like i'm just not gonna go there Yes. I cannot. Also, what's very, very funny about that, even in second guessing yourself, you were about 12 steps from making that seed a half an hour faster. Yeah. If you'd have just kept going into the mm. garden house, you would have found the key. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was fun seeing Tyrant in the bathroom. Yeah. I loved that. Oh, yeah. I, I yes. saw that so, just peaced out. That's on me. That's on me. Um, I thought I put him in 002 bathroom. Mm. Wait, there's hunters here too. That's right. Shoot. I think. No, the spider's here. I can't remember where Fuse was. I, I had it. So I'm just like. There's, there's a few. I'll have to like go. I'll have to go find it again. I believe it's up. 
stairs. Spider? Ow. Hey, no poison. It was funny because uh, the very first like interaction with the spider at the beginning, he shot poison and I like barely dodged it. And I was like, oh my God, that could have gone anyway. Um, hang on a second. No, it's downstairs. It's in the x-ray room. Oh, that's right. That's right. Um, I'm just going to make a save here. I should make a save after Nitro, but I'll just, well, I'll go get that. I'm like every which way. I'm like, I'm like, what did I do first? <laughs> Stop. That's usually the pain of randomizers is trying to remember. Where was I again? <laughs> yeah, that's one thing I was doing because I noticed that a lot of the little metal things that you put in the graveyard is like, oh, what if I need this? Yeah. No. So you know, so I, I didn't grab any of them. I was like, well, oh, that might come back to bite me. That was a good decision, though, just because, I mean, I got three of them. I didn't get the wind crest, mm -hmm. but... um. I did. I did get the rest of them because I always pick them up because uh, mm -hmm. it's always like that just in case thing. But then, of course, you risk like, oh, it's not. You know, I'm going to be a little bit slower, right? Right. Exactly. Yes. Oh, by the way, let's not forget. Um, so, Mar, you did not go this way, but uh, pessimism went all the way out to the Lisa house. Oh. Oh and yeah. And found a taser. Yep. You yeah, have oh, found no, the taser. Don't, don't you hate that? Yeah. Did you pick it up or no? No. Yeah. Wasn't gonna risk spawning Lisa and losing even more time, and then right. who knows what's gonna spawn in the woods? I was like, oh, am I taking this? Right, and one seed that I had, where you know, I, I, I think there was a key item there. I think one of the books was there, and um, like I, I grabbed it, and then I go out into the woods, and there's a hunter, and it just immediately beheaded me. <laughs> yeah. Well, to ease both of your minds on that a bit, there was sharks out in the woods. Oh, oh there's a shark. Got it. Yeah, it was sharks. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yes, it was. Yeah, it was this one. Wait, no. It's somewhere. I can't remember where it's at. I picked it up and then me getting wrecked by... Oh, I think it was... It was here. It was here. It was right here. Yeah. There we go. All right. So I think we asked Mar, but I don't think we got Pessy's opinion on this yet. Pessy, when you walked into that hallway and saw about five hunters staring you in the face... What was going through your head? Uh, I'm in trouble. This is what was going through my head. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, cause I don't know. They didn't. They were already broken through the window, yep. and like I could, I couldn't just run right through them. I just that's asking to die. And so I was like, oh, I guess I'm just gonna try to. I guess what I could have done is I could have reset the room and then try to go through. But I didn't think about that at the time. I was like, I'm just gonna. I have like. 16 shotgun shots, whatever it is. I'm just going to take them out. Mm -hmm. And then, as you mentioned earlier, that's when I got into that corner and I was I was scared that so they're wrapping up one of those one shot kills. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I was terrified for you because they don't make sounds exactly. in that room and you couldn't see them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's the thing that's really scary when you get hunters in this game is because usually, even if you can't see them, and I know Pessy can attest to this, um, you look out for visual and audio cues for that one hit KO, right? Yep, and yep. When you can't see them and then you can't hear them, you're just like, oh my god. So, yeah, I'm glad we both made it out of that because that's scary. <laughs> yeah. All right, yes. so did we learn what was in the uh, the dog hallway? The, the dog hallway? Yeah, the, the windows. Do I really have to spill I'm the curious. beans? So I'm going to make a save here because that's where Yawn's Jan, on yeah, the yeah, other yeah. side. I love how oh, there's right. three Lisas up in here. <laughs> <laughs> It was uh, it was Mr. T. It was Mr. T. Oh, oh, oh you had T. multiple tyrants, so, huh? Yes, there were about oh, three of heck them. Yeah. Oh, I didn't count on you guys running into him because I didn't think that any of you were gonna go back into that room. <laughs> Wait, which room again? Uh, so oh, the, the, uh, dog, the, the dog, dog top off the window. Yeah. Yes. And the thing is, so also interesting. Oh, yeah, I didn't say Pessy almost went back in the room because we thought he was gonna reset the uh, five hunter hallway to try to get a better angle at it yeah mm -hmm. and you might have been in some like you might have been in a real pickle thinking about which way you were gonna yeah. go from that point yep i probably would have went through tyrant because yeah. uh so mark go back okay. the way you came yeah i probably would have tried to get through tyrant oh because god. uh now come back towards <laughs> okay. camera oh my god the yeet is just so good oh, did it happen again <laughs> yeah well that's there what we happened go. to you hey. there we go okay yep. oh, there we go so three now Oh, that's amazing. Oh, man. No, 
I'm glad I got to see that just because it was hilarious. So like one to get stuck in the wall because I'm just like, this has never happened. Did I die? Did I get eat? Like Yon can't eat you, can he? It's hard to get back in. No, I I almost res I almost quit as well, Mar, when it happened to me. Yeah, you passed with he hit that button, and I was just like, no, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> Well, yeah. Uh, so there's about four different rooms in which Yawn spawns in that he can get you through a wall. And funny enough is our three of them are right there in that that uh, that power hallway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then the other one is, is outside where the chemical also, is. There's the B. He can yeah. get you out of bounds right yeah. there as well. Hardest boss in the game. Yeah. That's really yeah, funny when um, you come across the B. I'd also say as well, both you played very well. Uh, it could have been anyone's game for a while and just kind of the last second decision really made the difference there. Yeah, it was fun. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was really good. This was a fun this was a fun seed. Yeah. Um I think there is a, the appropriate amount of hunters for sure. It's just man, when they when they come through cuz like uh when they come through that one when you go back through that one hallway and then all of them pop through the window, um because I thought it depends on who's outside when you go get, like, the chemical and all that stuff, right? I don't remember there being hunters. Mm -hmm. Or at least I thought, I, at least I thought mm -hmm. it was dependent on what was up there. Wait, I have... I didn't kill any of these guys, I think. Yeah, they're better. Yep. <clears throat> cool, we're bringing it home. Hooray! <laughs> yeah! Oh, I only have... I only got yeeted out of the wall, but I'm sure that was a... Uh... <laughs> got yeeted twice, but you know, we found our way back the second time. <laughs> Working as intended. Yeah, no, that was that was great. I'm just glad I didn't die anywhere else. I made uh, I made quite a bit of safety saves. Oh, I didn't mean to pick this up. I'm so used to picking up the fuse here <laughs> when you play this game so many times, right? Uh, how much of a detour was that? Like 10, 15 minutes? <laughs> uh, give or take, maybe? Yeah, oh, enough. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, like I said earlier, we uh we kind of uh gave the estimate 145 because we kind of uh banked on potential uh you know uh nooks and crannies, but you both played very well, even with the yeah. 10 to 15 minutes there. We're still well under the estimate. Yeah. Uh, luckily, we have everyone else ready for the next run, but uh yeah, that's a uh, GG right GG. there. GG. GG. GG's. GG's. GG's Pepsi. to both runners. Fine job. GG is fun. fun. That's not too far off. Yeah, uh, with uh, the load. Uh, all right, so let's do the uh, the whole uh, exit parts here. Uh, well, Pessimus, we already talked about how you felt about the run, but uh, yep. yeah, any, any more thoughts about how you felt about it? Yeah, I, uh, there's definitely some scary parts. Like I said, Yawn, like I said, we both almost quit, even though we <laughs> technically didn't have to. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was a good time. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Thank you for having me. Cheers. And anyone yeah, to find you, you on Twitch or anywhere else, where can they find you? Yeah, so if you... I, I mainly speed on Remake. Like I said, you'll see me running Zero, some casual stuff, DVD kind of stuff as well. You can find me on uh, twitch.tv slash pessimism. Um, I'm on Twitter as well. X pessimism, my old name, which I detest. But it is what it is. Appreciate Alrighty. it. Thank you for having yeah, me. Thank absolutely. you. Uh, I want to say thank you to Kat and Nick for setting this up. Thank you for everyone behind the scenes making this work. Jay, thank you for making the seed and comment. All three of you for commentating. Always good talking to you guys. And uh, everyone, thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed the race. Be safe. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. And yeah, much love. Thank you. Cheers as well. Cheers. And then uh, Mar, uh, how did how did you feel about everything now? Oh no, I thought I thought that was a really fun seed. I thought um cuz like we got quite a bit of the key items, like the um the path to victory go mode items. I feel like pretty early on um and you know all that's left to find usually is just uh like you know that key to the power area and the nitro. So um it's it's in, it's always really fun to like kind of take those gambles depending on what you have and stuff um and just kind of mitigating what checks are where and that sort of stuff. So no, this seed was really fun in that regard. Um, and it was it was great to see like, you know, the, where the boss bonds were and stuff like that. But yeah, um, thank you so much again for having me. Yeah, Kat and Eck for setting this up. You know, so many talented uh, speedrunners uh, participating. A lot of our friends in here. It's been really cool to watch. Um, and yeah, thank you. Thank you, J-Rock again. I, I mean, 
you know, I haven't done randomizers <laughs> in like five years and stuff. And then, you know, he's he helped great. me out a lot. He, he's helped me out a lot in the past couple of weeks, giving me so many tips and stuff I wouldn't have even thought about. So no, he was, he's the MVP here. So thank you. Thank you so much, J-Rock, for uh, all of your help on that and, uh, and making the seed and all that stuff. And yeah, you know, Thank you to uh, you know everyone watching, you know taking time out of your day to to watch this, and all y'all at home and my community, uh, everyone in the Resident Evil speedrun community. You guys are great, and yeah, thank you, Pessy, for uh, you know good old fun race. <laughs> yeah, thanks for the race. I I forgot to say thank you to you as well, Gigi. Yeah, Gigi's hey. Gigi's man. Uh, as oh, yeah. well, uh, Mar, if anyone wanted to find you on Twitch, where can they find you? Yep, uh, twitch.tv slash Marforia. Um, yeah, Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, all of that's Marforia. And uh, I mainly speedrun Resident Evil. And, you know, I speedrun, you know, other I speedrun Crash and Katamari, Monkey Island, whatever, stuff like that. But, you know, 90% of the time it's Resident Evil. And I'm hooked on these randomizers now. So I'm, I'm excited to try Chris out, you know, next week and all that sort of stuff. Yay. Absolutely. Yeah, I want to say as that. well, I was telling uh, J-Rock during the commentary, but the work and practice you put in uh, absolutely shows. And I commend you for that. Thank you. Thank you so much. 100%. Yeah. Uh, and to both the runners, I'm, I'm glad you both enjoyed the seed. Um, I thought I had potentially talk with you both at some point about Yawn eating you out the wall, but I didn't want to give it away right before the run. So I apologize. No, I, that's but, a fun surprise, uh, honestly. Surprise, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but yeah, if you guys are down for any other custom seat, just let me know and I will have fun uh, mixing some more up for y'all. Oh, Absolutely. that'd be a cool idea. I'd be down with that for sure. Yeah. All righty. Awesome. I'll definitely thank you, thank you once again to both of you and to J Rock. Uh, if you want to check out either one of our runners, you can find them at uh, I, you know, on Twitch or anywhere else under Pessimism and Marforia. And as well with that, uh, Team Stars finally scores their second point, and we have a couple more races for you tonight. Uh, the next one, we're going to be going a little bit mad because we're going to Resident Evil 7 Madhouse. Oh boy, here we'll we go. We'll be right back. Oh boy. <laughs> All right, everyone. Welcome back to the Resident Evil Relay. I am one of your hosts, Dick Dysis. And I'm your host, Kelling. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back, indeed. So that randomizer race, it was absolutely chaotic. And it just the amount of just leads lost and taken was wild that time. It was actually so much fun to watch. That was that was actually probably one of my favorite seeds to watch. Like you don't get a very like when you do randomizers, so many things can happen. Soft locks can happen. It's just really not in your hands half of the time. So you just hope for the best. But that was like a really really fun seed to watch. Oh, absolutely. Uh, but the fun is not over yet. We still have two games for you tonight. And uh, with the last game that we just did, uh, Stars did get up by eight points. Now it is two to seven. Uh, we still have plenty of fun left for you, and our next game is going to be arguably one of the Resident Evil staples. We're going to be having Resident Evil 7, but not just Resident Evil 7. We're going to be amping things up pretty hard. Um, we can jump into that in one moment here, but anyway, we're going to be going to Resident Evil 7 Madhouse. Uh, anyway, we have two teams as always here. We have Team Stars, and representing Team Stars is Captain Ezekiel. Hi, everyone. I'm Captain Ezekiel, and I am excited to be here to run RE7 New Game Madhouse against a very, very good friend, Cat Link, so I'm very, very excited for this. Uh, as well, on the other side for Team Umbrella, we have your runner, Cat Link, who has also been joining me as a co-host. Yeah, hello, everybody. My name is Cat Link, and I, yeah, I'll be running New Game Madhouse. It is quite the difficulty. I'm really, really excited I uh, just want to say uh, really happy to have all my best friends in one place just with me on this one, uh, as well as just like the last four to five years being alongside of Zeke running this game. And just, you know, he's taught me so much. So, you know, I'm really excited to see how this goes. Hoping <laughs> the RNG is in our favor, or at least my favor, please. Hopefully, that's a way of putting it, hopefully. <laughs> Um, yeah. As well, um, I do want to introduce our commentators where we have... Hi. <laughs> Hello. There you go. Uh, yeah, go ahead. I'll introduce myself. Uh, I'm Yiddle. Um, I was here yesterday uh, running Village. I'm really excited for this RE7 race. Madhouse New Game is actually the most punishing category in this game by a long shot. 
So uh, these runners have have a have a mountain to climb, um, and I'm joined by. You are. <laughs> hey, it's Marforia. I was literally just on a few minutes ago for the RE1 randomizer race. Uh, I'm really, really excited to be here. For uh, RE7 is like that's the first uh, like big speed game I got into, and New Game Madhouse was actually the category that inspired me to uh, run Resident Evil. So I'm super happy to see like two of my really amazing friends here <clears throat> uh, running this category and and cheering them on. So it's gonna be it's gonna be a great race. All righty. Uh, before I hand you off the reins, I believe for Resident Evil Madhouse, we do have some uh, custom rule sets just because uh, while we can do in-game time, there might be some conditions. Uh, would you like to please explain that for us from the commentators? Uh, yeah, uh, pretty pretty straightforward. But at March 2, there's a certain amount of ammo that they're going to need. They're going to need 12 shotgun shells. Sometimes the game is a little unforgiving, so they do have a backup save. Uh, we'll be going by the IGT for official ruling unless they have to use the backup save, at which point it will be a RTA race. But otherwise, uh, timing starts on difficulty selection. So uh, should I count? Yeah, down? Uh, if we're all ready on our runners, we can uh, get ready to go. You all ready? Yep. Yippers. All righty. I will let uh, either Mar or Neadle count it down. Yeah, I got yep. this. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> All you, bud. <laughs> All right. Uh, start on go. Three, two, one, go. Good luck, guys. And they are off. All right. No. So, um, <laughs> hey, yeah, sorry. Just a, just a quick just little uh, lore, lore dump before we get into it. This is our wife, Mia. Um, oh, she news. may or may I'm not be a, a bioterrorist. Uh, but that's besides the point. She's been missing for a long time. And we, Ethan Winters, uh, have to save her because uh, even though she's been missing for three years and we have no idea where she could be, uh, we have this tape where she's essentially telling us to stay away and it never gets out to us, so we're not going to stay away. I miss you so much. I'm sending tons of kisses. Yeah, it's really funny when uh, you play this game, like, once you start to speed run this game, and, well, first off, well, I was going to say, well, things, things have changed a little bit now in terms of, uh, well... Because you can't skip cutscenes in this game. Like, that's one thing that, uh, you know, you, you can't do in this game, but you can do in pretty much every other Resident Evil game. Uh, now we have a mod to you where we can right. skip these cutscenes, so that's great. I but once you start getting into this speedrun, and you're just like, oh my god, I have to see Mia again. That's always oh, been, like, our, our like this, meme. Like, the hey, baby. You hey, this. baby. So, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, um, we gotta see Mia's face stay again. Stay away. So, uh, do you want to explain some of the madhouse mechanics? Because this is very different from uh, your standard playthrough. So Madhouse varies a little bit, well, quite a bit differently from, you know, easy and normal. Um, one, enemies and Jack and everyone, they're super aggro. Uh, two, uh, especially towards the beginning of the game, there's uh, the sequences of how you do the uh, how you do things are a little bit different. Um, like you'll need a couple extra items to get key items and things like that. Um, so, and... Let's see what else. How? That's like the main thing that pops up in my head for that. But I don't know um, also just your strats are back. totally different. Like you have somehow. to, you know, your loadout's different. Maybe um, it's a prank. All the, you know, you have to end up using more grenade oh, rounds and crafting things. Like you Dolby. have to craft things way more Dolby in this yes. run than you would in like New Game Easy or um, I know. anything I know. of that nature. What if it is? Her? Definitely. Um, and the, the, the big one happened. is there are no checkpoints from uh, pretty much the beginning of the game all the way up until you get to Lucas. So pretty much the first 40-ish minutes, 45 minutes of the run, um, they will be making uh, safety saves throughout the um, throughout the various sections just before key moments, because if they die, they get sent all the way back to the dinner cutscene um, after guest house. So it's sort of uh, <laughs> in the interest of safety uh, and the interest of not, you know, losing 30 Please. minutes of progress, because that that is probably the most punishing part of Madhouse. Uh, you can think you're on a roll, heading to a save room, and then you get cheap shotted and it's all over and, and you're you're back at <laughs> you're back at dinner. <laughs> yeah, you know, you die at March two, uh, and you know that's not too far off to where you get to Lucas's uh, you know, little section there. But yeah, you you're pretty well into the game and then yeah, teleported back to, you know, like fifteen minutes into the game. And yeah, it's it's so heartbreaking. But yeah, it's definitely the smart play, especially in this type of setting, to create those safety saves. And, you know, in easy and normal, you can just make as many saves as you want. In Madhouse, you have to use cassette tapes, which is akin to 
previous Resident Evil games, you know, just like in Resident Evil 1 Remake, etc., you have to use ink ribbons and things like that. So um, they made sure in these harder difficulties to bring back those limited saves. And that's also present, you know, in... Uh, Let's see, RE2 remake uh, and some uh, some of these other some of these other games as well. So uh, this difficulty really keeps you on your toes, and uh, it's it's always a really impressive speed run to see. Um, but here we're coming upon guest house, and typically they don't do retries. There's there's usually retries. Okay, so they do uh, do retries. Yeah, guys. they they do only. I th I think there's only two in guest house, um, and then that's that's sort of it. That's it for retries yeah. for the rest of the run. Um, so the the retry, uh, it basically changes Ethan's run speed from his outdoor uh, from his indoor run speed, which is kind of a slower uh, jog, to his outdoor run speed which is a slightly faster jog. It's still not very fast, but um, yeah. So there's there's a couple tactical retries and um, some FPS swaps that you just saw. So uh, the best way to explain it, uh, when you change your FPS down to 30, uh, hitboxes and hurtboxes are smaller. So Ethan can squeeze past objects. You saw a bit of it in uh, our village. And uh, was there any FPS shenanigans in our village? No, not exactly. Um, <laughs> um, the only kind of FPS shenanigans, well, because you have to lock it to 120, but what some folks will do before the G fights uh, is lower the image quality. Oh, um, right, 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 yeah. Yeah, but, you know, because that, that helps you get more of those uh, really crunchy knife, knife hits and things like yeah. that. Uh, yeah, so FPS is going to play into this run uh, a decent bit. It's just RE engine things. A lot of stuff is tied to FPS. So um, there are sections where we want higher FPS, and there are sections where if our FPS is too high, we'll actually soft lock the game. So uh, we're just going to be kind of mindful of that throughout the run. Uh, Ethan looking to the right here, as you see on Zeke's screen, that's just to avoid a jump scare. Uh, there's a body that's supposed to float up, uh, but we can just skip that. That's that's the trick that you can take on from this run. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's it's uh, it's a really fun mechanic to you know that's that's like you know right here at the beginning of the game you do that mechanic it's like oh my goodness this is this is a, it's such an easy skip you know and that kind of like gets you hooked on like, trying to learn the rest of these types of things in these speed runs. Uh, grabbing the bolt cutters here, and as you can see, we've found our wife. So that's it. GG. Uh, easy. We can go home. God, yeah, you. that's it. We got it's it. Me. It's uh, me. We're done. <laughs> um, yeah, so we we found our wife, uh, Mia. But she's she's acting here. a little strange, uh, what do you mean? and we, we're trying to find out no, what's, no, what I exactly wouldn't. is going on. The ladder behind us broke, uh, as is sort of you know cliche horror movie answer. tradition. <laughs> so now we have you? to follow Mia uh, through this damn cellar. This is probably on? one of the biggest auto scrollers in the right. game. We need to You're go sort now. Of just stuck here waiting behind Mia, and because of how uh, trigger checkpoints work, uh, where you you kind of need to wait near Mia, otherwise she won't proceed with Where the next uh, sort of like dialogue that she safe. has. And casually, it's it's really interesting, you know, and it it's sort of atmospheric and it's cool. In a speed run, uh, a, lot of, a lot of people just really hate this section. Really so we'll meme around, years? we'll crouch at Mia, we'll play around with the inventory, you know. Um, <laughs> it's kind of a just hang on and uh, follow Mia as close as you can. Yeah, and um, it, also <laughs> usually at the beginning of the speed run here and during this auto scroller, uh, like Nadal said, with the inventory, um, usually we'll open up our what? inventory because the inventory this in this game is real time. Uh, it's yes. not like it's not like it goes to another to screen or you know it looks like it pauses the game that sort of stuff. Um, while you have the inventory open, the game is still going. You know your enemies are going. Uh, for for most of these types of things, you can't obviously do it during cutscenes or cinematics and things of that nature. But um, you can open up your inventory here, delete that little email from Mia, the message from Mia, and then move your bolt cutters over. Um, it's a really great, intuitive, fast menu, and that's also it's yeah, just like one of the more fun talk. mechanic. It's probably like the message. most fun mechanic of Not this me. speed run, just because uh, no other I inventory did. is like this in uh, other okay, games. Fine. I think the inventory in RE Five and maybe one of the Outbreak games. I think those are real time, but I'm not. I, I've, I'm not we super familiar with those speed runs, so I do. I do not want to spread this information. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. The fact that uh, the inventory doesn't pause time is actually really nice. So it means during any downtime, and especially in Madhouse, sure know um, you know, in, in the easier difficulty uh, or the difficulty that is called easy. Uh, you don't have to do that much menuing. Most of your stuff kind of just ends up where it needs to be as long as you're planning ahead. In this, uh, there are going to be times 
where they have a lot of stuff in their inventory. They need to go in, quickly combine something, move something around. And so it's really great that they can use sort of like elevators or waiting for a door there. to open. Or it's you there. Know, um, the, the four seconds after you insert a key item and you're waiting for something to happen. So you, you'll be seeing a lot of that. Um, and it's it's definitely in, in Madhouse. It's really impressive to see sort of how fast uh, they can process like, OK, I need to combine I'm this sure for an explosive it. round and uh, sort of get on to the next section. Um, yeah, here, here we're waiting for a it's specific gone. sound after which Mia gets taken. So you'll see both runners sort family. of just positioned against this brick wall. Yeah, um, and as soon as Mia screams, they can turn and head up the stairs. So this this whole guest house section is about the first 15 minutes of the game. And uh, since the beginning of the run, you end up seeing it quite a lot. Uh, there's there's a lot of hot opinions on uh, whether guest house is fun or not. Um, but personally, I, I like it because there is a lot of skill and a lot of optimization that goes into all this. So just um, saw on Catlink's screen going to the bathroom door to trigger Mia crawling up the stairs and then heading down to uh, see our wife again. Perfectly normal. Yeah, and... Um these little things, just because, um, and it also carries over into other speed games, because, yeah, guest house, sure, maybe there's some, like, cutscenes, you know, a couple boss fights and stuff, but, like, you know, it'll set up optimization. It's mainly about, like, you know, it's it's all about movement, perfect lines and stuff, and that really, like, they're, those are kind of, like, little micro things, but they certainly add up over time. And, um, you know, that can be a really fun thing to focus on. Yeah, definitely. Um, so you just saw Zeke running into uh, Mia, sort of counterintuitive because she's trying to stab us, yeah. but it actually wait, wait. kind of, um, we're in a forced uh, fight here, and then uh, shortly after, there's some uh, quick things that are going to need to happen before we're ready to wake our lovely <laughs> Oh, now, one thing that I always say, uh, this is something I always memed about when I first started here? running this game, is... Why I did Ethan come cool. to the middle of nowhere in Louisiana with only himself? Yes. He didn't bring a friend. He didn't call. He didn't bring Leave the cops with him. Alone. None of that stuff. He's just on a solo adventure out here. Yeah, he could have at least brought the guy that he's calling in the intro cutscene. Like, it seems like they're pretty close, so it would have been nice to have some backup. So he sees Zeke um, quickly dip into the bathroom. He's grabbing two heels, and then he's going to position himself uh, pretty specifically to try and force Mia awake. Um, it's a little bit uh, painful. Uh, especially in Madhouse, because you can't consistently position yourself, but there, he, he got it. And uh, he's going into the first sort of boss fight, uh, Mia 1, which in Madhouse can be quite a pain. So uh, he's going to pick up the axe, he's going to crouch at Mia, and what he's trying to do is get as many multi-hits with these axe swings as he can. Um, essentially relating to FPS, similar to RE2R, you can get multiple hits the higher your FPS is. So... In the case of Mia 1 and 2, we sort of want higher FPS to guarantee those chunky hits. And there we go. Mia 1 down, no sweat. Uh, yeah, that was that was a really a really seamless fight there. Uh, Cat, working on waking Mia up can be a bit of a pain in Madhouse for sure. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a really tricky trigger because usually in New Game Easy, New Game Plus Easy, you just stand exactly like where the cutscene ends. And then you... you you stand exactly where that's at, position yourself, the camera to the left a little bit, so you can just stay there. But in Madhouse, you have to pick up those heels. This And so um, that can kind of um, make that position, the repositioning a little tricky there. So yeah, it's it's all good. It's totally understandable that this could be um, you know, a little, little tricky to set up. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it is nice on uh, easier difficulties, but on Madhouse, you're, you're sort of thrust into it. Uh, so you just saw Zeke do a second retry. That's once again just to get movement speed back. He's going to come through and collect the fuse. Uh, yeah, Kat's having a lot of trouble with this Mia wake up here. I'm not Mia's sure. She is not cooperating. Come on, yeah. Mia. This is, this is not the time to take that long of a nap, ma'am. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it is weird because it, it's supposed to be on a timer. Like there is a certain time where she should just kind of get up no matter where you are. And it yeah. forces. There we go. There it go. Okay. There we wow. go. She just, she that, just took ah. the longest nap there. I swear. I swear. Uh, yeah, that, that might have been the longest Mia nap I've ever seen. She was. Uh, she was little, knocked out. Uh, yeah. Not, but that's good. Now, now we're back in the literal swing of things. Ah, you get it. <laughs> Hopefully, she goes back down easy. Yeah. There we go. Nice. nice.
<laughs> really good me a one fight from Kat. Yeah, that was um, that was awesome. There may be some distance between the runners right now. Do not fret. This is Madhouse. There are thousands of things that can go wrong. Um, oh yeah. No, uh, and just to explain, yeah. I don't think we touched on Sarah D actually. Uh, oh no, do wanna, yeah. Do you want to cover Sarah D real quick? Sure. Sarah D is the uh, you know the Sarah is uh, the rating. It's the system in Japan. So kind of like here we have like you know. Um, that we have the rating system here, you What's know, this? E, T, and, and uh, M, all that sort of stuff. So in Japan, that's Sero. So they got, um, so Sero D is basically like their rated M sort of thing, or, or one of them. And uh, essentially, it's, you know, no gore, no decapitation, none of that stuff. So we don't see Ethan get his hand chopped off, um, nothing nothing like that. Um, there's a few instances here in the speed run where we don't see any decapitation or um, insane gore like that. And um, so you you see it here, you see it, um, let's see, at the Jack 1 fight, Jack the 2, dinner cut scene, dinner cut scene um, and then like when you go to get the snake key out of the deputy. Um, but yeah, there's just, it just saves, it saves a bit of time yeah. throughout the course of the run, 23 seconds. All right, so um, the runners are going to pause here really quick okay. to um, okay. here in a little bit to fix their FPS. So if you see no, that no, coming no. up here, uh, that that would be why. <laughs> Three, two, one. It's fucking hard. So, uh, welcome to the family song. Let me. The cutscene. So our runners have paused. Uh, Zeke needs to fix his FPS really quick. Um, you know, just because as we mentioned earlier, FPS is uh, you know, we want to make sure you know it's it's high and it's consistent, things of that nature. So no need to fret here. Our runners are fixing fixing their FPS situation up in here. <clears throat> Yeah, with that in mind, um, Sarah D is kind of notorious for being a little bit rough with OBS, uh, <laughs> just in terms of oh, the yeah. settings. Yeah. Oh like, yeah, because because uh, uh, the Sarah D version, you don't get it on, you don't buy it on Steam. Uh, you actually mm -hmm. have to buy it on the Windows Store. So um, setting that up sometimes can be, uh, you know, setting it up on OBS, getting the correct captures, and especially hooking up to the FPS stuff. Um, it could it it could be a little a little finicky sometimes. But yeah, it's always really funny when you have the Sarah D version, uh, when you're running it on the Sarah D version. And, um, you know, the first instance of, of seeing that is here uh, with the hand chop scene. Because in the actual, like, uncensored version, uh, Ethan gets stabbed with the screwdriver in, with his hand. And you think that's pretty gory and stuff, right? But then in the Sarah D version, you get stabbed with, like, a, a fork, like a gardening fork, which I think is way worse. I don't know about you. <laughs> yeah, I, I've always thought that was a strange edit. Um... And uh, overall, uh, Sarah D, I think, saves about 20 seconds in total just due to the censorship. Um, it's, so it's, it's about, t it's like 23. It's like 23 to 25. Yeah. So in a in a Madhouse run, it's not like uh, the difference in Sarah D versus Steam is going to, you know, change, um, change the run timing all that much. But it's still, uh, you know, the comfort of running on Sarah D. The version hasn't changed in pretty much four years, pretty much since launch. It's only had like one or two updates. So it's very consistent.
All right, everyone, we are back. Apologies for that. We had some minor technical difficulties, but we are back to the run. Uh, once again, we're going to hand off to our commentators to count it down. Uh, I do believe there was uh, some delay on the pausing, so uh, uh, we can handle that with a... Uh, I think Zeke knows and he wants to unpause, so... Uh, we'll have Mar count it down, and then uh, I guess Cat will go, and then when Zeke feels it's right, he will go, because there's some uh, issue with pausing there. So, on your count, uh, let's say Mar. All right. Three, two, one, and go. Cool. Welcome back. Um, <laughs> so, uh, just to catch ourselves up, uh, Zeke wasn't able to pause because the cutscene doesn't let you pause until you're at dinner. So he's just keeping his uh, game paused for another like 10, 15 seconds just to even it up properly. Um, but where we're at, um, <laughs> Kat is on her way to fight Mia 2, and Zeke is at the uh, very famous dinner cutscene, and he will soon be meeting the family, um, all, of our, all of our boss characters, essentially. <laughs> so uh, to explain Mia 2 really quick, uh, you're going to see Cat line up and then go in for a chunky swing. And again, we're going for multi-hits here. So, beautiful. That was totally perfect. Um, <laughs> Mia 2 can get really out of control really fast. If she swings at you and she connects, uh, the fight quickly goes out of control. Um, oh, yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, Mia is down. We're good there. And we're going to wait for Jack to punch us in the face um, and be welcomed to the family, son. And then we'll have another long cutscene, but <laughs> it's okay. This is uh, probably, it's like one of two left before you can just worry about, you just you can just go zoom. <laughs> yeah. Um, so essentially, uh, like I was saying before, this is pretty much one of the only checkpoints in main house. Uh, so if they die at any point between now all the way up to Lucas, which is a decent ways away, um, they'll be sent back to this dinner cutscene. So that's why you'll see them uh, utilizing a few of those save spots. They'll need to grab the cassette tapes, which fortunately are, are right next to the save spots. They're not too difficult to source. And um, yeah, so uh, Jack just doing a little dental work. All good. <laughs> Man, th this is where you can really see in this uh, in this particular scene that they like that whole VR influence is definitely right here. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. So this this game was um, sort of made with VR heavily in mind. So you get a lot of these like in your face sort of action scenes where you can move uh, Ethan's head freely, but uh, you're kind of like constrained. And uh, that the, they the devs really hammer home that sense of like claustrophobia and kind of being stuck in a small unfamiliar space and you know you can't you know n no real room nowhere to escape nowhere to hide um so uh zeke's heading into hallway now Oof. um <laughs> Mar, you want to talk about hallway a little bit oh goodness so jack hallway uh you have to grab a key and then you have to go touch a door so you can activate the cop cutscene but you have to do this all without jack uh hitting you and uh in Madhouse, he moves really, really fast. He does when he does hits, they will put you into danger. But uh, you know, it, uh, thankfully, if you block, it's fine. But yeah, you see, he's so close. He's he's so fast. It's so scary. It's very scary on Madhouse. I do not miss uh, seeing this. But yeah, you want to get into this room, use that key immediately, turn around. Oh my God, yeah, because Jack was right there. If your back is to Jack in this room, he will cut your leg off. Okay, yeah, he's good. He's good. Yeah, and wow. you cannot you cannot get out of that if um if because <laughs> your leg gets chopped off, you have to crawl towards like the strong first aid and stuff like that. So yeah, a couple close calls there, but he made it out just fine. He grabbed a neuro round on the way out because um, he will have to. Um, he have to. Uh, what was it called? The one of the fluid to kind of deconstruct it there. Uh, yeah. Right. So he uh, he picked up a strong chem fluid, which uh, he'll be using for. Uh, either a heal or a explosive round. I'm not exactly sure which. Uh, and what he was hoping he would get there is a uh, small trick called phone skip, where essentially instead of having to go to the door, the phone just instantly rings. Um, right now, Ethan's talking to Zoe. She's telling us basically we have this uh, codex, we have this nice fancy Apple Watch, and uh, we have to find a way out of the house. And, you know, we're like, thanks, Zoe. Great, great advice. I'll do that. Um, you're gonna see Zeke pick up a few items. Uh, we're gonna be doing a lot of a lot of pickups 
in the house section. He's going to head over and grab a uh, coin, which he'll need for the scorpion key later, which is Madhouse uh, exclusive. Um, mm -hmm. And as you can see, Cat dealing with the full fury of Jack Baker. Um, yeah, his, his animations are sped up, I want to say, two and a half times their normal speed on easy. So he is sort of unnaturally fast. Uh, he'll catch up to you and uh, teleport. He Yep, there's the teleportation. There's, yep. Oh, it's dodging so leg chop. Very nice no. from Cat. Ooh, yes, yes. Yeah. I'm so I'm so glad both of them did not get their legs chopped off. It is uh, it is not fun when that happens. Yeah, that is a very, very long sequence. Um, so you'll see uh, Zeke is talking to uh, Deputy David Anderson. I sure hope nothing bad happens to him. He's only a week away from retirement. Uh, really nice guy. And um, we're, we're going to get our first item, the knife, which uh, does have a, a decent bit of use in this first boss. But pretty much from then on, we're just going to be kind of blasting everything. No no knifing necessary. Um, interestingly, Cat also did not get phone skip from the appearance of it. Uh, phone skip is, I, I think... 350 plus FPS to get it. Yes. So, uh, yeah, and you need that FPS as you're crawling through the crawl space. So it's a little inconsistent even if you have a NASA PC. Um, yeah, and it's you don't get it every time either. Um, it's 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 pretty rare, and if you do get it, it saves like one to two seconds. So yeah, um, very minor, especially in Madhouse. Yeah. So, um, like Nieto said, with the Madhouse exclusive antique coins. So, um, I'm sure a lot of folks who played this casually, there's antique coins spread out throughout the whole game. Uh, if you're running 100% or you're a completionist, uh, you get these antique coins to unlock items from bird cages. Uh, they all they're all assigned a different value and stuff like that. On the other difficulties, easy normal, you get the scorpion key for free downstairs in the basement. But here, it's locked behind a bird cage in the main uh, in the main hall up in there. So. Um, and once you get that, Jack spawns again. So, like I said, uh, sequences are definitely different here in Madhouse. Uh, Zeke coming up here upon the Jack 1 fight. This is where you'll also see the Cero D influence if uh, he keeps the camera on there. Because I know sometimes we kind of still look away with any of these scenes. Um, but usually the cop gets his head chopped off here, like totally sli sliced off with the shovel. But here it's just, uh, yeah, no, no decapitation, like we said. No, he was a week away from retirement. No. Um, so Zeke's going to do a little uh, collection around this arena right now. Uh, the name of the game is just avoiding Jack. Uh, as you can see, Jack is is ready, <laughs> ready to let it rip. Um, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> what we want is to get into the car and have Jack actually rip us out. Uh, we can also just get out ourselves, uh, which works fine. But the ultimate goal is to have Jack go into the car like that. Um, and this fight is actually pretty simple. It's going to be 10 swings with the knife and then seven shots with regular ammo. The last one timed so that he just instantly crashes into the wall. And that was a very clean Jack one. Easy peasy. Nice. Yeah, and um, interesting enough, this fight is pretty similar to how it is on easy in terms of knife slashes and then um, just a couple of those uh, G17 shots. But just a couple little, uh, just just only a few more in this one. And also that uh, car key is uh, locked behind a tackle box. Usually it's just there on the table. But in Madhouse, it makes you go to that locker to get the lock pick and unlock it yourself. So that kind of, when you... When you play, you know, no, uh, easier normal the first time, then come to Madhouse. You, this is where you kind of start to panic. You're just like, wait, I thought this thing was here. Cat <laughs> <laughs> uh, got the ghost box. I don't know why, but there's there's something in that box, and sometimes it just flies off the shelf. Cat um, <laughs> heading into Jack One now, uh, while Zeke's just finishing up Jack One. They're they're really not that far apart uh, in terms of Madhouse standards. Uh, any any little thing can easily set you back 20, 30 seconds. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I wouldn't rule anybody out of this race at any point. Um, yeah, absolutely not. Just because, uh, yeah, as we mentioned earlier, enemies are more aggressive. And then also pretty much every molded, especially those big armed ones and the crawlers, they can one shot you. And it, it doesn't even have to be like, you know, it your health eventually depletes or anything like that. It's not like two shots. It's literally one shot and you're gone. So that can happen at any point in this run. Yeah, um, in the in the same way that Ethan can multi-hit with his melee attacks, so can the molded, uh, and we call them cheap shots, where essentially a molded will hit you for double the damage that it normally would, and it's sort of like in a single frame, so you have no time to react, you can't possibly heal up. Um, mm -hmm. Zeke now using his coins to get the scorpion key, after which Jack will spawn, 
And now we will set up for the easiest out of bounds in any category, actually. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, normally, there's a huge sequence that we have to go through to get Jack to this point. In Madhouse, since he spawns right after you pick up the key, you can easily pull him up the stairs. You're going to see Zeke 30 FPS past him and then get grabbed on the stairs, thrown against the wall and out of bounds. Perfect. There he goes. Yeah, very, very smooth. Yeah, uh, out of bounds and, and easy. Uh, even though, yeah, it's easy difficulty. Goodness, uh, if you if you miss, like, you know, set it, because there's a few different ways to set it up. It's so refreshing. And, you know, if you miss it or if you do something wrong, you know, you have to reset, go back to guest house, et cetera, et cetera. So it's very refreshing to see uh, in this hard difficulty that, you know, at least you get one pretty uh, easy thing to do up in here. Yeah. Nice. And um, you saw he just paused as he was falling back in bounds. Uh, that's just to wait for the room to load. Um, and uh, once the room's loaded in, you're going to see him grab the red key card and a bunch of ammo, uh, primarily enhanced ammo. That's the that's the first enhanced ammo pickup. So the pistol has two different types of ammo, uh, regular ammo and enhanced ammo. The enhanced ammo does essentially double, if not triple, the damage of regular ammo. So it is very, very valuable in this run. It's going to be used in a lot of cases to do sort of cleanup damage and make sure that bosses are down. Uh, in the case of Jack 2, it's going to be used quite a lot. And you also saw Zeke go for a safety save because he is coming up to Jack 2. This is certainly a fight that can go wrong. If you <laughs> if you miss any of your shots, you're basically forced to restart because you need that ammo desperately. Yeah, in Jack 2, you utilize uh, what we call quick shots or quick firing. So with your G17, you can only do it with the G17 pistol. Uh, I, I mean, I don't think you could. You could probably do it with the Alber. I mean, we don't, but... <laughs> uh, I've but never anyway. seen it done. <laughs> yeah, nah, uh, but it's primarily done with the G17. You alternate between aiming down sights and just firing uh, hip fire. So once you, and you have to do it in a specific rhythm. And once you do that, uh, you you uh, pump out, you know, double the amount of shots really quickly. So in these, and a lot of the boss fights in this game, especially Jack 2, you have to hit those, you have to not only land the shots, you have to make sure you're quick firing. And, you know, since Jack moves super fast in this game, oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, and Cat with a perfect out of bounds as well. Uh, Jack kind of hung around in the hallway. Sometimes he loses aggro. Uh, canonically, he, he does wear glasses. He, he doesn't have the best eyesight. So... It kind of makes sense, um, but she got out of bounds just fine. No issues there. Uh, Zeke picking up a few more things, heading into Jack. You'll notice he has 15 enhanced ammo now, and he will need pretty much all of that for this uh, for this Jack 2 fight. Yep, it will be um, four shots right here at the very beginning of the fight. Yeah, once you pick up that dog head, that will activate the fight. Jack will throw you into that arena. Uh, right away, you're going to want to do four just regular shots to the head. But once he gets down, you're going to want to do six into that growth. And that's where you have to utilize those quick fires and have to make sure that each one lands. Yeah. In fact, uh, you, you you saw him uh, unlimited his, his FPS. Uh, if, if there's any stuttering, it's just for that reason. Uh, it's kind of important that he has high FPS for this part. I'm pretty sure he's going to go back down to 60 afterwards because he knows uh, OBS isn't cooperating super well today. Um, but yeah, finishing up the fight perfectly. Uh, it's it's a total of 14 uh, enhanced shots, and you craft ammo in the middle of the fight, so utilizing that uh, inventory that doesn't pause time, and then you kill him with the chainsaw. That was, um, that was pretty good. And it's all to yeah. skip a long animation of Jack's uh, torso walking around on its own after the fight. Yeah, and not only that, but since we're on Cero D, uh, Jack has a really long death animation as well after that mm -hmm. where his torso will explode. And that whole thing takes about uh, like 8 to 12 seconds, something like that. So with this, you just take that, you just you just can just leave him immediately, which is really nice. Yep. And Kat coming upon her Jack 2 boss fight as well. Um, she's uh, She went to go shoot that barrel to bait. Uh, there's a crawler in here. So a lot of the times, if you bait the crawler over there, he won't get you. And that's what's happened here. So that's really good. That's really nice. Crawlers can be so mean in this game. Oh, yeah. The, uh, crawlers are definitely uh, one of the most notorious for going for those cheap shots. You know, it's it's pretty much a guaranteed instant death if they touch you. So very important to stay away from them and, and bait them out of your way. Um, and similarly, just picking up a few more items that she's going to need for the fight. Uh, Zeke is sort of heading into the house cleanup section, I guess. He just has to go upstairs, pick up uh, two more dog heads, and uh, come back around to the outside of the house after grabbing the uh, broken shotgun and a, a few more few more things that he needs. Mm -hmm. And Cat heading into Jack 2 now. 
So those four shots to the head, initially to stagger him, expose his weak point. She's going to drop FPS to make these shots a little bit more consistent to land. Uh, I think that was seven. It's, it's really tough because you actually have to land all of those shots into his weak point. So as soon as he starts standing up and hides the weak point again, uh, you're actually not doing the full amount of damage that you would be otherwise. Um, Ooh, what a what a mean hit there. That's oh, okay. That oh, no. that is okay. This is that just goes to show this this difficulty can be ruthless. But it's amazing. Like you know, it's really great she made that safety save ahead of time. Um, yeah. You know, it's just you know that's that those are such godsends there. Um, yeah, but it's okay. <laughs> that that fight goes goes really out of control as soon as Jack gets a hit off on you because uh, you're basically staggering during the during his next hit. So unless, you know, he happens to hit you far enough away that his next hit isn't going to connect, you're pretty much uh, guaranteed a death there. But uh, no no big issue. Zeke still has a long way to go. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there, there's, there's a lot of tricky stuff in this run, and uh, there, there's a few segments where he's going to be kind of flying with a save a decent ways back. So uh, we'll right. see how it plays out. Um, yeah. But finally out of the main house for Zeke, he's, that's where he's going to go uh, get that repair kit and uh, craft, go ahead and, uh, what was that? That was a neuro round. Oh my God. Everyone crafts things so fast in this game. I, you know, I know, even when I, even when I used to run this game, it's just like, all you think about is just doing those inputs super quick. And that's how it is in the, in the menu too. It's just so freaking fast. So yeah. Um, yeah, that was the neuro round. And then yeah, repaired the shotgun there. Um, yes. Cause yeah, that shotgun, uh, I know most folks, uh, they try to get that shotgun that's downstairs and it's, it's great and everything like that. But no, this one's the, and this one may only have two shots, but trust us, it is definitely the better of the two. <laughs> Yep. Um, I think Cat may have had an unfixable ammo issue there, is what happened. Which can also happen in Madhouse, which is why this category is the most punishing for sure. Was um, it the enhanced ammo? Yes, I think so. I think there may have been a miscraft. I, I kind of missed it. Again, they craft so fast <laughs> that you're yeah. only in the inventory for like 20 frames and then you're out. So, yeah. Um, you also saw Zeke uh, pick up the grenade launcher. Uh, in Madhouse, you get the grenade launcher much earlier than you do in uh, Easy. Um, there is an opportunity in Easy to, to pick it up early, but uh, for speedrun purposes, we wait till pretty late in the run to pick it up. Um, yeah. Well, you'll also, yeah. Uh, sorry. <laughs> you, no, you'll ahead, also notice um, at, uh with a uh, large heal there, Pretty much at all times, uh, both runners are going to make sure that they have either the materials or a heal to, uh, to offset any damage that they might take, uh, which just happens quite Oh, often. that's silly. See, that crawler, we're, we're talking about that crawler is so ruthless. He's so mean. And what's unfortunate, again, with the different sequences and stuff, when you're on normal and easy, you just have a normal crawler right there uh, before yeah. the door. And you just, you know, as you're walking up, you just uh, aim your gun up towards him and you just shoot him in the head and that's fine. Um, but yeah, in this game, crawler comes out of nowhere and it's that one jump shot and it's it's uh, it's okay. It happens It happens to the best of us. Happens to us more than you think, trust us. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Um, Zeke in Old House now. He just got to meet Marge for the uh, first time. Um, Old House, uh, there, there's going to be a bit of collecting that you'll see. He's going to head out here, grab a uh, backpack, because inventory space is pretty limited by default. So uh, we're going to be picking up pretty much all the backpacks throughout the run, um, barring maybe one. So by the end of the run, their inventories will be fully upgraded. Um, so got that backpack, uh, grabbing a few more materials so he can craft a heal. And uh, what he is making sure of now is that he has those 12 shotgun shells that he'll need for going into March 2. Uh, this could actually be the great equalizer here. Um, they, uh, Kat and Zeke have made a gentleman's agreement that if uh, one of them has to retry five times to get the uh, yeah, sort of gambled yeah. shotgun shells, they will uh, make the decision oh, to just load a save and then sort of go from there. So... Yeah. Um, yeah, Zeke's going to be coming up on a box soon, and he's praying that there is shotgun shells in there. From now on, we basically only want to see shotgun shells as pickups. We don't really want heals or anything else in any of these uh, randomized boxes. Alrighty. 
uh, getting started with Jack to here again for Kat. And, um, you know, for those who don't know, Kat has ran this game. She, she's been she's been running this game for five years. Uh, you know, New Game Easy is like her, her main uh, shtick. And, you know, she's been putting in so much work here in Madhouse. So, um, and same like with the Jack 2 boss fight here. So, you know, she's definitely been uh, using a lot of that intuition and skill here to really help her out here with, uh, you know, the Jack 2 boss fights and all that stuff. So she's been doing great. We're all, we're all really happy and proud of her. Oh yeah, yeah. She she has been putting so much work into this category, and um, it's it's kind of crazy because for a time this was a there very, we go there we go let's go nice heck claps yeah and chat. Let's, claps and chat <laughs> there we go Jack two down we made it there we made it <laughs> uh, Zeke heading past Marge right now uh, sometimes those bugs can be a bit of a problem um, basically. Uh, a, up until now, he's just been collecting things uh, for constructing both uh, explosive rounds or flame rounds, which are going to be really important soon, and uh, also making sure he gets that shotgun ammo. Right now, he has 14, if I saw the screen correct. Uh, yeah. If he pulls... Okay, wow, yeah. one more, huh? <laughs> yeah, so he's, he's pretty much good to go. Uh, I mean, he has the 12 that he needs. He's going to use, I think, two on Marge 1. So he actually should be good, although having extra shotgun ammo really doesn't hurt because the shotgun is, is probably the most utilized weapon in this run. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, new game categories, yeah, you have you have to use that shotgun. Oh, it yeah, is yeah. imperative. <laughs> so uh, Marge 1, if you want to do the rundown, it's, it's a pretty quick one. Blink and you'll miss it. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, she'll push you down here into this uh, giant hole of and she'll throw some bugs at you. But basically, uh, you'll just be doing one flame round to her, uh, one enhanced, two shotguns, and one more enhanced. So it's a nice little rhythm there. You don't want to do shotgun immediately because then she'll get staggered back. But yeah, as you see there, that one and done, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I love how even on Madhouse, that, that fight is so quick. Um, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, the she has a stagger animation where she'll step back and then send more bugs down into the hole. And we're kind of just teetering on the edge of that like damage threshold to prevent her from staggering back. So if by the time she does stagger back, we're already one shot away from killing her. And um, yeah. Actually, if you if you want a fun fight, uh, if you want a fun fact, hear from Mr. Knife Only himself. You don't even have to shoot her or anything like that. That that you know, you want to explain a little bit about that? <laughs> yeah, actually, um, <laughs> that that boss fight's actually on a timer. So the devs accounted for what would happen if you had no ammo going into that section. So if you have absolutely no ammo and you're totally out of luck, um, you can just stand in the at the bottom of the hole. And I think it's five minutes uh, by default. But if your DA is below rank one, it's actually only three minutes. So you can save two minutes in knife only easy, if that's, if you're a masochist. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Zeke heading into Lantern Skip, uh, one of the uh, sort of in more interesting skips. Um, he's essentially gonna look through the ceiling at a lantern that the game wants you to go up the stairs to inspect. And uh, fortunately, all we have to do is look at the spot where it is, and then he's able to fall into the hole, which skips. Uh, a cutscene of Marge grabbing her lantern, and uh, it kind of makes the water get a get a little janky there, and it stays there. Um, but yeah, Zeke actually has the ammo that he needs. He's probably still gonna break the box just for um, just for extra, and he's also gonna run back to the trailer to make a save because Marge two can easily easily go out of control. Um, there, there's a lot there's a lot that Marge can do, and we only want her to do like one very specific thing throughout the fight. Um, yeah, her her arena is so huge. And especially in this difficulty, you want to keep her in one spot. Uh, so it can, it can it can get pretty crazy there. Um, what I also was going to say too, um, with your with the box spawns and things like that, that's another reason they want to make sure they have the heals they want because they don't want like herbs and stuff to spawn, correct? Correct, yeah. Um, yeah, so there is a little bit of manipulation. Um, it's not fully understood, but essentially, if you're already stocked up on healing items, the game is less likely to give you healing items in boxes. Um, so the boxes are randomized. There are set pickups for certain items, but uh, for the most part, other than a few set boxes, they're all randomized. So, yeah, he, um, has, he has 17. That's, uh, yeah, that's good RNG. Yeah, he's more than good. Um, so uh, real quick, let's, let's, let's do March 2. So 
Starting off with a flame round, he's going to use two shotgun and then 10 enhanced and dump those in the window. He's going to wait for her to leave the window and wait at the corner to reload. And then uh, he's going to shoot at the ceiling to get her to drop down. Uh, he's going to hit her with another flame round, two more shotgun. You're going to see the juggle between flame round and shotgun here. This fight is, is pretty hectic. Uh, two more shotgun. He's going to run back, pick up these items from the cabinet that opened. Sorry if you hear a cat in the background. Um, <laughs> he's going to uh, hit her with two more shotgun. Uh, and wait for her to jump back into the ceiling. Uh, then he's going to use the shotgun and miss intentionally just to... Oh, oh, actually, he hits that one. Intentionally just to get her out of the ceiling. More flame round, more shotgun. And uh, from here, it's basically just flame round, shotgun, and uh, to the end of the fight. And you might see him pull out some enhanced ammo at the end just to finish her off. Uh, I think he has two more shotgun to go. Yeah, a lot of this is just a lot of baiting... Uh... Yeah, because, yeah, you get her to climb the wall, flame around, shotgun, etc., bait, yep. attack, things like that. So oh. you... Oh, oh. oh, oh, so close. There wow. we go. Wow. Okay, great fight from him. Uh, good recovery. So what you almost saw was Marge will crawl away uh, during the fight once she reaches a certain point. And what we're doing by kind of juggling the flame and the shotgun is we're intentionally stag staggering her to avoid her from running away. It's really difficult. And as soon as she runs away, the fight goes completely out of control. And uh, <laughs> it's it's like minimum like 30, 40 seconds trying to find where she is and then actually do damage to her. So really great fight from Zeke. He got, he got pretty fortunate there. Yeah. That's um. uh, making her way through the old house pretty, pretty quickly here, which is nice. Um, <laughs> the funny thing about... Uh, you know, going through this wall and all these bugs. I know a lot of the time people will see this and they'll just nope right out of the game. They're like, nope, nope, I don't want to play this game anymore. <laughs> you got you got the bugs like falling falling from the ceiling and everything like that. Like definitely uh, one of the worst parts of the game if you're playing it in VR or if you just oh, yeah. have a fear of bugs and things like that. It's uh, well, and oh. Uh, uh, <laughs> That's the part in VR, you tickle your friend's arm with a feather as they're walking through <laughs> and, they, and they completely oh lose God. it. <laughs> uh, and I think one of the fun facts that folks like to, I think this was mentioned in Carsey's uh, GDQ uh, run in 2018. It's like, oh, these centipedes are native to Japan, but here they are in Louisiana <laughs> or something right. like that. <laughs> right, yeah, those those centipedes are not native to Louisiana, so they're, they're an invasive species. Um, <laughs> So uh, Zeke heading through the uh, child section, one of the creepiest parts of the game by far. Uh, Definitely. Very dark. You are once again in an unfamiliar small location, nowhere to run. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is a uh, one of the one of the uh, more interesting sections because uh, on his way back, there's going to be a bunch of molded that spawn, and it is pretty important that he avoids those molded. Um, unless I'm mistaken, they don't save after Marge 2, do they? They don't. Which yeah. ones? Uh, <laughs> yeah, so so uh, there's there's a couple molded in this section that can cheap shot pretty bad. And yes. uh, we'll see how Zeke handles this section. Um, it's mainly just... the, yeah, it's mainly like the big arm one literally on your way out that could, yeah. it, that could do that. Yeah. Um, so just dropping his FPS to get past there. Cat. Uh, struggling with the crank because Marge just keeps sending those flies at her. Uh, that's always fun. Um, cat doing a good job through Old House for sure. Absolutely. So this molded that he's about to uh, run past. Ooh, okay. All right, he's all right. Um, yeah, yeah, so that molded can double hit, and it's it's instant. It's frame one, you're dead. Uh, there's no yeah. time to heal. There's no time to recover. You don't stagger, nothing. Uh, it's just instant. So... Um, Pretty good there that he didn't get totally owned. Um, and now Cat heading into Marge 1. Again, uh, it's the one and done super quick fight. Very satisfying just because... Uh, oh, and she has she has 14 shotgun shells as well, so that's cool. Yeah, great ammo RNG. So um, a big pain point, which fortunately we didn't have to talk about too much um, in this run, is we are dependent on ammo RNG. Uh, for the most part, everything in the game is relatively consistent. I say and static, yeah, yeah, tentatively, but um, the ammo is is the one big gamba of the uh, run, and we both runners uh, made it past the gamba just fine. So that's yeah. that's really nice to see because that could have been a uh, a very painful <laughs> sticking point for sure. Um, so cat dealing with Marge one, uh, Zeke heading back into the old house. He has to go get the uh, uh, snake key and subsequently the blue key card so that he can get into the Lucas section. 
Um, sort of just the main house cleanup before we're completely out of the main house section for good. And um, yeah, kind of cruising along. Oh, and yeah, the snake key here is where you get the 13 second time save. The Jack, the Jack 2 one, definitely not that much. Uh, yeah, the, <laughs> the snake key one is that that's where you get your double digit time save. Jack 2, it's uh, it's a little bit shorter. I think it was like five seconds. Mm -hmm. Going to three right. uh, for that for that crawler right there. Yeah, the crawler skip, another satisfying one to do because even on easy, that, that guy can one shot you. Um, but yeah, you just do the 30 FPS swap and you, he just phases right through you and it's really cool. And yeah, that's... That key, oh. yeah. <laughs> yeah, the snake key is just there on the gurney. You don't have to stick your hand uh, down a neck or anything like that. So that's uh, that's always a very, uh, very fun time save. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's always funny. Uh, the, the first time somebody sees Sarah D and they see the snake key right there and they're like, oh, what? Like, I don't have to do the grotesque sticking hand down neck animation. Um... But yeah, so Zeke has pretty much everything he needs. He's just going to come upstairs to two of these rooms. Uh, he's going to grab another backpack in uh, one of the rooms and then head on his way to the attic to grab the blue key card. Um, just uh, minding the molded here a little bit. Uh, they'll despawn as soon as he enters the room. So it's mo it, he doesn't have to kill them or anything. He just has to make sure he gets in the room before they get any uh, cheap shots off. Um, so there he's grabbing a uh, another lockpick, right? Yes. And yes. then um, here we're doing the clock puzzle because since we did the out of bounds and got that red key card early, we still have to do this puzzle because usually this, at this part in the game is where you're supposed to get the red key card. And uh, since we got it early, uh, if we don't do that puzzle, uh, the game will soft lock when you try to go to Lucas's TV section. Uh, so that's never fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Something I, <laughs> something I always forget to mention. Uh, just because when you speed run this game for so long, you forget about it. But yeah, you're supposed to get the red key card by going down that uh, little crawl space, and then that's that's the normal sequence we would get it. But since we already have it, uh, we just have to prevent the soft lock. Um, Cat heading into March two. Good luck, Cat. Good luck. So again, flame rounds, shotgun, just keeping the upkeep on those flame rounds because uh, the fire actually does do damage over time. So it's kind of important that Marge is on fire pretty much the whole fight. Um, <laughs> This grabbing. girl is on fire. <laughs> I was thinking more <laughs> dots, more dots. <laughs> ah. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, Zeke grabbed the uh, blue key card. He solved that puzzle. And uh, now he's on his way to the Lucas section. Uh, a couple moldeds out here in the yard. I'm pretty sure he's going to shoot them just because they are really awful to deal with otherwise. Um, Kat doing a great job in this Marge fight. Uh, you may notice they, they do a couple things in this fight a little bit out of sequence. I know... Uh, Zeke picks up something, uh, some of the ammo in that little cupboard later. Um, Cat picks it up earlier. It doesn't really matter uh, because there is some downtime in this fight where you're just kind of waiting for Marge to do her next move and just kind of keeping her stuck in this animation. Uh, mm -hmm. Zeke heading into the Lucas cutscene. Um, this is the first actual checkpoint in the game since uh, the dinner cutscene. So, yep. kudos so to good. Zeke for making it. <laughs> yeah. All right, Kat here on the last bit of that Marge fight. It's still going really well. Perfect. And uh, she went down. That was a really good boss fight. That was amazing. Yeah. That was great. Yeah. So um, similar to Zeke, actually, she she got Marge down just a, a little bit faster. Um, it, so right at the end there, she she really wants to crawl away. And you kind of have to, like, body block her and just sort of, you know, talk to her firmly and say, no, stay in the room. <laughs> Um, you have to stay here, ma'am. <laughs> so grabbing the lantern, and then uh, she'll head through the kids' room. Uh, very, very clean fight from Kat. She's doing great. Yeah, yeah, that was that was textbook. Good job, Kat. Get some claps in the chat for Kat. Yes, please. Um, so yeah, Zeke watching the uh, Lucas cutscene on the TV. There oh, I can't watch that. I can't watch it. Uh, I can't yeah, watch that. look away I if you're squeamish, by the way. Uh, slight, slight warning. Um, yeah, there was a theory about a way to skip this, but we're pretty sure at this point uh, that it is hardware dependent. So there was, there's like a fabled video. It's like, it's like the ancient scrolls of RE7, um, <laughs> where somebody sits down at the TV and instead of the cutscene playing, the TV just explodes, and uh, that saves three minutes. So <laughs> if somebody ever found a reliable way to do that on either console or PC, that wasn't, you know 
you have to scratch your disc or something like that to make it work. Um, yeah, let us know because that would be a really nice one to have uh, in the run. Yeah. Um, it's only ever happened on console like twice. I think they were yeah. both on PS4, I, I mm -hmm. believe. Um, yep. But yeah, and that I, I believe it happened not too long after the game came out as well. So no one's ever experienced it since. Um, if you happen to play the cutscene skip mod of this game, it will then explode as soon as you sit down. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, if you want to experience the uh, the the Lucas TV skip, there is a cutscene uh, skip mod for the game that lets you essentially play the game. It skips all the cutscenes that it can skip, um, and uh, it saves about. Uh, I was just looking at this and I forgot. I think it saves about twenty minutes, eighteen minutes, something like that. Um, but yeah, if you're if you're sick of watching the cutscenes, you can run some cutscenes skip. Um, see, cutting through the boom boom room, just uh, making those bombs go boom and uh, <laughs> <laughs> avoiding them. Uh, Lucas has, has set this whole place up with tricky traps, and uh, we're basically just gonna ignore them, come through, uh, blow up the mines, and uh, yeah, carry on. Yep. The section's pretty similar to how it is in Easy as well, just because, I mean, the bombs, yes, will do more damage uh, if you happen to hit them. You can thankfully block them, too. You can block them if Ethan is facing the direction of uh, the actual, uh, if you want to say, the bomb, because, like, they're all tripwires and stuff, right? So if you if you hold up block, if you hit block as soon as you're walking through and looking at that bomb, then you won't take any damage. Yeah. Or if you do, um, it's very minimal. <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of amazing. Uh, I think the so there's a percentage of damage mitigation that uh, blocking does, and I think across all the difficulties, it's like sixty percent. So um, it's it's quite a lot of damage. So Ethan mm -hmm. being the absolute chat he is just looks looks a bomb dead dead in the timer and <laughs> blocks with his beefy man arms. Uh, what a <laughs> boss. Um, so uh, Zeke. Heading into the uh, what is going to be the uh, du double fat molded fight, um, just a few more traps to watch out for here, and a couple of really fast four legged moldeds that pop around the corner. Um, he's just picking up a few things here. Again, just all the important materials that we can grab along the way in this category, we're going to be grabbing them. Um, so anything that can be used to craft explosives or heals or uh, anything that we need, uh, we will grab. Mm hmm. So up here in the barn, we're coming upon the uh, barn fight, which if you play this on easy, normal, you know, Lucas throws you in here, th play, some, play some rock music uh, from like the 2000s or something. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he, he uh, brings down a big molded, big boy molded down in the elevator. But in Madhouse, he gives you two. <laughs> so uh, do you want to explain a little bit uh, how we kill these guys, Noodle? Uh Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, so... Uh, like Mar said, instead of one dude, we get two uh, big moldeds to deal with. And uh, while we're waiting for the elevator, Zeke's just gonna do a little bit more cleanup. The the trick is to get the battery in as soon as possible and then sort of kill time while the elevator's coming down. Uh, he's gonna go for a neuro round at their feet to stun them. The uh, neuro round is kind of a freeze shot. Uh, got a little vomited upon there, it's not a big deal. And then he's gonna go for uh, four shotgun shots to the head for each of them and then enhanced to the head just to finish them off, and just like that, they're done. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, uh, now we have to wait a little bit for the button because Lucas did not expect us to fight those dudes quite so fast. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. It, that one can also get really messy really quick. Oh well, our speedrunners are super talented here, so they they're able to just eliminate them immediately there in the elevator. But when, man, when I played this casually for the first time, it, guys, it took me 11 hours. <laughs> not not in this not in this part, obviously, but just the oh. whole thing took me 11 hours. Uh, but this one, this part in general, like I was struggling so much because once both of them kind of run out, they're vomiting everywhere. They they try to tackle you. It, it's so it's super it's always super impressive to see it here in a speed run. <laughs> yeah. Um. Definitely, definitely a hectic part as soon as they vomit on you because you get stuck in that like stun lock stagger animation and then it's kind of all over from there. And uh, we we don't uh, we we have a save uh, very shortly before this fight specifically because it can get a little bit out of control. Um, so you just saw Zeke put all of his items away and he's going to enter the code here. So uh, we're kind of entering the like Lucas jigsaw puzzle. He fancies himself a jigsaw, but he's not. Yeah, I don't know if he's quite there. Um, and uh, essentially, it's kind of an escape room, uh, very similar to sort of the Beneviento house in Village, where basically we have to kind of just come around and um, utilize all these objects. 
Zeke is looking at the water stain, which is the hag from Village, by the way. Uh, they <laughs> foreshadowed that, and uh, I noticed it. I just want to say. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's the water so stain cool. is the hag that is ultimately uh, uh, Miranda. <laughs> okay, for I, I could have sworn when I first played this game, everyone said it was Sadler from RE4. Did you ever hear that? <laughs> it, kind, it does kind of also look like Sadler, that's, yeah. Th that's the what Sadler I was told. Does, does sort of <laughs> resemble a grandma. Yeah, I can agree. I was I was lied to. <laughs> Whoever told me that, my chat lied to me, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, Zeke, uh, he's going to be going through this escape room really quick. Uh, he has to put in this code here. It's loser. Uh, the game makes you sort of cycle through all these things. So usually I have a bit where I go loppy and then loppy and then losey. And then, <laughs> oh, it's loser, right? Well, um, it's it's five spaces up uh, or down, either way. Yeah, you just... <laughs> yeah, very straightforward puzzle once you know the solution. Every yeah. single one just goes up five or down, uh, up or down five spots. Um, I always I always counted like in a sing song. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> oh, all right, cat, make me a little nervous. Oh goodness! Oh oh yes. All yes. right, okay. she's in. Oh, oh god, those crawlers! Like we said, crawlers Everybody so breathe. ruthless. Yeah, yeah, those those four legged can be really annoying. They move so fast that they're really hard to hit. So like yeah. once they're in a jump animation, it's it, it, it's kind of already over. Um, yeah, really dude. glad Cat got past that. <laughs> that was that was yeah. scary. My heart, everyone's heart. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, uh, we can all breathe. Um, yeah, she so. could she could breathe for a good minute. Like this is that's one reason that's so great here with the Lucas TV scene. It's like oh my god, I can take a breath. I can go get a snack. I mainly, you can take a breath. <laughs> I just yeah. take deep breaths. <laughs> I, I mean, I understand people not liking cutscenes and speedruns, but uh, in terms of like longevity and not getting burnt out for from a perspective of like PB attempts, having these cutscenes is kind of great because uh, you can oh, yeah. stretch, you can go to the bathroom, you can file your taxes, you can take your dog for a walk. Like, really, um, <laughs> you file no your limit. taxes. You file your taxes in like a minute. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Herbal tax. <laughs> not not a, hashtag not a sponsor. Um, <laughs> so uh, Zeke pulling all his stuff out of the uh, item box. I didn't mention it before. But uh, Zeke put his items into the item box in a very specific order so that the uh, crank would be there in that spot uh, as intended. It's not as big of a deal in Madhouse just because their inventories become so messy uh, with all the stuff. But all that's important is that the weapons are at the bottom so that as soon as uh, he scrolls to the bottom of the item box and he go goes to pull them out, uh, it'll just pull them out in the same sequence that he put them back in. So uh, just a little foresight required that you uh, keep in mind throughout the run. And that's what that's what really makes the menuing like one of my favorite mechanics in this game because it's a lot of thinking. And you know, menuing is always important in any Resident Evil game or just any speed run, things like that, because it you know helps you uh, think ahead uh, of your next move and stuff like that. But yeah, that's one thing. Like yeah, you have to put your items away in the item box in a certain order, and you have to make sure it lines up a certain way. So all you have to do is just think about how many inputs you have to do, like for this crank and things like that. So I do think uh, this one, the, the menuing in this game, is definitely among the best. If not yeah. the best. <laughs> yeah, I, I I would I would go as far as to say it's the best, but yeah, I, I do I, play I, a lot yeah, of ours. <laughs> yeah, no, I I definitely think it's the best. Uh, just because you know all the other games I've ran, it's uh that I've ran recently, it's just like oh yeah, everything's paused and you know everything moves slow. <laughs> and yeah. The cursor resets to the top left corner. Oh yeah, because in this game the menuing the cursor stays exactly where you put it. That's right. another reason this menu is so perfect. Yeah. Every other yeah. Resident Evil game that cursor gets reset to the top left corner. Yeah. I think with RE4 remake it stays where it's at, but then again that's a whole different beast. So you'll see here later. <laughs> oh, we're about to do Jack Three though. Yeah. Good old Jack 3. Um, yeah, so we're going to untie Zoe here, and uh, we have both ingredients, uh, the D-Series arm and the D-Series head, which, of course, she had those lying around, and she's going to stick those in a Vitamix blender and blend us up a nice, tasty serum to uh, <laughs> cure, uh, cure the uh, necrotoxin. Um, so do, do you want to cover Jack 3? It's a, it, is, it is a fast one. <laughs> Yeah, what's interesting, so this one, you're mainly utilizing your flame rounds and shotgun. Uh, what's interesting, though, uh, so as soon as Jack spawns, we're going to have to uh, pop his first eyeball right there in the face. 
So the thing about Jack as well uh, is that he's covered in eyeballs and his, each of those eyeballs have eye frames. Uh, we make that joke every single time someone's someone's running this game. But yeah, your main your main sources here will be that shotgun uh, shooting it into each of his eyeballs there. But yeah, the very first one here right there, uh, right there in his face. Um, interesting enough too, because uh, usually we want to keep him downstairs, but here, uh, just because he moves fast as well, we're going to be uh, keeping him upstairs as well. So that's... Uh, Oh, and yes, he hits really hard too. <laughs> Can't mm. forget that. Yeah, yeah go yeah. in. Deacon's going to just yeah. Yeah, immediately retry after that hit. Um, yeah, so the way that Jack 3 uh, sort of goes upstairs and downstairs, it's very sort of scripted how we want him to, uh, to reposition. So um, in between the sort of fire round shotgun enhanced juggle that you're going to see um, is going to be uh, Zeke repositioning himself so that uh, Jack does climb back up when he wants him to and then eventually yeah. goes back down when he wants him to. So you got yeah. it. Yeah, in, uh, in New Game Easy, uh, we usually just, we fall down with him and then one cycle him down there. But in that house, definitely way more involved. He has way more HP. Uh, also, just super more, more aggro, of course, as well. So, um, no, Zeke's doing a great job so far with this fight. Yep. And, uh, Just repositioning yeah. here to bait the puke. <laughs> I forgot he does that. <laughs> oh. oh, it's going it's going a little sideways here for Zeke. Let's see. Alright, just the, Oh god, yeah, sometimes those eyeballs uh there we go. not there. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so so at this point he wants Zeke. Uh, I mean he wants Jack, sorry, <laughs> to uh to be <laughs> on the ground. <laughs> Um, and he's just going to be uh, hitting him with a neuro round in the tail here. The neuro round, as you can see, uh, slows him down quite a lot. So uh, in some cases, that's bad because it makes his animations take a bit longer. But uh, for the purpose of being able to do as much damage as we want to do, we actually need him to be moving a little slower. So you see yeah. him doing the Elden Ring wind up for a swing here. Uh, and then he, <laughs> he should be done. Get one more eye. I believe so, yeah right there underneath. Oh, he missed the under eye, didn't he? Yeah, and... Oh, no, yeah, so, he missed that one. Ah. <laughs> yeah, a lot of... Well, usually with this fight, uh, you'll want to want to bust those eyeballs in a very specific order and stuff, so... Um, and yeah, just because how, how uh, crazy this fight can get sometimes... Uh, you have to, sometimes you kind of have to like alternate on the fly. <laughs> yeah, there, there is a lot of on the fly decision making here. Um, and for the last part, he's just going to neuro him to slow this animation down and then two shotgun and the rest with enhanced handgun ammo just to finish there him off. There he goes. Nice. Perfect. Um, couple, couple hiccups on Jack 3. Um, Cat definitely pulled back a little bit of time there between the retry and um, the under eye uh, being a little bit weird. But uh, yeah, Zeke heading into sort of the back half of the game. Um, we are officially uh, going to make another checkpoint once we get to the Mia section. So it's kind yeah. of a relief once you're done with Jack 3, uh, just from a madhouse. You know, if you're on a PB, uh, you're not really going to be making those safety saves at all. So uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a relief to be past Jack 3 for sure. And Kat uh, here at the uh, escape room puzzle, which uh, something we didn't mention earlier before, I, I didn't mention earlier before, uh, but I do think this is like one of the best parts of the game. Uh, not only because, uh, you know, the pacing up until here has been pretty, uh, pretty intense. This one, you know, kind of uh, slows it down a bit. But I mean, I think I think a great I think, you know, just a nice, well thought out puzzle, especially escape room themed, I think is always just fantastic to see in games like this. Yeah. And it's uh, it's a really cool puzzle the first time. Because uh, there is a, uh, if you've never played this game casually, I won't spoil it, but there is a wrong way to do the puzzle. And the game kind of pushes you into doing it the wrong way. Um, and real quick, you'll just see Zeke uh, curing Mia here. The reason being it's canon and it's faster. Um, but yeah, this this uh, this puzzle section, just, just really, really good. Uh, and the, the first time you get debated in this puzzle section, you'll you'll be kicking yourself because it's, yeah. it's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's such it's a, such a great section. And Nidal brought up uh, Benny Vanto House earlier from Village. I th also think that's like the best part of that game because once you, um, you know, because games like this, it's just always, uh, you know, you're shooting things and it's a lot of jump scares, things of that nature. Um, I mean, there's there's a little bit of that here too in these types of things. But 
No, I think just the way uh, they're designed in these games, I think, are really fantastic. Yeah, I, I I like sections where you're you're so comforted by the arsenal that Ethan's. You know, you got a RPG, you got a shotgun, you got a pistol with 800 bullets, and then all of a sudden they strip you of all your <laughs> all of your <laughs> weapons, and they're like, okay, there's no enemies here. The the enemy is your brain. Um, <laughs> it's like you have to get out now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, Zeke just heading to the uh, boat section again. One of the uh, one of the better bathroom breaks in the run, because uh, you, you have a good oh, two and a half minutes of uh, sitting on the boat here. Yeah. Um, also, um, for those wondering as well, you know, because you know, since we have the choice between saving Mia or Zoe, I've actually timed this. Uh, so, well, well, I'm also not gonna spoil what happens here if you save Zoe, but I'll just say. Um, the only reason we don't have it as a separate category is that it only, it's it's a three minute difference, literally because of a cutscene and then like a really quick boss fight, and that's it. And it's not worth to make a save Zoe percent or anything like that. Yeah, uh, it's yeah, about, that is. Well, oh, actually, I think it's like it's between one and three minutes. I know that's kind of a big gap, but it's literally like single digit low minutes, and that's not worth another category. I'm sorry, yeah. folks. <laughs> Yeah, it, it does come up a lot, and it's like if if it led to a different, you know, boat section or something like that, maybe. But ultimately, even if you choose Zoe, you, you kind of end up in the same situation. It's so. Yeah, um, it, other than that one cutscene, it's like yeah, it would be a little bit of voice to make a whole leaderboard where you know the record holder easily gets both records. <laughs> Now, honestly, that's not to say y'all don't need SRC, leaderboard, none of that stuff to speedrun something the way you want. If you'd yes. like to do a Zoe speedrun, uh, let yes. us know. Let us know what that time is. I mean, I'd be curious. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, I always say, don't don't let a leaderboard stop you. If it's fun, yeah. do the run. I mean, shoot, in the past, because, uh, well, there's a Magnum in this game. Every Resident Evil game has a Magnum, right? So I always tossed around, oh, we should make like a Magnum route or something like that. But no, Magnum's not great in this game. There's barely any ammo for it. When you hip fire with it, uh, it doesn't yeah. it doesn't hit anything. It's just not a good gun in this game. 13 uh, bullets in the whole run for the Magnum. So they really yeah. just didn't want you to rely on it at all. Yeah, but I was like, oh, what if we did like a New Game Plus Magnum route? Ha ha, and all that stuff. And I was like, I know that sounds silly in my head, but honestly, guys, if, if, there's, a, if there's anything you want to do, Feel free to do it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. All right. All right, yay, Jack three for Cat. Let's. Uh, this is gonna go. I mean, I think I think she's gonna do great. Yeah, she's already been doing this. great, honestly. So definitely. Um. So you just saw Ethan. Uh. As as you may have noticed, we are now playing as Mia on Zeke's screen. Um. So uh, this section, not everybody's favorite section. Uh. There, admittedly, it's 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 a decent bit of hold W. Um, and it gets, <laughs> it gets a sim. little, yeah, it gets a little bit more interesting in the tape because there's a lot going on. But uh, yeah, for a while now, you're just gonna see uh, Zeke making his way through the ship as Mia, and Mia's sort of uh, experiencing uh, flashes of the past to find out why she ended up here and uh, why why all this is going on. Uh, good luck to you, Cat, on this Jack Three fight. Oh, she's gonna do great. I feel it in my bones. Yeah, let's so get some, let's get some hype in the chat for Cat. <laughs> let's yeah, let's get some get, cheers, please. Get some cheers, get some claps, all of that. If you're sub to Cat, give her the pops. We like we like the pops. Link pop. Yeah, so just making uh, Jack fall down here. So far, this is this is textbook Jack three. This is uh, pretty good. Uh, gonna run around here, grab some ammo from some boxes. Yep, force Jack to puke. So actually currently uh yep currently getting the outcome she wants from jack three uh where zeke had a little bit of trouble there just has to pop one more eye to make him come down pop 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 <laughs> seeing all those pops in chat see it's 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 topical it's it's appropriate yeah so uh what we said about iframes uh just to explain that a little bit more uh, the way iframes work in a lot of RE engine games, both Village and this, is uh, you you can do damage to uh, body parts and bosses, uh, but their uh, health pool, so for, for the eyes, for example, the health pool will reach a certain point where it won't go any lower. It'll just be locked at one. So uh, it's sort of an intended survival horror mechanic to force you to waste more ammo, I think. 
Uh, and it does it, casually, it does work pretty well at that. But um, in a speed run, we sort of learn exactly when we're supposed to be doing shots so that we're not wasting any ammo. Um, and essentially, we're only hitting Jack during his neutral frames and not during any animations that would otherwise negate the uh, damage done. So, Cat tearing through those eyeballs. She has one more to go here. <laughs> Jack with the slowest swing on the planet. That was a heck of a windup. Uh, <laughs> really funny to watch. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think she has the Undertale eye left. Yeah, yeah, that's yep. the one. Um, there we go. Two there more shots. There we go. Boom. Nice. Nice. I, I, I think that was actually a slightly better Jack 3 than uh, Zeke's. I think she might have pulled back a bit there. I mean, between the retry and um, and him not climbing down correctly, actually, that was that was definitely faster by a good 15, 20 seconds. Yeah, that was, that was super smooth. Yeah. Again, then the Neuro here. Pop that neuro, pop the pop the shoddy, and your G seventeen, and oh. there we go. <laughs> there we go. There we go. <laughs> One left to go. Great job from Cat there. Nice, wonderful. More claps. More claps. <laughs> so Zeke grabbed a fuse. Um, he's going to be coming back to grab that out of that spot later. He's heading into the uh, videotape section. Uh, Mar, if you want to explain what exactly is going on. Sure. So um, throughout the game, we didn't see this here in this run. Uh, if you run 100%, you will. But uh, here in uh, any any percent category, there are videotapes throughout the course of the game, uh, which give a lot of uh, backstory. There's a lot of lore uh, that fills you in. And you could skip all of them. If you're speedrunning this game, you don't have to watch a single one. But when you get on the ship, Evie forces you to watch this one, and it's a Mia flashback. So um, this is, it's basically its own little section. You're playing a game inside the videotape. It's not you watching it. It's you actually, you know, playing a, playing a mini game, but the worst mini game possible. <laughs> so, um, you know, this is, a, this is a flashback when Mia, because uh, Mia working for this uh, secret company, the, she's working for the connections, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Well, it, yeah. It's, it's like a, a Black Ops... <laughs> Terrorism yeah. agency, yeah. So Basically. presumably the connections, yeah. Yeah, and they're tra so, transporting uh, Evie. Yeah. Evie, who's a bioweapon. So um, this is a flashback on uh, when this whole infection was starting. So uh, we basically just have to get through this whole section to uh, get the rest of the lore, essentially. <laughs> so, yeah. um, so uh, pretty pretty cool part of the game, though. Uh, cool, but also. Uh, can be pretty intense. Uh, there's going to be a couple skips that we can utilize here. Uh, enemy is also pretty aggro. Um, we also don't have any items on us except, well, I was going to say, we do have our little machine gun and stuff like that. After this, we'll have like nothing basically, but yeah. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is a pretty bare bones section. Um, I don't think they do any saves here, which is a little spooky. There might be one spot where they're going to do a save for marathon luck. Um, what you just saw Zeke do there is called Allen One Skip or Vomit Skip or Double Doors Skip or uh, what? What else is it called? There's like eight different nah, names for that skip. Now. I, th I think I think you got them all. I think you covered them all. <laughs> uh, yeah, essentially, what he's gonna do is he's gonna avoid a mandatory 16 second phone call from Allen, who is the dude that was in this room. He's kind of just chilling here, suffering. Um, we don't really like Allen. In fact. The game doesn't really like Alan because he's credited incorrectly uh, in the credits. Um, in the documents, his name is Alan Douglas, but in the credits, his name is Alan Droney. So, so silly. He just <laughs> drones on and on. It's yeah, well, yeah, it's a fitting, <laughs> fitting last name. So, uh, yeah, we're going to be skipping as much dialogue from Alan as we can because uh, he, yeah, he's just kind of no fun. He's a party pooper. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, but yeah, this uh, this oh, there is a that, that Molda did not like Zeke there for a second. That's not that's not nice. Yeah, so Zeke's definitely going to be crafting a heal in this section. Um, this this can be one of the more punishing sections of the run. Uh, there's going to be uh, quite a lot of molded in a very small space, and um, there's a couple spots here where he can very easily just take a cheap shot, and uh, things can go south. Uh, he's 30 FPSing past these guys just to make it a little bit easier. And uh, essentially, what he's trying to do right now is he needs to get a uh, fluid that he can use to open the door to progress back upstairs. And uh, it's it's just kind of a uh, a big like backtracking mission, sort of, where they're showing you an area that you're going to be going into later. So uh, they're kind of giving you an insight on where you need to go. 
and you'll do that once you're out of the videotape because this is a flashback. Yeah. So. And yeah, like Noodle said, you'll be revisiting these parts again. You won't exactly be doing the same exact stuff, but then it'll tell you, oh, I have to do this because this happened. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, setting up the backstory for what you play through later. Um, you just saw Zeke do a little turnaround there. That is purely uh, a, a small optimization because all we're trying to do is spawn Eevee at the door, and then we're actually good to uh, turn around and go back through the door. Um, you'll see Cat getting the ship now. They're they're really for Madhouse. They're really not that far apart. Um, nah. Yeah, Cat has definitely clawed back some of the time in some of these boss fights and uh, not having to retry on Jack Three. Um, there is yeah, a skip no. here that they won't be doing because it's a uh, death sentence on on this difficulty. Sorry, yeah, I was um, gonna, yeah, I was gonna say cat cat's boss fights have been so clean and so textbook this entire time. So that's that's been super amazing to see. Yeah, definitely. Um, so Zeke heading through kind of the hectic section now. Um, there, there's a lot going on here. So there's going to be two molded dropping from the ceiling uh, and another dude walking down the hallway. Uh, he's going to use this bomb. Fortunately, Ethan does not really take damage from bombs placed like really close to him. So uh, should have been able to blow up, I think, both of those dudes. Otherwise, it's, one of them... It's Mia. It's Mia. Oh yeah, sorry, <laughs> Mia. Uh, <laughs> my bad. Uh, it's okay. Yeah, so so uh, so these guys are gonna crawl around. Uh, they, oh my they god! Are, look at them. <laughs> yeah, they are a bit of a problem because they have this leaping attack that can really hurt. Um, nice, just getting out yeah. of there. I don't. Usually, like when you play on other difficulties, you're you're used to just seeing one guy poke around the corner, you see his little head, but these guys, oh goodness, you got all three of them coming at you. <laughs> yeah. And it's funny because you think they're dead from the from the remote bomb, and then they're nope. they're still they're still kicking, still yeah. Hanging out. <laughs> so um, a small optimization you're gonna see uh, that we haven't really touched on uh, that you just saw Cat do uh, is called quick drops, where essentially anywhere you're falling in the game, uh, you can kind of speed up the animation. Uh, there's there's a couple different ways to do it that we've discovered, but basically anytime. Uh, you're falling in the game, whether as Ethan or as Mia, um, you can uh, sort of look in the uh, direction of where you're going to fall, and occasionally you get a faster falling animation. It saves like half a second every time you do it. Uh, some some of them save a little bit more time than others, but uh, yeah. just kind of a testament to how much optimization this game has seen, where uh, a lot of the things oh, that you'll see these runners doing are things that have been burned into their mind to save, you know, half a second to one second. And, you know, even in a marathon setting where somebody might be ahead of somebody else, it's like you still, you're trained to do those things just out of muscle memory and out of habit. So, um, yeah. yeah. Those are those are pretty uh, pretty interesting uh, pieces of tech to do because uh, the way to execute those you uh, line yourself up right along the line that you're supposed to drop on and then you just angle your camera a little bit into the uh, where you're supposed to drop and yeah they'll just kind of like plop it they'll, they'll just kind of like just kind of slide in there uh, if you don't do that if you just do kind of like a normal dropping into uh, any any sort of hole or anything like that they'll you know fall down on their knees they'll they'll have their hands on the ground they'll have to, it's a it's like like Niddle said it's only like half a second or something like that but those add up over the course of the run to like minutes and stuff so yeah. it's really cool um so on Zeke's screen you can see Evie's hot topic boots and uh or Alan taking a nap he's fine um <laughs> essentially <laughs> at the end of uh the tape section here so uh Zeke will be returning to real-time Mia once again soon. Um, and you'll see Kat just doing uh, the same collecting that Zeke did. It's oh, watching out for this guy. Yep. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that, wow. his claw was like in her face. Goodness. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, for the most part, uh, the, uh, both runners will be doing like the same routes for a lot of this. Uh, the, the, a few of the pickups have been slightly different. Um, you may have noticed over the course. And uh, they, they do pick a few different times to craft things, but it's actually very consistent with uh, the items that you're getting and uh, where they're picking up these items. So, you know, uh, from run to run, you know, watching Zeke or, or Kat, uh, you'll, you'll just see their inventory ends up set up the exact same way, which is really impressive. 
Um, so Zeke ending the uh, tape section, heading back and into the present time. Another VR influence in here, a, a VR jump scare where Evie gets right in your face. Yeah, <laughs> definitely designed for VR. Absolutely. Zeke it's looking like, away. He's too scared. Confirmed. <laughs> no judgment. <laughs> So yeah, uh, pretty much heading through the same areas that we did before. The only difference now is that the elevator's busted and we need to get two key items to repair the elevator. Um, we've been told that Ethan, or uh, there is a cutscene that we won't be watching where we discover that Ethan is trapped in the basement. He's kind of like uh, in sort of a mold kebab. Um, and kebab? <laughs> Yeah. Oh my I god. Mean, <laughs> like where you slice off the, the yeah, meat. Yeah, like, oh like my shawarma, god, I never yeah. thought I never thought of that. That's perfect. <laughs> yeah, he's like, yeah, he's delicious little mold kebab. Um so <laughs> we we're essentially uh setting up to save him. Uh it's kind of a cool twist because the first half of the game, Ethan's going to save Mia. Now we're playing as Mia going to save Ethan, who subsequently will save Mia. So it's it's a really roundabout way. Um you see Kat lining up for the vomit skip. It's a very specific trick with very specific timing. She got it. She's just nice. that good. Yeah, it's definitely uh, something we didn't talk about, uh, which that's a perfect uh, spot to talk about, our max distance interactions. So mm. with every item in this game and pretty much every interaction, you don't have to be right up on it. You don't have to be super close to it or anything to pick it up or interact with it. You can stand a uh, you can stand like a maximum distance away, essentially. Uh, you know, it looks like it's a couple of feet or anything like that. But as long as you see, uh, you know, your uh, input, you know, in our case here, it's F, um, you can interact with something there. So with the Allen one skip, you have to be standing at max distance and make sure those doors are open, or else you will not get the skip. So if you're if you're close to it, if you're super close to it, yeah, you're you're definitely not going to get it. So yeah, it's uh, it's and also when you're running at this level, you have to execute it fast. So getting that set up and you know hitting that skip is always really impressive. Yeah, it's um, it's kind of. <laughs> Uh, so one thing that you won't really be able to see, but um, both runners have it, is uh, double bound inputs for interacting. Um, so like getting up to a pickup, uh, for example, I use F and uh, Q as my interact. I think Zeke uses ah. F, F and E um, for his interacts. But uh, as as we're getting up to these uh, interaction points, we'll we'll spam the interact keys to get the interaction on the soonest possible frame. Uh, ideally, you know, it's so fast that you don't even see the interact dialogue pop up. But, yeah. yeah. And um, it's one place it's really present is uh, in the item box. When you're putting items away or taking them out, uh, you're just constantly spamming your double inputs there. Yeah, um, yeah I, I use uh, F and side mouse button. <laughs> ah, a mouse. Yeah. Button. Yeah. Um, so Zeke's picking up the power cable, um, just dodging some of this fat molded vomit. Uh, he kind of, as long as you take the same line every time, he kind of just faces the wall and does nothing. Sometimes he'll chase you down this hallway. It's pretty funny when it happens. Not not, if, not if you're Zeke, but... It's scary. <laughs> I don't know about you. Uh, I like seeing it happen. I don't like it happening. No, no. Um, <laughs> he'll do like a belly bump on you, and that's not fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, pretty much done with the Mia section now. All, all Zeke has to do is head downstairs and be reunited with Ethan. Um... Cat heading through the uh, through the tape gauntlet, uh, probably probably the most hair raising part of this section. Yeah. Um, yeah. So no, she's, like, she's gonna this. yeah, she's gonna do great. Yeah. Um, there is a skip on easy that we do to skip that Allen call, um, but it requires you essentially blowing yourself up with a bomb through the door, and on Madhouse that is like really just not a good idea you can do it um you know it's just but, not worth it <laughs> yeah yeah you're you're gonna knock yourself into critical and then if you don't have a heal you have to walk really slow through the rest of the section which is just it's it's guaranteed death so um, yeah it's it's just not worth the risk yeah um yeah so heading through this really narrow hallway this is this is one of the one of the tightest sections on this tape section i think she's good yeah. Yeah. I think very she's in nice. the clear. Wow. Yeah, didn't, didn't even didn't even take the cheap shot. Usually you'll you'll get one cheap shot. It's kind of expected. Um, but uh, Cat actually made it through there pretty clean. That guy's gotta, dancing. Get yeah. get out of here. There we go. <laughs> Watch out for this guy. <laughs> wow. Um, What's he think he's doing? <laughs> yeah. The whole party's here. 
So, uh, Zeke, heading into uh, large bathroom break number three in the run. Yeah. Um, this this is a really good cutscene, casually. It, it sort of explains uh, the, the family and that they're under the influence of Evelyn. And, uh, you know, it's not them. And you, you really kind of get, like, the sweet side of Jack Baker. Because everybody knows him as this terrifying horror icon. But he's actually, he's a family guy. And uh, he's a really, he's a really sort of chill dad before all this went down. And, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, great cutscene. Yeah, the Bakers, um, you know, because this takes place in Louisiana, um, very, they had that, the very typical genuine Southern hospitality. You know, they took in uh, Evie and Mia because they were washed up upon, like, shore here in uh, one of the lakes or swamps or something. They took them in because uh, they were concerned, wanted to make sure they were nursed back to health. And then, unfortunately, Evie took advantage of them and controlled them and all that stuff, turned them into yeah. merciless killers. And that's very sad. But yeah, this is this is such a great uh, cutscene and a great piece of lore where Jack, you know, he, you see he's genuinely remorseful. All he does is care about his family and, you know, wants you to free his family here from Evie, wants you to destroy Evie. So um, very touching scene for sure. Yeah, and um, it, it's sort of worth mentioning. So uh, Jack, Marge, uh, Evie, they're all sort of part of this uh, mega mice hive mind. And so uh, Ethan is kind of tapped into this hive mind. And that's ultimately what ties into uh, Ari Village. That's kind of the story that's ex expanded upon pretty greatly. Um, so yeah, it's kind of like everything gets saved in this hive mind. And so you can connect with people even even after they're gone and stuff like that, which is a really cool concept. Um, and they, they explore it pretty deeply between sort of village and even Shadows of Rose, which is an awesome DLC. Yeah, um, if you're a fan of this game, um, you definitely should play, uh, like RE7 and RE Village definitely made to be played uh, back to back, you know, one after another. Um, yep. You could play Village before playing Seven. Uh, they give you a uh, a video you can watch, like a movie you can watch that catches you up to it because it's very, very important. Like Village will implore you, you need to know what went on in RE7 first to understand what's going on in Village. But <laughs> yeah. You should just play this game first. I mean, it's worth it. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, RE Seven has has so many uh, really awesome moments. The the devs really had a very specific vision in mind when they were making it, just in terms of that like claustrophobia, getting thrown into environments that you're not familiar with, and um, they really took advantage of kind of like the the different types of horror where you have like gore horror, you have psychological horror, you have um, you know kind of. The, the twisted family dynamic where everybody's kind of messed up and uh, that gets further explored in the in the DLCs too which are really good for this game and and very cheap uh, actually <laughs> for the amount of content that oh. they have oh yes I, I will always vouch that the DLC in this in, in this game for re7 definitely the best re7 deal it's definitely the best re DLC out there yeah um, there's just so much, like, you know, if you're into lore, sure, I know some folks aren't, but even if you're not, just uh, those those DLC games that they have are just, uh, they're really fun. Uh, each, each of them plays different and stuff. If you like escape rooms, there's essentially an escape room DLC, which is terrifying, but amazing. Yeah. Um, if you're into, like, just shooting things and whatever, there's, like, a raid mode type thing. Uh, and then there's Blackjack. There's, uh, oh my goodness, there's just, there's just so many. It's, it's Jack's great. Jack's 55th it's, birthday. You gotta feed oh, that's, our hungry boy. <laughs> <laughs> with party hats. You have Jack with the party hat, all the molded yeah. with party hats. Great. It's just, a, it's, it's, it's perfect. The RE7 DLC is perfect. Uh, there's, um, just, you got the, oh, also you get the Not A Hero DLC here for free after yeah. this one. You got, uh, End of Zoe, which, you know, you get to see what happens to Zoe. So yeah, everyone, if you, if you have this game, go get the DLC. If you don't have it, please do. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Zeke kind of heading into the final few sections. Um, he's going to be heading into Salt Mines shortly. There's a backpack he's going to be picking up here, and he's going to be uh, grabbing some items out of his item box, I believe. Um, I, I don't think he YOLOs it through these molded here. Um, nah. <laughs> it's, it's pretty tricky. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so yeah, kind of heading into the final sections of the game. Um, yeah, uh, Zeke has has been has been very both very lucky and very very good this run. This has been a pretty uh, pretty clean run for Madhouse. Um, again, yeah. you you really can't tell it from either of these runners, but this is the hardest difficulty and it, it's the hardest category. Uh, new game is just so demanding in terms of what you need and when, and uh, you're you're always starved for ammo and and heals for the most part. So you're kind of like. <laughs> 
constantly having to adapt and think about where where can I get this back up at, you know? Um, yeah, and uh, especially because, yeah, with Madhouse, it's constantly on the fly, especially because, you know, we always tell folks, um, oh, RE7 is a great beginner-friendly speedrun, there's no RNG, but no, that's not the case with Madhouse. So um, it's, yeah. it's uh, definitely one that keeps you on your toes. And yeah, just new game in general for this game, you know, you're always uh, operating, I would say, like on, on low <laughs> a little bit, uh, just because, yeah, you have to pick up like the minimal required uh, ammo. Ideally, you don't pick up heals, but in this, um, of course, in this category, you definitely should. Um, so yeah, this is the hardest difficulty of the game. Uh, super impressive uh, that, you know, we have Cat and Zeke showing it off today. So we're, we're proud of them. Yeah. Um, did cat crash? Uh, <laughs> her stream, maybe. Uh oh. Uh oh. No, there she goes. Okay, all right. Oof. Saved. Maybe. I think. <laughs> oh, Man. goodness. The <laughs> techish. Tonight with Ari Man, I, honestly, no. I'll just say, blame the game, blame Sarah yeah, D. Yeah, this game, yeah. this this game. Uh, man, even when you have the cutscene skip on uh, Steam, because yeah, folks, if you ever want to play the cutscene mod, you don't have to use Sarah. Well, you can't use Sarah D. It's not made for Sarah D. You have to use the Steam version. Even with yeah. that, uh, it's just a uh, Ari Seven is just a, a, a picky princess, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, it it can be a little rough. Um, yeah, it, it. I mean, it's a it's a give and take, right? Because uh, Capcom has never really patched uh, Zero D, which is, you know, good for runners, but also uh, kind of bad. Uh, yeah, I think I think we might do a little pause here just to make sure. All right, we are back. Uh, we did have some minor technical difficulties with a uh, bit of a crashing, but we are back. Uh, I'll hand it off to one of our commentators here to count down. Um, we have a nice pause position, so uh, whenever you are ready, we can begin. Needle, all you. <laughs> go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Three, two, one, go. All right. Cool. So. Woo! Uh, Zeke, heading into the salt mines. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, RE7 is is genuinely uh, a bit of a problem when it comes to capturing sometimes. It's not usually this bad. I swear, it's just it's just that marathon luck kicking in, you know? Yeah. Hashtag <laughs> marathon luck. Always, yeah. always the best of us. Yeah, but we're powering through. Um, yeah, so Zeke heading into the salt mines. One of the uh, hardest sort of final gauntlets that we have. You're going to see him switching between... Uh, flame rounds, the shotgun, and neuro for the majority of this. So it's going to be a lot of a lot of blasting. So uh, this first guy just shotgun to the head. Uh, it's best that he goes for headshots here because because these guys they'll they'll sort of double over and block him uh, if he doesn't get these headshots. So, yeah. Yeah. Just running through two shots yeah, on you... this guy. Ooh. Oh, he missed. <laughs> well, well, if you're close enough uh, and you're making, you're sure that you're there on their heads, then yeah, you can, you can. That's a one shot, one kill. Yeah. Uh, oh, gonna say usually. Him. Yeah. I was gonna say on New Game Plus, or actually just yeah, New Game Plus or New Game. It's like that's neuro round on that guy, and then for Madhouse, you got this big boy on the stairs. Uh, that's different. Yeah. So um, this guy was a really big problem for a very long time. Um, now we know that you can uh, leg him and then kind of 30 FPS past him. But for a long time, he was a really big problem because there's like three dudes behind you. So if you take too much time uh, getting past that guy, you'll just get obliterated. Um, okay, so you'll see Zeke. He's shooting out some bombs here. Um, Lucas trapped up the uh, ladder, which is just another twist that you get to deal with in Madhouse. Um, in Easy, there are no bombs here. So it's kind of, it's a good debate because the first time you get here, you think you're scot-free, you're ready to skedaddle up the ladder and finish the game, and the bomb instantly kills you in Madhouse because it does so much damage, yeah. and you have to redo the entirety of Salt Mines over again. Yeah, oh my um, goodness, it is not fun. But yeah, uh, great, great work through there. Um, you saw him neuro the fat molded 
That is because the Fat Molded will vomit and hit you off of the ladder if you yep. try to go up the ladder without them. Um, it was discovered that uh, there is a setting called Effects Rendering, which kind of changes this. Uh, big shout out to Maxi Loves. Um, uh. <laughs> and uh, basically, in, in Knife Only for a while, we would just scurry up the ladder without even, like, we would literally just ignore the Fat Mold and get up the ladder. And it, uh, it took a lot of fiddling around before uh, Maxi found out what was going on there. But yeah, um, Kat heading into the amazing Jack cutscene. And Zeke is back in Guest House. We're back at the start of the run, everybody. We get to do it all over again. Yep. <laughs> Sorry, reset the timer. Yeah, uh, yeah, reset. <laughs> He's back in Guest House. All right. Um, but yeah, so uh, <laughs> the game brings it all the way back around. You make it from the salt mines back up into the uh, Baker House. And now we're replaying the events, but we get to see Evie's influence over Mia. So uh, we can kind of see that the entire time that our, our, our wife was freaking out at us, it was actually Evie controlling her uh, with sort of that hive mind power. And um, yeah, kind of heading into the final boss fight here. Um, but yeah, great run from Zeke so far, man. This has been yeah, a pleasure wonderful. to watch. Yeah. Still, you know, cat making up time still, uh, especially, oh, yeah. oh my goodness, with those with those amazing boss fights as well. Those were so speedy, so smooth. Yeah, yeah. Some of those some of those boss fights from cats definitely uh, were, were faster than Zeke. It's just, it's a shame that Madhouse, Madhouse can be a, a fickle um, run. It can, it can give and it can take very, oh, yeah. very, you know, uh, volatile category for sure. So, yeah, um, and oh, go ahead. Uh, yeah, so Zeke uh, blocking some hits from Eevee here. He's just trying to get to her to inject her with the Necrotoxin, which will uh, sort of transition her into her final phase. Um, sorry, what were you going to say? Oh, no, I was going to say... Uh, wow, I can't remember. <laughs> it's not your fault. <laughs> I just have, I just have a potato memory. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. It's too too full of RE7 trivia and speedrun knowledge, right? <laughs> no, you are, you're totally fine. <laughs> um... But yeah, oh, so uh, oh, I remember. I was gonna go. say, um, I was gonna say, cheap shots are on both ends. Uh, like Niddle said, give and take. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so uh, Evie uh, melting into the floor uh, along with her wheelchair. I always thought that was weird. You know, the wheelchair <laughs> part of the you know my seat. It, I don't. <laughs> it might as well be. <laughs> the wheelchair is molded as well. Um, you're going to see Zeke turn around. He's going to grab a few items in the corner of the room here, and then he's just going to unload with the enhanced ammo. Um, the reason why we use the enhanced ammo instead of the shotgun here is just because of those quick shots. So um, uh, the final health pool actually isn't that big. We just need to make sure we get it down before the giant face on the wall eats us. Um, mm -hmm. So, That's, yeah, just uh... kind of dumping the damage and then getting to the next phase. Yeah. And then this part here, uh, surprisingly, another auto-scroller. Uh, you think that you have to sit here and uh, just kind of unload your arsenal there into Eevee, but it does not matter how much damage you do into her. You'll see folks do it just because it's just like, oh, why not, or whatever. Um, just because, I mean, there's might as well just empty everything if you want to. But literally, you just have to lay there and wait for her to hit you. This is all scripted. Does not matter how much damage you do into her. All that matters is when she picks you up. That's it. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it, it's kind of a shame that this boss fight is sort of a set piece, you know? But um, it does kind of seem RE tradition to always, you know, once you've gotten past the hardest parts of it, they give you one last thing where you have to, you know, kind of test your reaction time. Don't mess up or they send you back. Uh, ooh. Uh, yeah, see, I've... I, trying I, to get dropped there. I, I've always hated shotgun spread on that, uh, on, on that for her claw. It's just so... It can be so unforgiving and stuff, but it's okay. Uh, we still have that backup with the and uh, the G17 with the enhanced ammo. That always uh, seems to help clean it up. And yep. then uh, all that's left here is your Albert pistol with some very special ammo in it. We don't get a rocket launcher. I'm sorry, folks, not traditional Resident Evil here, but all it takes is four to five shots, hopefully four, and that'll be it. Yep, and uh, time will be as soon as the screen cuts black. So it's about uh, 10 seconds after the giant face disintegrates. 
Um, there we go, Zeke. Uh, Zeke you can see almost. on his, you can see you can see on his face. It took all of them because usually what you do is just you just pick up the gun and just <laughs> go fire right away. You can see the look of disbelief on his face. It's like, oh my god, I had to use all eight of my rounds. Sometimes that can happen. Uh, her arms start blocking you. Um, it's just. It, it's just unfortunate, but yeah, it's okay. It, it's it's literally happened to all of us, I promise you. So, <laughs> but yeah, time will uh, for Zeke will be when the screen fades to black. And time. Time. Yeah. GGs. Huge GGs. That was, GGs. That was a great run from Zeke. GGs and claps in the chat, folks. Yeah, so uh, worth mentioning, if you run out of ammo there, if she decides to ego some of your Albert shots, uh, you're, you're kind of screwed. You have to go all the way back. In in Zeke's case, he would have to go all the way back to before salt mines. Um, that would have been such a great equalizer. It, it oh my actually goodness. would have been really funny to see. I, I've, yeah. never, I've never <laughs> hoped for somebody to miss their Albert shots, but that actually yeah, no. would have been awesome. That, that would have definitely <laughs> made it even. Oh my goodness. So, wow, yeah. but still, great job. Amazing job to Zeke. <laughs> Zeke, those shots, yo. Uh, 60 FPS was the blame for that one. <laughs> that was amazing. I, I, oh my goodness. I, I saw the look on gonna, your face. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was going to go south there. That would have been such a good equalizer sending you back yeah. to salt mines. That would have been There's so the, there, there is a checkpoint at the EV injection. Oh, is there? Yeah, there is. Darn. Ah, uh, that's, that's right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, because if you die, yeah, that's right. Yeah. No, but I... GG's, man. Uh, great job. That was Thank great. You. Great run. Uh, and uh, right now we still have a cat finishing up on her end. Yeah. Um, Going yeah, through so the salt mines. Yeah. So uh, th these parts, we didn't really touch on it, but these parts can be actually really tricky because uh, you're hoping that the cart there hits as many molded as it can, but uh, you'll still get a bunch of molded crawling in through the door and uh, they, they can do the cheap shot and uh, instantly obliterate you. Oh, yeah, and especially also, that um, one crawler. <laughs> We, uh, we didn't mention the steroids, but uh, there is a steroid pickup here. And what the steroids do in the game is they fully heal Ethan, and they also increase his max health by a little bit. So um, steroids, pretty valuable just in this instance, because we can pick it up on the way, and it's not out of the way. All the other steroids are really out of the way, um, so it's, it's not really worth getting them. But yeah, getting the Necrotoxin. Uh, uh, Catlink's gonna make a save here just before heading into the salt mines. Let's get some hype in chat for Cat. Go, Cat. Go, Cat. All go the cat. everything in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> All those hypes in the chat. Go, Cat. Go, Cat. Yeah. It really can't be understated how difficult this run is. Um, just, you know. Yeah, forget the run. Madhouse in general, really, really yeah. difficult. Um, Madhouse speedrun, exceedingly difficult. Madhouse speedrun in a marathon setting, like mm -hmm. we're we're talking like <laughs> you know extreme levels of of difficulty. Uh, takes mm -hmm. a lot of patience just to sort of practice this route. Um, a lot of people go into Madhouse get very burnt out very quickly because the run is yeah. so punishing. Um, so very you know, demanding mentally as well. You know. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, yeah, you're you're constantly uh, thinking about: Do I have enough ammo? Am I good on heals for the next section? If I take a cheap shot, um, you know, am I am I stocked up for the next boss fight, or do I have to be careful about my ammo? Like, there, there's just a lot going on um, on top of just the basic routing of you know getting through the game, solving the puzzles efficiently, uh, getting optimized movement. You know, there's there's just uh, so much. Um, and that's kind of why it's amazing to see how optimized RE7 is in general. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, Kat, on the last bit of the salt mines here, she uh, made it through that one big molded very nicely. Oh, yeah. she's doing the uh, flame rounds on the tripwires? Yep. Okay. And then she's going to uh, shoot the bottom one, I think. She should have hit the, the uh, both of them with the one. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And then she should be good to scoot up the ladder. Nice. Very nice. Oh! Oh, you meanie. She missed the top one. Oh, you man. You meanie. The, so, Those the explosives. Wives. The explosive rounds, man. Sometimes they just, <laughs> they don't hit where you need them to. Yeah, I know, so. But that's, that's okay. That is totally fine. Again, it's... 
it's punishing a lot of patience. Uh, so much respect for Cat with this run. It is. It's been so great to see, and it's it's all good. Like that. Like I said, this happens to the best of us. Yeah, absolutely. Like uh, this run, even um, even being like well practiced and well versed. There's so many things that you can't even properly account for. Um, oh, and they both and, go down too. Oh, that's such a that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, and, and the, the thing is, like you know, you'll you'll prepare for the worst in this run, and you'll think you have everything down, you have everything accounted for, and then something like this happens where you're like, I've always hit the explosives with the explosive round. That's never happened before. Like why right. now? Um, right. Or you know, a molded cheap shot in a hallway that you've never gotten hit before. So yeah, Shoot, just a, if... oh, go ahead. Ju just a very tough category. Yeah, I mean, shoot, even on easy, like for easy, you just shoot a neuro round at those guys' feet. Sometimes you miss that neuro round shot and then you get puked on when you're going up the ladder and it's like, oh my goodness. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Such, such, such an amazing run from both runners here. Um, Kat here wrapping it up at the guest house. Uh, we'd love to see it for sure. Yeah, just this, just this final section. Um, it, you know, there's not too much you can optimize here. Uh, it's it's basically just running through and getting to EV as fast as possible. And for the most part, we're fully stocked up on ammo at this point, so ammo mm -hmm. isn't really a concern. And then the the amount of ammo that they give us in the back corner of the final boss fight is realistically that's enough ammo alone to finish the boss fight. So um, yeah, for sure. Yeah, the game doesn't totally strand you. Uh, But yeah, getting stabbed with that uh, gardening fork again. It's well, worse than see, the screwdriver. <laughs> but you don't see it. It's a flat. It's a the little flashback here. No, this part here in the game, I just remember feeling like so. Uh, this is where you definitely start to feel very sympathetic uh, towards like uh, towards me and the Baker family because you're just like, wow, this little like we already did not like this little girl, and you know it's literally all her fault. Not not nice. Not nice girl. <laughs> but she just wanted a family. Uh, there's other ways to have a family than to turn them into <laughs> murderous killers. Yeah, that's fair. You got me there. <laughs> I do remember too. So something you kind of don't see just because we go through it so quickly. Uh, Evie throws these Mia hallucinations at you, and uh, those are pretty terrifying. <laughs> do they even yeah. do damage to you? Uh, they don't do damage to you. But what's interesting, and it doesn't come up in Madhouse, um, but uh, they actually affect your DA. So uh, oh, wow. it's, it, it's a big thing in a lot of other runs. It's not as big in this category, but uh, the difficulty adjustment um, get, changes when you uh, don't get hit by Mia. So when she swings at you with the chainsaw, it actually uh, increases your DA because you technically dodged a hit, even if it's a hit that wouldn't have done any damage to you anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, uh, DA is not an issue in Madhouse just because in Madhouse, we are locked at the highest DA rank. So no matter how many times you die, no matter how many uh, enemies hit you, no matter what you do, your DA is always at rank 9, um, mm -hmm. which is really what makes this difficulty uh, as hard as it is because everything scales up with the uh, with the difficulty. <laughs> oh, cat. <laughs> Unlucky. <laughs> it's, it's a bummer when RE7 decides to misbehave like this, but, you know, yeah. it's, it's what we got to deal with. Did um did Cat have to load a save at all? Uh, uh I don't think so. Like no. any like the pre-made ones or anything no, like that? No, not that I, I saw. I don't think no. so. Yeah. No. Okay. I know she I had think... to retry a couple times, right? Uh, I think it's a couple of retries. Yeah, she had a couple of retries, but no, no, no. She didn't. She didn't need to load any saves. Um. Okay. I don't know for sure, but I think there's a chance Cat could be on PB pace. Oh, uh, okay. Just based on uh, my ending time and uh, where Cat is currently at. Now, I don't know for sure. If I'm wrong, then I apologize. But uh, I believe Cat's PB is like a 150 something. Um, and she's still about within 10 minutes RTA when my run ended. Okay. Uh, so, unless something else happened and my brain is wrong, I'm not the most intelligent individual. But it, it, <laughs> we'll see in a moment. Obviously, don't, don't, don't bet on that. But uh, she's we'll on really good pace, though. Yeah, we'll have her confirm for sure. Yeah. Forget the race. A PB would be super hype. <laughs> I know. Oh, yeah. Goodness, PBing in a marathon setting is like the best feeling ever. Yeah, and especially Madhouse new game of all of all things mm -hmm. to have a 
have mm-hmm. a GDQ PB, that would be really awesome. Not to yeah. Let's not get our hopes up too quick, but <laughs> not still just finishing out this run, uh, especially yeah, without finishing it all. I think. Forget yeah, yeah. Alrighty, let's see. Uh, let's see the Albert shots here. <laughs> Yeah, so optimally it should stretch. take it should take five Albert shots. It's kind of semi common to have to do six if one of them hits a uh, arm as it's swinging by or something like that. But um, Zeke's eight shots that was that was literally pushing it to the max. Uh, you don't yeah, get that was it. <laughs> any many more ammo. Um, going for the five, boom, perfect. There we go. There we go. <laughs> uh, so time for cat will be once the face disintegrates. Same thing once we go to the black screen. What's Great it job, Cat. Black. Woo! Oh my goodness, that was that was awesome. We, I know uh, that was. Un- uh, oh, there we go. I, I was gonna say I know that was a rough run, but no, still amazing, <laughs> still amazing. I run. was so unlucky. Yeah. It's not even funny. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that uh, the big boys at the end there. Not even that. It was just the beginning <laughs> half. Was just Mia did not want to wake time. up, and then Jack was giving me <laughs> terrible RNG. Oh, we're proud of you though. This this run is so is so tough and very it's a hard. It's run. very yeah. hard. It's, so it is insanely hard. <laughs> you have far more hours than this. Oh run yeah. Than I do so. That's like <laughs> there should be. What, what are you gonna do, right? Yeah, there should be. Let me tell you honestly, uh, GDQ chat that there should be no realistic comparison. I like I draw between like the hours that I put in. Right? It's un, It's not even like realistic. <laughs> it's this category, and I still die in it. Right, I still struggle because this category is, is a nightmare. It's the hardest one RE7 has to offer. Not very few people have even done it. Look at the leaderboards. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So to be able to do this in a marathon, let alone a race, like, yeah, it is a PB, isn't that? Let's go. Cool. That is a PB. Yeah. Oh my god! Yes. If, Congratulations. If I didn't have the unluckiness of Jack too, because you know the boxes. Yeah. Even though I picked up both of the ammos, I got two heal boxes. Oh no! Oh. <laughs> them. Jack's so looking out like, for your well, health. I have, to, I have to retry. Like, unfortunately, yeah, sometimes right. in this game, you just have to retry because if you get bad RNG, you can't continue. You need the ammo to be able to finish the boss fights. So if you don't get it, reroll. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> All right. Well, real yeah, quick, yeah. let's uh, let's see how how do you both feel about? It? Let's start with the Zeke. How do you, how do you feel about the run? Um. I know I, as, as far as like the runs quality was, I feel pretty good about the way most of my fights went, with the exception of Jack Three. Um, I, I, surprisingly, my worst boss fight was Evelyn, but we don't need to talk about that. But oh my uh, god! But uh, that actually does lead me to a question. Actually, uh, I think for most of the run, you were having to play on sixty, right? Yeah, so what was causing the early frame drops is an OBS setting called limiting capture frame rate. I wasn't able to get it turned on properly, and it requires a whole lot of finicky stuff with RE7 to get it to capture right. Um, so the only way I saw to fix it, because I could see, you could probably notice I was looking at another monitor a lot of the run, because I was watching the frames drop. So I, I would I switched over to 60 because I knew that would be the only way to fix it. So I did have to do the whole run on 60 for the most part, switching to variable for only a couple things, which it, it plays a pretty big difference. On Evelyn, being at 60 FPS actually makes the four shot. Uh, you can't just mash the click on PC. You actually have to time the shot. So that's why Evelyn almost killed me is because I didn't I didn't realize that in time. But um, you know, otherwise it, it wasn't too too bad. I'm glad I was able to do March two first try. Uh, by the skin of my teeth, last <laughs> very very close to not being able to do that strat on sixty. Um, but otherwise, you know, I, I was pretty happy with the run for the most part. And you know, it kind of unfortunate both me and Cat had tech issues. Uh, we pulled through though, so it's all good there. We did, yeah. And uh, I'm happy. It was it was a great run, and I I, I had a lot of fun. I'm so happy that Cat PB. So you guys should be hyped in chat for that because oh, that's yeah, crazy. That yeah, we will. That's so we'll we'll good. talk more about that in one moment here. But before right. we go to that, uh, as well, Captain Ezekiel, if anyone wanted to find you on Twitch or anywhere else, where can they find you? Uh, you can find me on twitch.tv slash Captain Ezekiel, no underscore. Uh, same thing on Twitter. I, I primarily run Resident Evil games. I, seven is my baby. That's the game I've been running for five years now. Um, most of the records are, are stuff that I've sat here and grinded for a very long time. So uh, catch a lot of seven and, you know, sometimes four remake. A bunch of other RESB games that I've done. But uh, yeah, you can catch me, catch me there. Sweet. And then uh, going over to the uh, Team Umbrella side, Kat, uh, how did you feel about the run? How I felt about the run. Just just, just so un- 
unbelievably lucky. <laughs> unlucky. Just so much unlucky. Um, <laughs> I had to write that backwards, by the way. Uh, <laughs> anyways. Uh, honestly, the Mia too, like Mia too was fine. Like, er, like my fights were fine at the end of the day. Like, I feel like Jack three gave me a little bit of a struggle, but besides that, and like Jack two being the chainsaw fight being a little bit eh, and that whole section, um, I felt like it wasn't that bad. Like my later half was actually really good, but like my early half just like I. For whatever reason, the game was just, just out to get, get me. <laughs> yeah, Mia just, I don't know what it is. I, I was i was talking to Zeke about this earlier. I was like, dude, I'm, I don't know why, but Mia's just not getting up for me. I'm far away from her, but she's not getting up for some reason. So I lost a lot of time just from that alone. Like, I, I feel like if I didn't have the unluckiness at the start that I had, we probably would have been fairly close Yeah, in the end. Um. Uh... But overall, I don't know. I had fun. I had I had my fun with it. I'm glad it's over with. I kind of want to get another PB at some point. Hey, I mean, it Ooh, sounds like going go. right now. And also, uh, yeah. big uh, big respects to being able to play on your feet. I definitely know yeah, uh, right at the end of the that. mine there, that last moment, uh, just kind of missing the ladder of being able to fight the two big boys with the shotgun I heads. I missed that bomb, and I was like, I didn't see it. I was like, I, I mean, I I'm just it. saying, like, many other runners may have just died at that point. You played it off well. You're able to get both the kills, and uh, we definitely applaud you for that. It was fun to watch. Thank you. Thank you. I, you know, I'm glad I was able to make it to the end and not have to mercy kill my, my run. Exactly. <laughs> you know? I'm happy with that. Uh, as uh, thank well. Thank everybody for watching, though. If anyone did want to find you on Twitch or else, where can they find you? Uh, you can find me at twitch.tv forward slash catlink pretty much anywhere else. Uh, I do a lot of horror speed runs for the most part, a lot of Resident Evil, a lot of Silent Hills, goofy games at times, you know, jazz punk. Uh, it depends on what I'm feeling, but I like a lot of horror games. That's my jam. All right. I do want to say thank you both once again for that wonderful Resident Evil 7 Madhouse run. Uh, for Twitch chat here, if you have not checked out our runners, uh, if you would want to see more of them, feel free to check them out at uh, Captain Ezekiel or Catlink. Uh, as well, thank you to both of our commentators here. Thank you so much for having us. It was a good time. Yeah. It was super hyped to watch Cat uh, and Zeke here. It was, it was such yeah, a, thanks for, uh, amazing. Uh, Absolutely. For commentating. Yeah. Yeah. Thank it you. It was a fun one. And uh, for everyone else here, we do have one more run for you tonight. Uh, we're going to kind of uh, end where we began in a way uh, with uh, instead of the Resident Evil 4 classic, we're going to be going to Resident Evil 4 remake for our finale. So don't go anywhere. We will be right back. All right, everyone, we are back with the Resident Evil Relay, and not only that, but our final game of the night and the events. Uh, before we go into that, I do want to say once again that I have been your host, Dick Dysis. And I've been your host, Catlink. It's been a joy that Resident Evil 7 Madhouse race. <laughs> Don't even need to talk about it on my end. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you did good, and it's, you know, going from uh, hosting to running, there's a bit of a shift there, but uh, you are a fitting runner for RA7, and you did, you did good. You know, I'm just glad it, you know, it got finished. There wasn't as much dying near the end. Things went a lot better after, uh, after Main House. But besides that, we have a very exciting run coming up with Resident Evil 4 Remake with 7 Ray D and Spicy. Which we'll, uh, very, very excited. we'll be talking to them more in a moment. Uh, but I do want to say once again, uh, just a general thank you for all of uh, Twitch chat for those of you involved in the event. Uh, it was definitely fun getting the Resident Evil Relay put together. So just I hope you all enjoyed it. And it's been a lot of fun so far. Uh, anyway, without yeah. further ado, how about we hop into our finale and meet our runners? Uh, let's hop over to the game. Uh, we once again have two sides. We have Team Stars and Team Umbrella. Uh, for Team Stars, we're going to be having Spicy. Hey everybody, my name is Spicy. Um, I played a lot of RE4. I grinded this game really hard when it first came out and held record for a while. I'm really excited for this race. This is a super fun race game because there's a lot of RNG can kind of go either way, so it should be fun. All right. As well, for Team Umbrella, we have Seven Ray D. Hello, everybody. This day should be fun. I'm absolutely horrified of this run. <laughs> it's the RNG. Can't go. You'll so, agree. Uh, yeah. 
We we have kind of the opposite uh, experiences because uh, we both participated in tournament already, and the uh, spicy was the first, and I was the dead last last time. <laughs> uh, so uh, let's see how this goes this time. All right, as well for commentary, we have. Hello, everybody. Uh, Cat Link here. Welcome. <laughs> I'm back. Uh, I'm very excited to be uh, commentating on this run. It is a uh, quite, quite a uh, quite an eventful one. So yeah, excited. <laughs> I will say, in fairness to you as well, there were a couple of fill slots. You know, as the schedule goes, things don't always go according to plan, but I think it's been going good so far for an event. I don't I've been having fun. For that. Um, yeah, thank you very much. Anyway, though, yeah, if we're ready to get started, I can uh, give you both the reins here, and we can count it down. Uh, which one of you would like to do the honors? Uh, Zeke, you're the, you're the pro runner here. You want to set him off? Yeah, I will do that. I will have the runners get into the uh, to cut scene to get ready to skip it. Um, so I will count down. It'll be on go. So I'll wait until Trey is uh, or uh, Spicy's lined up there. Um, all right. So three, two, one, go. Best of luck, guys. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. All right. So RE4. Oh. Our Resident Evil 4 Remake. It is the game of all time, surely. Um, there's a lot of things that are going to be at play with especially the professional difficulty with just how asinine, I guess, the work could be uh, that the enemies are just, they're just not very nice. So hopefully both runners get some good luck on that end. Anyone home? Yeah, so here's the, if you're not aware of the caveats of pro for RE4R, it's that there are no checkpoints, um, which means there's absolutely no auto saves. And if you fail to make a save and you die, you go all, you, you go to the start of the game. Um, so the runners, uh, obviously in a marathon setting and in a race setting, will be making certain manual saves. Not only that, but even in speedruns, saves are still made from time to time. Um, so the game is uh, very RNG heavy, I'll say. Uh, yeah. There's a, a lot of enemy variety in terms of what they can do. Some enemies are consistent, like that enemy right there, that Ganado, uh, that Plagas Ganado rather. Um, very consistent dodge there uh, that the runners did. Um, and this herb pickup is very important because it's going to play into our money routing. So there's a lot to do of money routing uh, in all the difficulties, but it's really heavy and professional. Um, so you'll be seeing, uh, unfortunately, what they're going to be selling the most is their healing items, which are really yeah. sad that we have to do that, but they are worth it's the most. One of those things where it's just like you have to do it because it just gives you so much money in the long run that you have to sell it. But at the same time, it's like, well, what happens if all, all you know, everything breaks loose and nothing goes right? Well, you're kind of going to have to play on your feet, and that's a lot of this category. Yeah, exactly. Um, speaking of playing on your feet, this very first section is the most reset heavy part of the game by a mile. Um, so you're going to see the runners go into this uh, shack here and grab the flash and that red herb and some ammo. Uh, and they're coming up on the village. Now, this is so RNG heavy um, that it's just incredibly unreliable to do fast. You can never count on it to be consistent. Uh, what you need to do here is you need to kill 15 Ganados to trigger the bell to ring. Uh, when you do that, the, the section ends, you can leave. So they have to do this in a certain way. So the runner's gonna come up and shoot this first Ganado and stagger him or kill him. And then they're gonna execute kill this other one. Let's get some two guaranteed kills. Now they're gonna run into the shack here and they're going to grab a set grenade spawn. They want to at least kill four more Ganados with this. Uh, that flashbang's gonna stun them in that room behind them. So if this grenade kills at least four, uh, then they can proceed to the next area. Uh, Trey got the unlucky RNG and got grabbed there. So here's the RNG we're talking about. See, they're just everywhere doing whatever they want. So it's really hard to account for the RNG of this room. Trey's gonna... Yeah, sometimes you'll get grabbed quite a lot here. Um, and there's not a whole lot you can do. Hopefully Trey can get out of this one here. He's gonna go out the back window. Let's 
Perfect. Spicy's made his way up to the ceiling. Hopefully that grenade kills enough people. Pretty close. Pretty close. Should only be like, like a couple more. He also has uh, Salvador behind him. Yeah, so sometimes you'll probably notice the runners who will, uh, they'll pause buffer in between shots. Usually this just makes sure that you line up your shots accurately to guarantee that you get the shot. It looks like Trey, uh, sorry, Spicy and made his way out of the first part of the village. Very nice. Yeah, it looks like Trey just finished his as well. You can just tell just looking at the what the two runners are doing there. If you just side by side, their village is right there. The, the, the massive amounts of discrepancy at no fault of the runners is just a prime example of what we're talking about here. Uh, Spicy, Trey both had very different uh, villages because you just can't you can't count for it to be consistent, right? So uh, they both get out. Neither of them die. They didn't have to use too many of their resources or their heals, which are like I said, they need them for money. So we take those, especially in a race in a marathon setting. So kudos to both runners oh, yeah. for getting out of there. Yeah, that is a very reset heavy. Even on like basically on any category in this game, I believe on new game uh, specifically, that part is just so reset heavy. It's very sad every time. Damn. Mm -hmm. And a professional is a relatively optimized category now, so uh, oh, yeah. these, those types of time losses and stuff in the village can be like pretty brutal. Um, so right now what the runners are doing is they're going to uh, grab this cog and open up this gate. Uh, from here, there's another bit of uh, stuff they need to grab, like shotgun ammo, and there's going to be a Ganado that blocks them at the store sometimes. Sometimes he's not there. Like I said, a bit of RNG. Um, a little bit of a spooky little cart push they have to do here. Now, there are Ganados chasing Spicy right now. Um, and if they can camp you on this on this cart, you'll probably see them run at him as he pushes it, uh, coming they across the bridge. Coming up. Oh, there they are. There's Calvary. And this one is going to... Ooh, good mm, iframes on nice that one. Yeah. Frames, yeah. That's very lucky. The Ganado can sometimes just wait and then hit you as soon as the iframes end, and it's very, very sad. Hopefully Trey has uh, just as much good luck with the iframes on that one. Sometimes they they can hit you right after the iframes, and it's tragic. <laughs> yeah, it looks like Trey has uh, the Brute coming up on him. Hopefully he can... Ooh. Very, very nice, dodge. nice That is a nice dodge. Wow. That very, was actually... Uh, I would have died there. Sick, actually. <laughs> Usually you see that Brute, and you're like, well... Back to village, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was very, very nice done by Trey. Now, what you're going to see on Spicy screen, he's going to try to do what's called the Larry skip, which basically he uses the animation of disarming that bomb to push himself through the wall. Um, since this is an any percent category, there's going to be a lot of glitches like this, so be prepared for that. So what this does is it allows you to go up and around this little uh, fishing village section, um, or rather just small village section, not fishing village, and uh, skip right to where Luis is, and you skip meeting a Ganado that we all nicknamed Larry, um, this saves about 15 seconds with done correctly. So Spicy's going to run around here and he's going to clip in. And just drop right in back in bounds. Oh, oh little, sometimes no. you can get a little stuck here. There is a way to get back in bounds. So you just got to like there you finagle go, okay. your way a little bit, but very nice back in bounds. Good save there. There is a death trap there where you can get stuck and you can't move at all. And I was worried that happened to Spicy. So it's good that didn't yeah, happen. Sometimes like it sucks when that happens too, because you're just like, man, I just got out of village. <laughs> <laughs> So that's uh, that's chapter one done for Spicy, and now Trey's also going to clip back in here on his Larry skip. Nicely done. Perfect. Nice. Very, very nice going into chapter two now. Chapter two. Oh, boy. What do we have to say about chapter two? <laughs> yeah, so if you thought chapter one's RNG was bad, well, trust me, it does not get any better here. Uh, so the start of chapter two is uh, a lot of set enemy spawns that you're meant to deal with uh, using the knife. A couple of these enemies um, and uh, boxes drop static items. So you saw Spicy pick up an herb earlier, and Trey just picked it up as well. That is a set drop. They need the sapphire as well. All these pickups that they're doing right now are meant for money reasons, because we need to buy a lot of stuff and upgrade a lot of stuff in this run. Um, so you'll see Spicy execute this guy. It, it's, it's mostly for safety reasons. Even in runs, you would do that. You can get around him, but it's kind of RNG. Yeah. <clears throat> now on professional that that little that little wheel actually uh runs its timer down faster so you can't make any mistakes coming back to the store yeah the timing on this is pretty tight that's why killing that one ganado at the right at the door 
can be very useful for just making sure you get through there. Um, Who's that? But now we're going into Let's Redness Valley. Oh boy, this is the, probably the one of the like this is probably the second scariest part of the oh run, my. if not the first scariest part of the run. Um, panic, panic and chaos is all it really is. <laughs> Yeah, there is, um, so Red Mist Valley, uh, we call it that because of what happens to Leon if a boom boom stick lands underneath your feet. Uh, so you're gonna see, uh, Spikes, he started by shooting that barrel. That's gonna pull the enem some enemies in the arena over there. Um, if a dynamite lands underneath your feet, which is random, if the uh, Ganados is to beam you with one, then you will die instantly. Uh, unless you have some sort of, like, iframes, which can happen. Uh, Spicey got that flash here. Now, if he did this correctly, this Ganado up here shouldn't throw the uh, dynamite right on him. And some of the enemies have moved, so that's good. It means the barrel explosion was was fast enough. So he's, now he has to wrap up and around and get uh, this gate open. Oh, he got some RNG on this fella. Nice crouch nice dodge. dodge. Yeah. And sometimes you can dodge uh, enemies' grabs by crouch dodging. Uh, it's sometimes a little finicky, but it can be very satisfying when you hit it. Ooh, nice jukes so by Spicy. Far, so good. So far, so good on both ends, actually. Let's see uh, if Trey can make it to the wheel without any problems. It's spicy has to grab this yellow herb and this first aid spray. Nice. Oh. Nice. So got a little bit of a, a knockback right there, but thankfully not the full extent of the, the pipe bombs because they are nasty when it comes to touching Leon. If they touch Leon at all. Also, nice. Nice uh, reflect there by Trey. There's just the off screen reflect. Very yeah. nice. Yeah. The parries in this game, there is a mechanic called parrying, if you're not familiar with it in RE4R, where if you time um, a, uh, the spacebar press or a knife pull out on a hit, and it only matters as a... You can only get perfect parries, which means it has to be like absolutely perfect um, on professional in order to deflect the attack. Um, so that's what Trade said, so it was really good. Spicy getting shoved a lot by that's these dumb. Ganados. Yeah, these... these these Ganados, a big problem with 4R is that these Ganados are basically Street Fighter characters that made it into the wrong game. So they do a lot of just shoving and punching and true combos. It is very brutal. Um, but now after a few months of playing the game, we're a bit more accustomed to it. We figured out how to dodge a lot of it, but it's it's still not fun. Honestly, both Chapter 2s for both Spicy and Trey are looking very solid right now. Honestly, I... I, you know, you never know what could happen in Red Mist Valley, but the, thankfully, both of them were able to get out of it without getting scaved too hard, uh, or at all, for both. I think, for sure, neither of them got grabbed or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, neither of them actually got hit, so that's, that's really good. Um, also, one thing we didn't mention, but you guys can see it. Uh, we've talked about DA, we've talked about SRTs for a lot of these Resident Evil runs. Uh, you can see it on the screens of both these players, with top left for Trey, bottom left for Spicy. Um, these are very important for RE4R because we really do need to track our DA and we really need to track enemy kills. Enemy kills for certain areas, like the very beginning there. Um, and DA, and I believe they're going to try to go for 7-hit Del Lago. Now, oh boy, yeah. if they go for it, 7-hit Del Lago is a very convoluted uh, setup that requires the, the runners to not take too much damage. Uh, so it doesn't influence their action points, and they need to sell ammo and have a certain amount of items in their inventory to influence their item points, which those two things together basically make your DA. Very hard to explain, and it's, I'm not going to bore you with it, but basically, they need to be at a certain amount of action points going into the fishing village. Now, if they can do this correctly, and they can walk out of the fishing village with 4,900, 999 action points with a with a decimal and whatever number after, that means Del Lago will break. And it will essentially be like a DA0 Del Lago, and they'll be able to kill it with seven hits. This is unique to professional. It is a huge gargantuan time save, like nearly like 40 seconds. Very important to professional. Uh, Trey trying to free Huey, trying his best. Free absolutely, absolutely Yay. tried his best. You know, I I applaud taking the time to free Huey there. We love Huey. Yeah, shout outs to Trey for trying to save Huey. 
We we appreciate it. Um, you can't just release him from the trap normally, or else he actually makes the Gigante fight slower. So that's why you have to shoot the trap. But um, we're coming up now on, I believe, what will be the first actual merchant stop. Uh, assuming they go for seven hit Del Lago. I'm not quite sure if they are. Oh, maybe not. Uh, there's a, it, it's seven hit Delago is really hard to set up or even do in runs. Yeah. So I wouldn't I, I be would surprised imagine... if they don't do it in this. Yeah, it, it, getting it in a marathon setting is. Church. Uh, it's very rare to probably even get it close. So, I believe the runners are probably taking it fairly safe right now and not even trying for it. Which you know what, I, I get it. I understand. I wouldn't want to mess with that either. So. Yeah, better safe than sorry. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it looks like both uh, runners, just looking at their setup here, is uh, they might be not going for it. Just looking at their item points right now. So, uh, makes a lot of sense. It's it's kind of a nightmare to go for anyways. So, uh, I mean, even it, if they try to go for it, it would be very interesting to see if they can. But at the end of the day, if you don't get it, you don't get it. That's just as simple as, simple <laughs> as that. <laughs> there is another merchant just before fishing village. There's a chance they could set up for it there, but if they don't, then uh, it, that's you know honestly not not the end of the world. Um, so this whole area here, you're gonna see uh, the runners do this. Spicy's gonna get to the very edge of this and jump off. For some reason, this clips Leon a little bit out of bounds, and it forces these enemies in the tunnel here to just not spawn. Uh, and when that happens, you can just run through for free. It also causes that first enemy who camps the ladder to just kind of go AFK a little bit. All right, now in this next uh, area here, uh, Spice is going to kill a couple crows so we can get uh, a gem, a grenade, and then another gem that he just shot from the top there. He's going to shoot this dog to keep it away from him because that dog can can hurt sometimes. Yeah, that dog can be a little pesky. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. And now we're coming up on, uh, on Spicy Scent here. He's making his way to the... Uh, Fishy Village, he is doing something here. I believe he changed his, uh... He possibly forgot to change his setting from Krauser. Oh, actually, he is going for 7-hit Del Lago. Oh, is he actually going for it? Okay, yes, okay, okay. I, I believe so. He sent his knife to storage, which dropped his item points down to 1,500, which is underneath the oh. threshold you need to do. It looks like Trey is also going for it. Oh my, this is yeah. going to be interesting. So the way this works is they have to get through Fishing Village a certain way. So Spicy is going to run up here, and he's going to intentionally take a grab from one of these enemies here. And when he does this, he's going to pause buffer this. And so she's, she's doing the Street Fighter. So he's going to wait, and he's going to pause to break out of the grab right now. And now, now he's at the perfect uh, action points he needs to be in. Now all he has to do is not all rather is this obviously RNG is at play here. <laughs> yeah. He needs to not get hit again. He cannot get touched. From here until Del Lago, he is not allowed to take another hit. And he needs to kill two Ganados. Um This is gonna be an interesting way this works, right? It sounds convoluted, very complex, but he's gonna come out here and shoot this barrel and kill that next one. He needs to be uh, at a certain DA, uh, I believe. Spicy may have killed too many enemies with that barrel, so I don't think he can get it anymore. Because he's at 5,000 action points. So he will not be able to get the 7 Del Lago now as a result, but he's going to finish running through the fishing village and get back out to Del Lago now on Trey's end. Um, he is going for the setup now as well. Ooh. Ooh. That's that a rough was, hit. Uh, that was a rough hit, but thankfully there is the pass. Oh. All right. Oh. Nice. So it's Trey. Very interesting getting back up on that. Yeah. So Trey is actually set up now for the seven eight. He now can does he needs to not get hit. It is very important that he does not take a single bit of damage. That arrow was so close. That arrow was looking for it and not wanting to have that seven hit Del Lago at all. But thankfully, by the skin of his teeth, did not get out of, uh, did not get hit. Thank goodness for that. Oh, lady, get out of the oh, way. Oh, come on, lady, get out of the way. Let's go. All right. Oh, whoa, hello. So, <laughs> okay, 
Yeah, so you're gonna see the the shift in pace now here. Trey appears to have been behind a bit. Uh, Spicy is gonna still attempt to do the one cycle Del Lago, which is essentially killing Del Lago before he dives. Uh, Trey, however, is now set up for the seven hit Del Lago. So Trey should pull ahead right here. Uh, incredibly impressive to pull off seven hit Del Lago set up in a marathon, a marathon in a race. Setting, yeah, so you're, we're gonna see both ends of the natural way of doing, I guess the natural way of doing Del Lago on professional versus the seven hit Del Lago which will give Trey here a little bit of a lead. This is five, this is six, and this is, should kill him right here. Seven, oh. Switching his FPS back, perfect. Very see, that's, nice. you can see how much of a massive shift of time that is to get a strat like that. That's why it's so, it's one of the hardest strats in the game, and it relies on a little bit of RNG, so. Uh, the reason the runners change to 60 FPS, by the way, is because it changes the way the, the waves work for Del Lago, so it makes it easier to throw spears. So now, just like that, Trey pulls in the lead a little bit because of the seven hit Del Lago set up, and um, honestly, there is a lot of places where runners can trade pace here, so winner, loser oh, yeah. will, will move but a lot in this. I just want to say, it's very fitting that Trey, seven Ray D, got the seven hit Del Lago. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> that is very, I actually never made that connection, but yeah, that's incredibly fitting. All right, now going into chapter four here. Um, yeah. Basically, time to uh, the, the calm before the storm, I'd like to say. Yeah, it's a pretty good way of putting it. Uh, this is probably the biggest lull of the run, where you're you're essentially just like you get to chill for a little bit until Higante at the very end. Um, what the runners are going to be doing here is they're going to be getting in a boat and riding around this area in the Del Lago like, lake to get things like uh, some treasures they're going to sell, um, some eggs uh, for to make some, some kind of shrine. cake later, obviously. That's why they oh, need yeah, eggs. Oh, yeah, definitely cake. Absolutely. Yeah, so Do that's what they're... A little bit of shopping, you know, making yeah. some crepes or whatever. Yeah, exactly, and you need eggs for that. So they're going to get some eggs, and they're going to use those later. Um, and they're going to get uh, a couple emblem pieces to get the church uh, insignia so they can actually open up the church. So this is more of like a cleanup, kind of casually drive around section to get everything done. And then at the very end, they'll have to fight um, Higante. Uh, yeah. So that's kind of what this... Well, even with this section here, it can still be a little scary. Uh, the section that Trey is going through at the moment, uh, there are some times where the Ganados can be a little grabby and uh, love to throw their axes. <laughs> and there's still a pipe bomb, so you, you can't get away from it. Yeah, this little area that Trey is in, you see the runners took different routes here. Ultimately, not a massive time change between the which way you do this. You have to go to each island anyways. Um, but Trey uh, opted to go to this one first. Spicey went to the egg one first. Uh, essentially, yeah, that pipe right there is disgusting. So Trey was smart enough to realize it was going to be thrown. This is where the threat is at. It's basically just on this island. So he's going to grab that yellow herb, that velvet blue. Again, this is all for money. Now we're really hoping that uh, Ganado does not throw a Molotov under Tracy while he opens this door. Th that will fire trap him and you cannot get through the door and you will just die. Uh, Thankfully but, that didn't happen. So he's getting out of there just fine. Very nice. They were synced up there. They both started their boat yeah, at the same right? time. That was, that that was so, so cool. cool. All right, yeah. now, now Trey's going to pick up. You saw Spicy get it earlier, uh, depending if you're watching the stream, but Trey's going to get this big bass here in the water. This is so that we can sell it for a little bit of money, as well as uh, giving us um, some spinels, uh, which is a currency that the merchant will give you for completing little side quests, and selling that fish is a side quest. Yeah, there are very few of the side quests that the runners will be doing just for... Um, added stuff in the merchant that they can get, which will help later on. Hopefully, Spicy can get out of the section without any problems. Crossing our fingers for him. And I believe Trey will now be making his way over to Gigante. Yeah, so Trey has the, this last insignia he's grabbing here, and then he will be on his way to the church insignia, which will let him do Higante as well. All these puzzle solutions you're seeing the runners do, by the way, are set and they are not RNG. Um, the hardcore and professional difficulty share solutions for their puzzles, and so do assisted and standard, but those two sets of difficulties are separated from each other. 
So you'll notice that difference if you watch these runs before. So far looking good for Spicy in this section as well. Oh, oh nice parry. parry. Oh, not taking any chances with those Molotovs. They are very deadly, especially at this door here. You do not want to get trapped because it is an instant death. You get stunned. You just you can't do anything about it, really. So very, very much a better safe than sorry. Yeah, it, it's super sad when it happens. So Spicy playing it safer because unlike Trey, like I said, a lot of RNG in this run. There were two Ganados there camping with Molotovs where Trey had none there with Molotovs. So very different experience. So Spicy had to play that a bit safe, but he got through without dying. And that is literally what you want all the time. <laughs> when professionals yeah. like, well, I oh, didn't yeah. die. So run still alive. <laughs> I can still make it to the next chapter. Sweet. I don't have to go back to village. Awesome. Keep going. <laughs> exactly. And now uh, we're coming up on Higante and all the boss fights, all this, all the, like, the challenge sections of professional are very high skill check uh, sections. Higante is no exception to this. Uh, now we're coming up on our actual first merchant stop where you're going to see um, Trey and Spicy. You'll see Trey do it here first. Uh, he's going to sell his heals, he's going to buy uh, a treasure and sell these treasures, and the whole purpose of this is to stack his money so he can upgrade his rifle a little bit. He's going to buy this uh, treasure mask, he's going to go in here and put three rubies in it, and then he's going to go and sell all the stuff he's picked up, uh, keep one sapphire for later, sell his lunker bath, sell his shotgun, his handgun ammo, and all of his heals. This is going to give him a lot of money. He's going to buy his sniper, his scope, and upgrade the power on this guy uh, a bit, the ammo capacity, and the reload speed. Uh, doing this is because he's setting up for the Higante fight, which has a specific strat. Uh, that is used to kill it and to one cycle it and it's, it requires very precise shooting and very quick reactions uh, Spicy doing the same thing here doing the same upgrade see spicy uh, I wonder if he yeah, So spicy got a little bit unlucky on the drop so his, his builds a little bit different here, but he should still be able to do it Yeah, mostly should be fine Trey making his way into Gigante Hopefully, uh, hopefully it pans out for him. He's going to grab a few items before he starts to fight. And then, uh, hopefully the shots don't miss on this one. Yeah, so Trey's going to shoot Higate a few times in the head. When he does this, he's going to, uh, expose the weak point. And now these shots cannot miss yes yeah, so far he's doing great he's gonna do a little pause book here to make sure he hits that one when he did so he's gonna reload here and Higante is gonna walk towards him and he's gonna shoot a few more times expose me point again yeah that that shot on the when they pause buffer on that shot it is so easy to miss that shot and very wonderful Higante fight from Trey hopefully the same goes for spicy here as Trey makes his way over to collect Ashley, then promptly dump her. <laughs> You'll see what we mean in a moment, but uh, looks like Spicy getting out of the Gigante fight without any problems as well. Very nice from both runners. Okay. Yeah, very, very nicely done. You have exactly enough rifle ammo for the most part to do that fight. Um, sometimes you'll have a little bit of extra depending on your uh, your pickups beforehand. But both runners did a, uh, a slightly different strat there, but ultimately finished the fight in about... Uh, I'd say Spicy probably finished it a couple seconds faster because of the way he did the fight. But very nicely done by both runners, and now they're both heading to the church. Very neck and neck right now. For a, a, for a run like RE4R, th being this close is insane because there's oh, yeah. so much that already could have went so wrong and so right for both runners and it has in a way where trey had an unfortunate start uh with his village being a little bit harder but to deal that, with that seven hit uh, del lago really brought him a little bit more in the lead here but the run is not done anything can happen from this point on castle's not even here yet so and we're going into cabin soon so Ashley Graham. cross yeah. our fingers I'm you know for both runners on those parts yeah, there's a lot of a lot of the game left still to be played, and uh, this whole section here, from the end of chapter four to the start of chapter seven, is uh, some of the most awful speedrun <laughs> stuff to do in pro. You can say that again, honestly. <laughs> In professional, we we can skip certain things like we're allowed to skip, like Mendez, because we have in a way to do that by clipping out of bounds. Um, however, we cannot skip the Bella Sisters, and that is going to be a fight you'll see later, and that is a nightmare to deal with. 
Um, speaking of clipping out of bounds, uh, we have the sniper rifle now, which means we get to do some of our very favorite tech, which is sniper clipping. A very Ooh, yeah. massive tech for this game. Uh, if you basically the way it works is if you aim in the scope, you can push Leon's model into walls and into doors, which allows you to open doors from other sides and allows you to clip out of bounds really easy. You're gonna see Trey push himself into this corner and drop himself down the slider to end up on the bottom floor of the turret. Now, why this Just is like that. yeah, it's so it's so well done. And why and why this is so significant is now you skipped actually having to come with you. That is massive because now she can't get grabbed. You can just run absolutely straight to the cabin. This was by far the greatest thing we found in this run. It saved us from having to do oh, so God. many bad things. Because even this part with Ashley, like just just with yeah, Ashley, especially on professional, trying to navigate through this section with Ashley is can, it just can turn into such a nightmare. Uh, so being able to just pass through there without Ashley makes it a lot more easier. There's still some things that can happen, but for the most part, it just makes it a breeze to run through, not have to worry, and just make your way over to the cabin. Yeah, both runners getting that, that skip uh, really nice first try. Um, yeah, so I believe we have Matt Matt to thank for that, uh, for the sniper clipping, uh, and we like he found it his first original use, and we started using it everywhere, and it really made this oh, run yeah. bearable. And just to note, the runners are on a down patch version of the game, which allows us to continue using the sniper glitches. Uh, unfortunately, Capcom had removed it. Uh, however, the, the nice thing about down patching is that it allows us to continue using that. Uh, so you'll see it a few more times later on the run. But now Trey making his way over to Cabin, and hopefully everything plays nice. And, uh, you know, we get the kills, the amount of kills we need very quickly. Yeah, so Cabin. Cabin went through a lot of development. Trey's making a safety save before it. Very smart, because uh, Cabin is uh, can go wrong very fast. Cabin was made, we thought it was very RNG, and we made it consistent. We figured out a lot of solutions to it. We originally figured out the kill counter required to progress it, the timer required to progress it. Oh, no. A little unlucky there. That's okay. We got lots of eggs to use there, so Trey's going to be doing uh, two eggs there just to make sure he gets into cabin without super low health because the enemies in cabin can be very volatile. Uh, so starting off cabin here, he would like to explain. Yeah, so Trey's going to kill these two enemies there with a collateral shot. He's going to kill these two as well. He needs to get all six of these kills uh, on these windows here. He's going to break some of them too because he wants them open. Ultimately, you need to get seven, I believe, total here. And now he's gonna another wave of enemies are gonna spawn. He's gonna throw a couple of grenades there. Now, what we're doing here is we're setting up the kill counter to force that Ganado that he just killed to drop boards, and he did. And now he's gonna wait for uh, uh, another Ganado to spawn, and he's gonna try to kill it with a grenade uh, so that it does not plog us, and that guarantees that it will drop boards. And when you do this, you can board up all three windows, and that ends the timer of the first part of the cabin. And now we're kind of playing a waiting game for the next part to start. So he's going to kind of run around and grab some resources around here, ammo and whatnot. Because when this timer expires, uh, we need to kill five more Ganados in order to trigger the spawn of the brute. And now the cabin will only end when that brute is killed. So now we're kind of waiting for that. So he's going to line up here and wait for this cutscene. Now Ganados are going to spawn down here. That's the first kill, and he's going to wait for another one to come around the corner here. And that's two. And there should be another one coming up here with the slatter. This will be the third. Yeah, and they then... are very specific in autos that they're going to want to kill here. Uh, five all together. Trey's going to make his way to get the fifth kill. On to waiting for Bullboy to arrive. He should be making his way over. He okay, did get the, he I believe he got the bad RNG where the bull roared outside. Um, but doing the pause buffering here to guarantee these shots will help make this a bit safer. Nice. Four shots. The bull is dead. There we go. Very, very nice. Oh, wow. They're, I believe they are getting out of cabin around the same time. Spicy, not too far behind. Very nice from both runners. Yeah, that was, that was really, really well done. That's Cabin. Yeah, so Cabin was yeah. originally a massive, massive pain point for us, but we 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 figured it out, and now it's a little, it's way more consistent, I guess I should say. Uh, if you do everything absolutely perfectly, it is consistent, but it, it sometimes you know, being that reliance on your skills can be really hard. 
Um, but yeah, you're going to see here now, Spicy's going to put the gems in that lamp. You're going to see Trey do the same thing in a little bit because they need to sell that because uh, now we're going to buy a really nice shotgun. Um, it's like a tactical shotgun uh, or the right gun, I guess is what it's called. And they're going to also buy some storage space. I've got some new I welcome. Yeah, the storage got space is going to be very, very handy for later in the run because you do collect a lot of resources over time as well as weapons. Uh, and weapon attachments that they're going to be using later on. Uh, but now we have Ashley yet again going into Chapter 6 here with the Bella Sisters not too far up. Oh boy, Bella Sisters! <laughs> yeah, so Bella Sisters and this whole chase section here. This little canyon valley that they're in now, what's going to happen? Oh, Spicy has to retry the save here. Uh, if you accidentally alert any of these enemies, um, it will mess up the whole cycle and you have to retry the save. Uh, so Spicy had to do it there, unfortunately. Trey now also here, he did not have to retry it since he got both of the stealth kills. You need to get both of those stealth kills. You're going to go up here and grab a gem, and then you're going to throw a flash and leave this area with Ashley. And if done correctly, uh, you should make it out safely with Ashley, and the enemies will not follow you. So he's going to throw this flash. Now you, yeah, hopefully this arrow... Timing on this part here can be very, very finicky. Uh, getting those two stealth kills is very, very handy in combination with the flash. It's just, before we figured out a lot of this stuff, it was quite hectic on how to get out of here with Ashley. Because it, so many things can just go wrong in this part, but looks like Trey is doing fairly well here. Spicy making his way over to the Bell Sisters as well. This is still very, very close on both ends. Like, they're, they've been doing so well. Yeah, for being RE4R Pro, it has no business being this close, but this is crazy know, right? that, like, they're keeping it this close. Like, they're, like, turning this corner at the same frame. Like, how are they doing this? Like, it, it's so <clears throat> insanely close that it, I'm, I'm, I'm so shocked. And, but there's still so much uh, polarized that can happen with this run. Especially yeah, up here with, with the Bella uh, Sisters. Yeah, we're gonna see how how everything behaves with the Bella Sisters coming up here. Uh, Zeke, if you'd like to explain how it works all together. Yeah, so the Bella Sisters here, you need to kill the one with the green dress. Uh, she has the uh, thing you need. So Spicy got the shot in the correct stagger, which means you can get a knife stab on her. Looks like Trey got it too. And then if you do this, you get another shotgun shot and she dies instantly. Both of them got the exact same uh fight there which is absolutely perfect now trey is gonna shoot these guys to get through this is where it gets hard you need to throw a flash at the right time and you start this uh opening of the store if this is done incorrectly uh ashley will get grabbed or worse you'll get hit and if, if you get stopped doing this at any point you 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 fail it or you have to throw another flash you have to do something um hopefully when spicy goes through the door here ashley will not get grabbed oh, that yeah. is unlucky that's that's okay as long as Ashley gets out with him. It should be more than okay. It looks like Trey is also doing just fine. Again, they're doing both of them are just synced up neck and neck here. It's anyone's game. At the at the end of the day, this things can just go right, things can just go wrong, and so far it looks like it's going well for both of them. Yeah, Ashley not getting grabbed there is massive. Because uh, if she does, you have to wait around and shoot the Ganado that's carrying her. So it's very good for both of them. And now they're in this little Mendez chase sequence. Uh, all these Ganados, for the most part, will stagger or die to one pistol shot. Um, so the runners are going to basically go through here and just... The idea is to get through it and don't let you or Ashley really get hit too much. If you get hit, not the end of the world. But Ashley can't get hit or grabbed. Because uh, if she does... Um, then you will fail the chase sequence if she gets touched or if she's too far behind you. But both runners making it through at the same time again. My goodness, this is You're just absolutely wants. wild we'll from again. both runners. We'll run. We are 30 minutes, 35, 36 minutes job. in, and this is already, well, like, it's... Well. I'm amazed right now. This is fantastic Next content. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's great. And now you're looking at one of the greatest gifts that we have utilizing some Leon clipping with the merchant's inventory is uh, clipping through that because you open and close the merchant's uh, menu uh, a couple times and he lets us skip an entire boss fight of this fella who's hanging out right up here. This is Mendez. Uh, Mendez. Hey, he's just vibing around and we're just going to run right past them and go straight to the castle. It's actually so good we can skip him because we used to route around him. Um, but now, we, since we had that skip discovered, we do not have to fight him anymore. So that's yeah. chapter six. 
That's chapter six. Yeah, unfortunately, Pro doesn't have checkpoints, so they can't utilize checkpoint abuse with the scope. So finding that uh, merchant skip was very, very nice for right, just Ashley. making it, just just making say. the money and the ammo routing for this part a lot smoother. But now we're going to be going into the castle section where uh, chapter seven is hell. <laughs> it yep. is not an easy chapter. I'd say it's probably one of the hardest chapters uh, for most categories to begin with. Yeah, uh, it's definitely, uh, it, it kind of, you're sad a little bit as a runner because you just got through all of that. You got Bella's sisters, you got through, you know, um, Gigante, you got the cabin, and now you're like, cool, do I get like a little break? Not at all. Now you're doing castle, and there's a catapult section that you need to get through here, and keeping uh, Ashley alive is the game. Uh, is the name of the game rather so what the runners are going to do is they're going to kind of progress through this in a similar way where they're going to trigger this catapult to rise early by shooting it through the screen here and when they do this the cutscenes are going to play and then they're going to kill a few specific enemies uh, that are otherwise going to cause problems later if they don't and then they're going to shoot a barrel right next to this catapult to blow it up the reason they do this is because they're going to take a couple risky lines to get through here without having to stop and do it normally if the game intends you to, which is to shoot all the catapults and break them. But they're going to want to do this in one swift motion, so they're going to kill all the enemies that would otherwise be in their way. And that's going to involve this enemy here on the bridge they're going to kill. And there's another one up here near the catapult they're going to shoot as well. And now what they're going to do is play risky and they're going to blow up the castle gate right away. And when you do this, uh, it's going to uh, essentially allow you to run straight to the gate, and if you tell Ashley to wait here, she shouldn't get hit. Now, Trey is actually playing it safe. He is doing it uh, a way where he uses the cannon to kill a couple Ganados and then blow up the gate so they're not blocking the way. Yeah, this part, the, on the return to the gate, it can get a little scary, especially with Ashley not too far behind. Sometimes she will get grabbed, and if she does get grabbed, I think it's normal for her to get grabbed here. Usually just throw a flash, and she's free. It looks like Spicy's having a little bit of a difficulty with Ashley coming behind, uh, making some flashes to go save oh, her. Oh, yeah. Because, uh, yeah, unfortunately, if you do not get Ashley out of here, you are not having a good time, and you're going to have to retry from the save. Or go right back to the village. So far, looks like she's okay. Trey making his way into the castle. Yeah, very lucky for Spicy that that Ganado actually brought Ashley to him uh, instead of going to the door. Yeah, that's, that's very, very lucky. So now they're here and they're buying a few more things, some resources. Uh, they're buying the uh, butterfly uh, magnum so that they can start getting magnum drops for it because they're going to need that later. And now Trey's doing a flashbang of this, this room before Water Hall. He's going to do a door clip here to skip everything you would need to do otherwise to get here, which involves a guard or a fight. And when you do this, you can just bring Ashley with you through the door and nothing else needs to really happen. So that this door clip here is one of the best uh, interactions we have with it, where it allows us to uh, skip a lot of the castle. But now the runners are both coming up on Water Hall. Oh boy, Water Hall. Yeah, hopefully it goes well for both runners here. A lot of things can go very wrong very quickly. Uh, and just hoping that Ashley doesn't get grabbed too much or doesn't get taken away. So, uh, yeah, if you want to explain the sequence here. Yeah, so basically what they're going to do is they're going to try to tell Ashley to wait up top a little bit so she doesn't get hit by the enemies that kind of swarm this area. And then you call her back down uh, once the enemies have passed. So what Trey's doing and what Spice will ultimately be doing is you have to get this valve. And then they're going to time a flash. And the purpose of this flash is to hopefully stun all the enemies long enough um, for them to, uh, ooh, good RNG on the Magnum drop ammo there. Oh, yeah. uh, this guy right here by this lever, uh, by this wheel, is actually going to grief Trey, so you have to shoot him, yeah, because otherwise he would hit you off of it. And that's just the first part of it. Now we have to get upstairs and do it again. This is where it gets really hectic because there's going to be people shooting arrows at us and a lot of enemies in the room. You really don't want Ashley to go down. If Ashley gets grabbed, that's fine because we're going to throw a flash two flashes here anyways to essentially break her out of it and stun the enemies in the room so we don't die. Yeah. Essentially, we just want to make sure that we can get to these wheels and turn them and finish the turns in time before the enemies be hit Leon out of the action. Let's go. Looks like Trey made his way out of the first part of Waterfall going into the uh, sniper scope section, headshot section, let's go. 
Um, and Spicy not too far behind. Honestly, this is... Again, I, I'm going to say it a lot that it's insane that these two runners are just... Yeah. Like, back okay. to back, like, yeah. not too far behind on the edge of each other's seats. No good. Yeah, this is really, really good from both runners. They both got through the first part of Water Hall just fine. Now they're going to... Essentially, the idea here is you have to, like, let Ashley turn these wheels so without her dying. Uh, so you'll see the runners use their pistol for a little bit of this because these enemies are slow and they're very scripted. Uh, so using the pistol to kill the first one saves you on sniper ammo, which you do need. Um, so you see them kill the first four, and then they're going to switch their sniper to kill the rest. Just to keep them away from her. Yeah, saving your uh, sniper ammo here is very, very... Like, your sniper ammo in this game is very valuable. You want to make sure you save as much as it as you can. So using that pistol ammo is very important. Uh, looks like keep coming. getting the runners. There are a few runners that can escape you from your shots, and it's very unfortunate when they escape your shots, but it looks like doing good on both ends here. Yeah, there's a set amount of enemies that you have to kill. Um, sometimes, rarely, you'll get one RNG enemy that will spawn near Ashley, uh, but otherwise, the ones that you saw Trey kill are the ones that you need to kill. Um, I don't think he got the one that spawns near her. Uh, I can't really tell. But yeah, she'll raise the bridge, and then you go across, and you basically call her down to follow you so she doesn't get grabbed, um, and you and you proceed to the next area. So Trey looks like he's getting through it just fine. Actually hasn't been grabbed yet or anything. Uh, crossing our fingers. Hold. Pause. All right, Trey is out of there, and Ashley shouldn't be too, too far behind, making her way. Same with Spicy. He is also out of there, giving Ashley a little bit of time to catch up. There she is. Very nice. Yeah, good job from both runners keeping that keeping that clean. That was actually a really clean water hole from both runners and no no big issues there. Um, and they got a lot, like it looks like they got the shotgun ammo and rifle ammo they need to proceed. So now that we're in castle, it's very important we discuss uh, the actual impact of RNG in this game. Uh, the runners and runs of this game just in general rely on item drops a lot. And these are not static for the most part. Shotgun and rifle ammo are two offenders of this where you kind of need those as best you can. The big thing you're going to see the runners need here later in the castle is heavy grenades. Very good and lucky RNG is to get uh, like two heavy grenade drops or three would be perfect, but it's very rare to get that. If they can get that, that makes the remainder of the run a lot easier for a strat for the double guard or a fight. So keep an eye out for that on both of these runners. They're, we're looking to hopefully see them get... Um, Hopefully at least two heavy nades and hopefully they don't get zero and if they do they have to go to the merchant to correct that If you see honestly when you're running this game and you see a heavy nade drop, it's like the best day. It's like Christmas <laughs> <laughs> You are screaming in excitement because you're like, oh, thank goodness I can continue and not have to worry as much, but you have to hope for a few of them Hopefully they flog us here The last flog us man here the Plays nice. Looks like very good on Trey's end. Hopefully, likewise on Spicy's end. Oh, almost decided oh. to run and very good. He did not run because sometimes those guys can run. It's very unfortunate because they do hold a public or not so much cookie, but an item that you require to proceed. So, very good yeah. on both ends. Very, very good from both runners here to get through that. Again, neck and neck. This is like, it, we're getting deeper and deeper into this run now, and it is still close. And it, it is crazy to see that. Um, both runners playing very, very well. Like, going into chapter eight, almost at the same point, 46 minutes into this run, and we're still seeing both of them not too far from each other. Last person I thought I'd Amazing. Run so. Going into chapter eight into the catapults uh, and the bridges and all that, and uh, hopefully the grenade shots play nice. Crossing our fingers, as you could like to elaborate. Yeah, so coming up on these catapult sections here towards the end of this chapter, there is a couple grenade tosses that will skip a large majority of the kind of roundabout pathing you have to take for the top of the castle and around the catapults um, that require throwing them through gates. Um, and well, actually, it's only one grenade toss now. Um, one of them is a pistol shot. So essentially, what you're going to see the runners do, uh, they're going to get past these plagas and go up there. But you're going to see, um, you're going to see them try to shoot through a gate to break one of the balls that keeps the gates locked early. 
and then uh, the other one they're going to try to throw a grenade through, which is really tricky. If you miss it, you're kind of on a timer because there are enemies all around you. So what you just saw Trey shoot is essentially what they're trying to break and skip early. So when he lowers this bridge, there's going to be about five, I believe, enemies, five or six enemies right here uh, that he's going to try to run through and avoid without getting hit, hopefully. All right, so what he's going to do here uh, is he's going to break the barrel and check for loot. He's going to hit the switch that's behind him. Uh, after shooting this, uh, this is safer to do it this way. There you go. spicy down there with the hit there, but thankfully recovering with that heal. Trey needing to do the grenade toss now, hopefully to get that gate open. Oz buffering to make sure he gets the exact shot he needs. And very, very nice gets that gate open. Nice, very Usually, well done. Uh, once you get that one grenade toss, you're you're a little bit more relaxed. You're like, all right, you know, we got through chapter eight a little a little nicely there. Trey, oh, very nice dodge, uh, crouch dodge from Trey right there. Yeah, these crouch dodges are so satisfying. They're so sick, I love it. <laughs> They're definitely not easy to pull up. It takes a lot of practice to even do them because when people told us that you could do that to dodge grabs, we actually thought they were just lying. And so more practice is put into it. You're like, okay, well, you can actually do that. Yes. Yep. Right, now this catapult's been made available to us. We're going to kill the Gigante on the wall. And then when you do that, we're going to kill these enemies that are sitting at the top, uh, kind of body blocking this door. We want them to go so that we don't have to shoot or waste ammo on them because this area coming up, we need to save our ammo for because we're going to have to deal with a lot of dogs and enemies. Adios. Now that is the end of chapter eight for both runners, or uh, chapter seven, right. eight. For traffic. I, I, it's hard to keep track, dude. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to keep up. But uh, going into, I believe, chapter nine now, um, getting uh, getting Sorry. Ashley back and going into guys. the maze. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Hopefully the maze plays nice and the dogs are not too brutal because the dogs can be quite grabby with to both Leon and Ashley. And uh, we need to be able to get through this section with Ashley safe and sound. Now, there are a few little bit of pinpoints where Can't Ashley can guy. get grabbed by the He's dogs and just, just hoping him. that doesn't happen for both runners here. Yeah, there's a very set route and very specific things you're going to do here. Like you'll see on Trey's end, he's going to shoot to collateral these dogs through this gate. Now this stops either of them from breaking through it and it lets us get around pretty free. There's going to be a dog that spawns directly in front of him here that he's going to snipe to preserve his shock and ammo. And he's going to kill another dog here through the gate so that it doesn't bother him later. And he's going to run in here and grab this chest set. Now this is all very static and very normal things that we do every time we come through here. Um... It's very important you kill these dogs or else they will get Ashley. And if they get Ashley and you try to shoot the dog off Ashley and you accidentally shoot her, speaking from experience, it is a bad time. Because uh, if you kill Ashley, you go right back to your last save. Now the whole idea here idea here is what they're trying to do is ra drop all three of these flags. When you do that, you can progress through into the next part of the castle. Um, so you kind of have to go through this maze uh to do so and there's certain things you have to do like this cage of three dogs you're gonna throw one of the grenades here to blow it up one dog is always gonna survive because it is a plogus dog so he's gonna turn and shoot it once and that should kill it nice yeah sometimes that dog cannot uh will not die on the one shot sometimes it's, it, 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 it can happen it's unfortunate when it does but after that trace is gonna be using the shotgun to clear that here, one dog so that way ashley hey. doesn't get uh, quote unquote owned, I guess you could say. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, setting up for the next round of um, castle dwellers, I, I guess you could call them. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the last part of the maze, which is the most butt clenching moment for runners, uh, hoping that Ashley doesn't get dragged away. Uh, uh, all right, so what you're going to see here is Trey's going to jump down and actually kill a few enemies. It looks like Trey's uh, doing slightly different strat. I guess that doesn't make too much of a difference, um, I suppose. But he actually is doing this. I think he's doing this to save his flash. 
Um, Spicy is doing this a different way, uh, where he's essentially hitting this trigger and letting the enemies run to Ashley. Uh, you cannot leave this area while Ashley is in the state where there's enemies kind of cornering her. So you either have to kill all the enemies or stun all the enemies and then leave. Um, so Spicy is going to let Ashley get grabbed intentionally. Trey killed the enemies, so he doesn't have to uh, do this same setup here. Uh, Ultimately, uh, what Spicy's trying to do here is he's waiting for her, uh, the enemies to carry Ashley around this corner. He can kind of see the icon go around, and when he sees that, he's going to throw a flash through this hole. It's going to stun all the enemies and allow him to just progress through the area. Hey, wait, Leon! It's nicely done to both runners there. They got through that area nice and nice and easily. Now we're hoping for heavy grenades. We are praying we see heavy nades. This is generally where you will see heavy nades drop more than likely. However, it is also very likely that they will not drop. Uh, so both runners here are hoping they don't, that they do get some heavy nades here. Trey doing uh, a little bit of a skip, not uh, just to mention that. Uh, basically, you use you can either use a flash or a grenade to toss into that little uh, that little balcony there, and that allows the cutscene to be skipped. That usually happens where a, a castle. Dwella, uh, will basically pull the lever and Stay take back. away the bridge. Okay. So that makes it super, super nice not having to do this section just by one grenade or a flash. Oh, weird Ooh, that the enemy just egoed Spicy's shot there, but he's going to yeah, run through. A little unlucky on Spicy's end there, but recovered just fine getting out of the goat head section. <clears throat> You're going to see Great here actually... Night. Oh, Trey also got two heavy nades, by the way, where Spicy oh, had only gotten one. Go. Uh, I think he just got a third, actually. So now he oh, actually he? has all of his heavy nades that he needs. That is incredibly lucky. I think he yeah. just got his third. Um, so these knights here, uh, the whole idea is you, you want to either parry them and kick them to get the uh, Plagas to be exposed. Um, actually, what he's doing is he's waiting for Ashley to throw a, uh, a lantern. So there's a few ways you can do this. The way Spicy will do it is he's going to wait for Knights to swing and parry. Ooh. The, the timings on this are very, very tight. Yeah. They're not easy. It, on Professional, there is a thing called Perfect Parry. So what Perfect Parry is means your, your timing is just a lot tighter to get the parries exactly. So yeah, this part can be a little scary, uh, specifically when you're trying to get those parries off. Yeah. The whole name of the game here, here, uh, here, essentially is expose the Plagas and and break it. Now the last one here, there's three knights, so you're gonna kind of wait for Asher to throw the the torch. And now if you kick, oh that one is so close on Trey's end. And now he's gonna throw a flash. A flash will kill all exposed Plagas instantly. So very well. That's actually a perfect knights by Trey. So nicely done by him. Spicy here finishing up his wave two. Or he's actually on his last wave here. He's gonna kick that one, and he's got his flash. He has to get away from that guy, or else he's gonna bop him. Trey getting out of there. Spicy not too far yeah. behind, ending out the Plagas Knight. Nighty night, Nighty night nice. nights. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you sure and now right? both burn, runners huh? making their way no, out thanks for your help. of the Plagas really and the making trick. their way to, I believe, uh, to the Ashley section. Yep, so there's one little piece of puzzle I have to get left with the little dinner puzzle, um, which is very fast. You basically tell Ashley it's to sit down the and then least you sit down. stressful puzzle in the entire game, I would, I would have to say. You basically just have to get Ashley to sit in one location while you sit in another. Uh, we get her to sit in a specific location, so that way we don't have to uh, travel as far. So grabbing that snake head and moving huh. on. The dining hall. Yeah, so right now you're going to see a, probably a shift in time again post Ashley section because, like I said, Trey got a lot of heavy nades. Spicy, from what I saw, did not. Um, so this is going to cause a bit of a, a rift, right? So Spicy has got to make the decision to either uh, risk that if he only has one heavy nade, he'll have to try to hopefully get a second one before the double guard or, or he'll have to go to the merchant. Um, and it gets stuff to get the recipe before them and use all of his gunpowder to make them because it costs a lot of gunpowder and large resources to make these heavy nades. Um, and they're very, very crucial to do double guard or fast. Um, so if he makes that decision to go do that, you'll see Trey definitely pull ahead as a result. And that's like, that's the crux of the RNG. That's kind of 
that's the game you're playing when you play RE4 Remake. It is the name of the game with Resident Evil 4 Remake. This game is very brutal with its RNG and the randomness that can happen, uh, which can make or break a runner, really. <laughs> Don't scare me like that. But with the Ashley Get section, out. if you know the uh, solution to... Oh, my... So what you're hearing there is a macro, so... <laughs> that was a noise. <laughs> yeah, so the runners have been using it the whole game, but there is a, a macro that was allowed for the community, which essentially allows you to press two buttons, uh, one emulating a controller interaction press, and one just being your normal keyboard F c confirmation. And you can hold them both down at the same time, and essentially it'll do an input on every frame. Uh, this is something they allowed to make certain things easier, like uh, sniper clipping and uh, interactions and stuff like that. So we as a community allowed it. Um, what it does to that clock, though, is very interesting. It actually breaks the clock and allows you to do the incorrect solution and it will let you pass through the clock. Um, so that's why you heard that and why it was so loud. Uh, on trays in here, you see all these knights hanging around. Uh, if you shine the, the uh, lantern at them, it will stun them. So the idea here is, is don't get touched. If you get touched, yeah. you die. Ashley is, uh, she's very fragile. Uh, so unfortunately, if you do get hit even once with Ashley, she will uh, die and you will have to retry from, uh, I guess, the, the last save or the last checkpoint, really. Uh, yep. And I don't believe there is a checkpoint for Ashley, so. Nope, not a single checkpoint in Pro, and the last save both runners made was when they first entered this part of the castle, so Ooh, it would be quite terrifying. a setback, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, hoping Ashley... Well, usually once you get through the first part with the knights there, it's pretty much home free from here. There is one last part with Ashley going up a set of stairs, which you'll see over on Trey's end coming up very soon, uh, where a knight can block your path and basically body block you. So changing FPS can help, uh, going down to 30 FPS can no, help you squeeze no, by that enemy very nicely. Uh, sometimes you don't need to, but for safety's sake, sometimes you have to. Uh, but if that knight body blocks you, it is just tragic because it will hit you and you will just have to, okay. you know, go back to the last Good save, night. especially with professional. Stay still. Yeah, definitely, definitely brutal, and we hope neither runner has to deal with that, so... Yeah, I'm crossing my fingers, because sometimes you, you, it just happens, and it's just unfortunate when it does, but hopefully, uh, you know, both runners get through it very smoothly. We're going to find out with Trey here in just a moment. No body blocks, please. Switching that frame rate to 30 FPS, just get that squeeze. And no problems on Trey's end. Very, very nice, going back to the 120 seeing how it goes here on Spicy's end now. Should be should be just fine. He's also doing the same with the 30 FPS to get that squeeze. And there he goes. And both runners out of there with no problems at all. Very nice. Yeah, at the Ashley section is very, uh, very, it's, it's one of the only consistent parts yeah. <laughs> of it's, this it's run. Nice and consistent for for the most part but you know things happen it's unfortunate when it does but again ashley section is generally pretty nice when it comes to the rest of the run <laughs> yeah absolutely now that is the end of chapter 11 uh, chapter 11 chapter 9 um chapter nine. uh now with this so what you're seeing uh trey do is he uh, doing some movement. Uh, oh, actually, I don't believe they're... Yeah, so Trey just did something very interesting. And I think Spicy might try to do it as well, where you are uh, moving during that loading screen. Uh, for some reason, during that loading screen, you can just move. Uh, and if you do it correctly, you can move all the way to the Novisador room, which is what Trey did and what Spicy did as Navigating well. Navigating to that door is a, it's, it's kind of crazy because you're, you're basically blind navigating through to that door. So getting to it without like bumping into things and getting straight to the door, very cool. And yeah. then dealing with some Novisadors. Oh boy, Novisadors. What can we really say that hasn't been said before about these guys? <laughs> they can be very nasty. They're not nice. And they do a lot of damage. Trey taking a hit there. That's okay. Has the heal to recover. Grabbing the gem here. 
because we will be they will be needing them for later on getting up the stairs we didn't really touch on the stairs they are doing a little bit of a uh, stair skate motion i suppose or a little bit of stair skate tech if you will uh it just allows you to get the stairs a little bit faster uh it's a little annoying to do but it's basically crouching and pressing uh shift right after back to back to back to back allowing for that quicker movement looks like trey is getting out of the nevisador room and still some moments spikes are getting hit as well Trey still has a moment that could mean anything and looks like Trey is out of there. Very nice. And I guess the flash, the flash does help a lot. It does stun the Nevisadors, so it makes it a little bit more consistent in getting out of there. Now going into double Gary. Yeah, so double, so double guard or what I believe the strat is, and unless the strat changed, which it could have, um, Essentially, what you're gonna see here is oh, looks like it looks like there is a no heavy nade strat they might be doing involving the Magnum here. Uh, potentially, I'm not 100 percent sure uh, what the it looks like the strat the, has the changed. Strat, the strat has changed for this fight many many times for uh, both standard and professional, using the sniper rifle to get the tendrils on the back, making sure to use the flash there, and then getting off more sniper shots to finalize that fight. Trey getting a little bit of a knockback there, that's okay. But it's it just just like that, the double Garys are both down on both sides. Just nothing went wrong for both of them. It, it's almost, again, perfect sync again with the insert of the horns there. Very nice. Yeah, Dude, so... this is insane. And now we're into the run. My <laughs> god. Yeah, it is crazy how close this is. And so the it looks like um, wh that strat they just did there uh, is a strat that is actually uh, the standard strat for yeah, yeah. doing the double guard doors. And I believe that was actually routed in because they no longer wanted to rely on heavy nade RNG, which is funny because Trey got the RNG, um, which the heavy nade strat involved throwing the heavy nades at them and killing them really fast uh, is technically faster. Uh, but yeah, I would also rather not rely on RNG. So kudos to both runners doing that perfectly. And now they're moving on to a little out of bounds clip that we have here in this bottom area. Very uh, simple. That involves just flicking your mouse and doing this little crawling prompt. What this does is it clips Leon through this for some reason. And it allows us to basically go around this entire uh, Nobis, uh dark room and get into the crown and get to... Uh, our, our good friend Rodrigo very easily. Yeah, uh, it basically allows us to go out of bounds to avoid these Navista doors that we generally have to deal with and makes it a lot smoother and utilizes a lot less ammo. Getting the crown, I love the little rise that Leon <laughs> does getting up on that ladder there. Um, but now that they're nicely both out of the Nevisador, uh, out of bounds, going in to Verdugo. Yeah, so there's a cool little tech that you're going to see here that kind of revolutionized this run even more than all the other ones. Uh, not, not more than the sniper clipping, but it's definitely simplified the routing for us here on Professional. Uh, so what the runners have been setting up for here is they're going to set their shotgun to storage because they need the space. And they're going to craft and combine some items, uh, including this crown, which is worth a lot of money when you use five different colors, which is 100,000. Uh, this allows us to buy the rocket launcher. And if you know anything about rocket launchers in Resident Evil games, is they're incredibly powerful. They're one-shot use, incredibly expensive on professional. 160,000 is what they cost. Um, but we have this cool tech that we call the infinite ammo, infinite rocket glitch. It has a lot of different names. Um, you're going to see the runners buy and sell a few items to set up their inventory correctly. Uh, it's a bit of shopping they have to do and a bit of upgrading. A lot of that is done yeah. right here at this guy, uh, at this so, merchant. To explain the tech that they're going to be doing here, which is basically turning the rocket launcher into an infinite, quote unquote, infinite ammo rocket launcher. Uh, it's a very difficult timing to do but it, it's not too too rough so essentially they're going to be using the uh the the what, what, what's it called again i can't remember for the life of me the freeze oh like the liquid <laughs> nitrogen yeah that's it there we go i'm tired i apologize 
uh, but they're going to be using the liquid nitrogen to u utilize the animation that happens when e uh, Leon gets hit by it to switch weapons very quickly and then going out and switching weapons again to basically get infinite rocket launcher uh, by basically when you switch the pistol, it will utilize the pistol's ammo. It's hard to explain because there's just a lot of weapon switching and then uh, going back to the pistol and getting that rocket launcher coming out and essentially making it an infinite rocket launcher. And you get to keep it after that, which is nice, which will be used later on. Yeah, it's a, it's a very useful tech as you see Spikes, he did it there. Uh, it's so valuable, however, it breaks really easily. If you do any animation, get put into anything, switch, touch, do anything, it will break the uh, the glitch and it will not work anymore. So it's valuable here because they're going to do it twice uh, with this rocket launcher and use the rocket launcher essentially three times to skip three very, very uh, annoying things, one being for Dugo there and then one being uh, a TNT wall at the end of this, uh, at the start of the next chapter, and then one for a double Higante fight. Yeah, I apologize if my explanation for it was not the best. It is, it is a little, it's, it's very quick to do, uh, but it's very, very cool to, like, just the fact that that was found is insane. Uh, both standard and professional use it, because that rocket launcher, like Zeke had said, is very, very valuable. Yeah, very nice, and that's that's the end of chapter 10. Uh, for Spicy and also for Trey as he comes here to this elevator and now we start Chapter 11 which used to be one of the hardest chapters because it involved doing uh, a kind of annoying double Higante fight as well as a very annoying uh, little mine shaft area that involved a Bella sister uh, a Salvador and a whole bunch of enemies, but now what you're gonna see is Spicy's gonna run up here and he's going to aggro uh, um, an enemy with a Molotov when you do this, he's going to throw it down on Spicy, and you can use fire the same way you used that nitrogen earlier to get the same animation glitch to give you the infinite rocket, and we need it to blow up the TNT wall there instead of normally going to get the TNT that we need. So he's going to run up here and aggro this fella, and if we're lucky, he throws it at him. Yeah, hopefully, because sometimes the Molotov can uh, not basically get thrown over there. Spicy getting that infinite rocket glitch, uh, glitch very nicely very quickly as well my goodness that was quite something right there but that basically bypasses that entire section allowing you to use the rocket well. launcher for that wall as sure well as for researcher. the double gigante fight I'm just an average guy who happens to be quite the trey, trey getting it as well very nicely done so Spike is going to start the Spike and shoot this rocket at the naked gigante to kill both of them if you try to just shoot the rocket right away it won't work and one of the Higa one of the gigantes will actually live um, and he's watching this end of this cutscene so that Luis uh, has a bad habit of getting stuck in these guys. So if you wait out that cutscene, he, he won't get stuck and he'll actually respond to your inputs there. So nicely done by Spicy. So Trey's going to do the same thing here. And there we go. And awesome. No problems. Looks like <laughs> Luis is out of there. No issues. Not getting stuck. It's very unfortunate when Luis decides to get Even stuck. He can get stuck actually in too. the Gigante and just yeah, kind of glitch out a little bit. Them. It's really unfortunate when See, it happens, but thankfully no issues for both of them. Inside ancient deposits of Ember. Yeah, definitely uh, very nicely done for both of them. And it's still very, very close here on this race. And what you're going to see here is Spicy and Trey are going to go up to this... Uh, the save station, which is also the item box, and uh, wait for Luis to get over here. Now, normally, it's a non-RTA friendly time save where you can reload a save here and force Luis into this cart early, but that does not make sense for a race, uh, a race RTA sense for the most part. Um, looks like Trey might be doing it anyways, because he doesn't, he's, he, he's about it. Hey, we're in a hurry, right? Oh, by the way, what now? Now, going into this minecart section here, it, it's, it's a, it's a bit of like the, it's the downtime of the run, but not the exactly. It, it's kind of the, I wish it was the downtime section of the run, but you still have to lean from right to left, depending on the turn. If you do not accurately turn the right way, uh, basically the minecart will go flying. So it, it's unfortunate that you have to actually still do some stuff, but at the end of the day, it's still 
technically the downtime of the run. Yeah, it's 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 you you wish it was actual downtime, right? Because you've been doing so much. Like the, this run is go 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 nonstop. It literally just never stops. It feels like so you're constantly doing something. And this long of a run and this difficult of a run, that's very exhausting. Uh, but you kind of have to still pay attention here, which is unfortunate. Yeah. And you do need to make sure that you shoot these uh, Gyarados here, because if you do not shoot the Gyarados, they will do damage to your minecart, because your minecart does take damage. And if you take too much damage, that will also cause you to die. So you definitely have to be a little bit on your feet here, but it's a little, it's, a, it's at least like you made it this far into the run and you can at least breathe a little bit. Yeah, definitely very nice. You don't have to worry about like any frame perfect strats or making sure enemies don't one shot you or anything like that. So definitely oh, a bit yeah. of breathing room here before they get to a more stressful parts of the game uh, like Clock Tower. So we'll be getting to there relatively shortly. Yeah, and we'll be dealing with the Salazar fight coming up very soon, which uh, that Previous shopping in the earliest or earlier chapters is going to come in very good use, and you'll see what we mean in just a little bit. But we're coming up to the first half of the minecart section. There are two parts to this section. Uh, again, not too much going on here. Not much to explain. But I, I'm just. This race has been absolutely insane with just how close they've been and just how volatile this run is altogether. Just seeing them both this it? neck and neck like hey, this Nox. is just amazing. That just like honestly, started. Trey and Spicy have put so many hours into this run together. Mm -hmm. It's just amazing to see a head to head like this. Yeah, absolutely. Uh Trey and Spicy longtime runners and competitors in RE in general, so it's um very impressive to see uh, them do this at such a high level. And it, it, like, this is no joke. You know, th this run is very hard. And, you know, speaking from experience doing hard runs, like you just saw me and Cap do the Madhouse run, that was also very hard. And doing runs of like this difficulty uh, that are this long is, is incredibly right. exhausting and it requires like a lot of patience. So, especially to be this close is just crazy still to me. So, very excited to see. Um, after the minecart section here, how they how they go about finishing off the run because they are approaching uh, the latter about thirty or twenty percent of the run. Yep. Yeah, this is where they dug up the bugs, by the way. <laughs> yeah, that's the meme, guys. This is where the bugs were dug up. Yep. <laughs> All right. So uh, over on Spicy's end here, he's gonna have to deal with this Sal uh, this Sorry. Salvador. <laughs> My brains will get a little cuckoo at this hour. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yes. Spicy's going to have to deal with this Salvador over on the end here. If he does not get rid of the Salvador early, it can cause a little bit of a problem. Not too much problem, but he can be a little bit of a headache if you don't get him early on. So shooting his minecart allows to make that damage and getting to him later, doing more damage to the minecart with an explosive barrel getting him basically out of the way. Yeah, there's a little bit of a tricky shot you'll see uh, Spicy try to go for here as he exits this tunnel. There's a little barrel up there. Nice first try. Very He's nice insane. Shot. That is a very hard shot to hit, by the way, uh, especially with how the guns can be in these games. They're not always exactly accurate, and so getting that shot first try like that was very, very impressive. Very nice. Yeah, That's now what that tricky. does... Get it on the same too, but go ahead. Yeah, what that does is you just saw Spicy kill the <laughs> the minecart in one shot. It just brings it basically down to one HP, so it lets you get rid of him. And then this whole rest of this is very relaxed. Now you don't have the Salvador to really worry about or deal with, so you can just kind of hang out and kill any enemies that show up. But you're pretty basically in the clear now until you reach the end of the section. Obviously, you have to shoot a couple hazards along the way, but for the most part, it's very chill. Very, very nice. Coming up to the end of the minecart section. And now it's more or less the downtime. The very, very slight downtime that you have <laughs> after doing all that shooting, all that turning. Uh, finally being like, all right, I can breathe, recollect my thoughts. Spicy doing a little bit of a, ah, please. 
get this my card section over with. That's all I can imagine he's saying right now. <laughs> yeah, you basically want this to be done so that you can go to uh, the end of the this chapter essentially. But there is a big, really condensed chunk of RNG in the form of the Krauser knife fight at the end of this chapter. Uh, there is a lot of RNG in his behavior and getting the uh, RNG super kicks, which is what we call them, which basically do a lot of damage and speeds up the fight tremendously. So uh, we'll see how the runners handle that. Hopefully runners get some the runners get some good RNG and we're hoping that uh, we have no issues. Yep. So this section here, we're also going to have to get Luis to travel not too far behind. Uh, Luis can get a little stuck, and by stuck, I mean busy shooting everything and anything. Yeah. So, going to be utilizing some flashes here to be able to get out of this part nice and smoothly with Luis not too far behind. Looks like... Oh, yep, he's oh, going to do like the... Looks like Spicy's going for the infinite flash uh, with... The similar to the infinite rocket, you can also do it with flashes. So you saw there that Spicy was able to get it no problem and is now just going to spam a bunch of flashes just to make sure Luis gets uh, gets behind not too far. <laughs> Hopefully, because sometimes you still get, get a little stuck, but so far so good. Yeah, very liberal with these flashes because you just don't want Luis to stop and start shooting and fighting stuff because it takes a long time for him to catch up. And you need him to move the elevator, so definitely a big pain. So yeah. Trey gonna do this as well. Trey getting there as well. Yep, he also got yep. the infinite very, flash glitch. Very nice. yeah, both runners getting that infinite flash is very, very important. And it's, that that also is not a hard. That, that is not an easy infinite uh, weapon you get or infinite weapon tech you can get it, I, I struggle with it real hard a lot of runners struggle with it so to see both of them get it without any problems super making it look super easy yeah and now you're about to see cool. spicy go into the carouser knife fights Carouser. basically yeah go ahead spicy switched his t repeated input type to hold if you do this it makes you swing the knife faster when you do the jabbing animation so Spicy's getting just unlucky Krauser behavior right now. So he's trying to get a kick here, and what we want is one of those kicks to do crazy damage. And now he's going to try to stagger him on repeat as much as he can. Another kick. This one was not a juice kick. So uh, he got the unlucky combo hit that Krauser is going to do here. And his knife broke, but he does have a backup here. Another. Oh, he got a super kick there. Oh, nice. That was a very nice kick. Sometimes your kick can do a lot of damage. So that, that is exactly what you want if you do do have to do a kick like that. Uh, so very nice fight. A little unfortunate at the beginning of the fight there, but uh, not too bad. Pretty nice super kick. Looks like Trey is going to be going in as well. A little bit of similar unluckiness uh, at the beginning here. You won't get away with this crowd. Yeah. You can get a juicer kick. If you swing too fast, Krauser will parry coming out of his stagger. Uh, now he's also doing the combo hit for Trey. Uh, hopefully Trey also gets a good kick here soon. That would be very helpful for him. Ooh. Yeah, getting getting those kicks are super nice RNG. Trey having a little bit of a time here with Krauser. Unfortunately, Krauser can be like this sometimes. It's just super unlucky RNG when it happens. But yeah, if you okay. if you get him to stagger, or oh, that was a super kick, and now he's dead. If you if you get him to stagger and you accidentally stab him instead of trying to kick him he'll instantly parry it and come out of the kick stagger so um unfortunately that happened to trade twice there but he's still able to clean up the fight not too bad uh and now both runners are going to make their way towards the clock tower in chapter 12. there's the clock oh tower. boy clock tower clock tower of despair uh yeah so this part is basically like climbing mount everest at this point you've already gone so far in the run but it's not over there's more chaos, there's more madness, and there's more ways that your run can just absolutely end very quickly. So basically, Spicy's gonna be making his way up these stairs. While he's doing so, he's gonna have a lot of enemies to deal with while making his way. So he's gonna have to try and dodge, shoot, and think on his feet, basically, to get up there. Thankfully, it's not too, too rough if they play nice, but sometimes there are some moments that can get a little difficult 
Yeah, getting up to the top here while maintaining your uh, your bulletproof vest durability is very important because you're going to want that for the island as much as you can. Uh, so getting to the top here, you're going to see the runners juke some enemies and use some flashes to get to the very top. And then they're going to do the elevator ride, which similar to the original is essentially keeping all the enemies off of the elevator as much as possible. So you can get to the top without it stopping. Yeah, and utilizing flashes here is very, very nice to be able to get by those uh, scythe enemies. They can get a little grabby. Spicy here is going to use the sky, uh, scope glitch just to kind of push himself into the railing there to allow that spike ball to pass by. It's really, really nice so you don't have to wait in a little cubby where enemies can still try and grab you. Spicy making his way onto the elevator now. Very nice. Hopefully the elevator doesn't stop all the way to the top. You never know. Yeah, so Spicy's going to be using a lot of the TMP in the sniper rifle here. Uh, and blowing up some of these barrels. The TMP is very helpful here because uh, it takes only a couple shots for an enemy to jump, and then if you shoot them midair with it, they will fall to their death instead of falling onto the elevator. So very valuable uh, the TMP here is, and it's going to be different from Trey, who does not have the TMP. He instead has the pistol, so he'll be mostly using the sniper rifle to deal with these enemies. I believe he did get uh, a decent amount of sniper ammo early on in the run, so that's going to be very helpful for this section. Mm -hmm. because... Having a good amount of ammo here is very important because if you if you run out, it's very very unfortunate. Oh yeah, especially with the sniper, it's very very handy to just get those headshots, pop pop, get them out of the way, so you don't have to deal with them. Because using your pistol here to shoot the enemies can take a lot. Uh, thankfully, Trey has a good amount of pistol ammo to deal with any enemies that decide to stray away. Uh, especially since he doesn't want to use all of his sniper ammo. He wants to be a little bit cautious with how much he uses here. Uh, same with Spicy as well, having to deal with the uh, Las Plagas, glorious Las Plagas! <laughs> Utilizing that TMP to get those enemies out from the air, very nice. He is just going ham over there. You just hear him swinging. <laughs> yeah, it, leaving these enemies up is like, you don't really have to do anything about them, but you have to be ready for the stun that can happen when they do this little chance. But uh, the runners are usually prepared for this, and they kind of set up their kills in a way that allow them to avoid it really hindering them. So uh, that's going to be the end of the elevator section for Spicy. With no stops on his elevator, so nicely done to him. Yep, making that way to the top. Climb the top of Mount Everest to claim his prize of uh, a boss fight. <laughs> yeah. Not too far behind, though, but we're going to be seeing some really cool stuff over with Spicy here, utilizing a golden egg. Yeah, you see Spicy's little stuff. shimmy. Yeah, yeah so if you shimmy cool. across this stuff. bridge, as long as you don't hold W for too long, it won't collapse. Um, so that's why he mashes W to kind of shimmy across it here. He's going to make a safety save just in case uh, for this fight here. Now this fight, uh, if you noticed earlier, we did uh, a little bit of shopping. We got some eggs because we're going to bake a cake for our good friend Salazar. Uh, so what you're going to see here is Spicy is going to break these barrels, get some stuff that he needs, and he's going to start this fight uh, with the sniper. He's going to do two sniper shots on Salazar here. Or sorry, one sniper shot. And he's gonna equip the golden egg and throw it. The golden egg does seventy-five percent of Salazar's health. It is. It's actually crazy that Capcom just put that in there. Uh, but yeah, it does a lot of damage. You can actually, there are two golden eggs you can utilize. But for the purpose of the run, the runners will only use one with a mix of sniper and well magnum shots, which very, very well executed over on Spicy's end. Hopefully the same happens with Trey in just a moment. Spicy did just get some unfortunate RNG in those boxes, though his ammo on a shotgun is okay, but he got all pesetas out of those boxes, which is what you don't want. You really want shotgun ammo as much as you can going into island, so... Here we go, Trey starting his cells right. He's going to start with the egg as opposed to the sniper, and he's going to bonk him right on the head with it. Go right in with the magnum shots right there, and hopefully Crosser. finish it off with... Where do you That's think it. There you go. Very, very, very well executed from both runners for that fight. It's not the hardest fight in the game, but you can miss that egg shot. 
it is so unfortunate when you miss that toss because for some reason it just doesn't want to hit Salazar's face and you just kind of have to go at it again from the save. Or if you didn't save, then that's just unfortunate. But <laughs> uh, thankfully, both the eggs hit for both runners here. Ooh, spicy getting past that knight right there. Yeah, these knights down here are a pro specific. So uh, on other categories or other difficulties, those knights are not down there camping like that. So it's always kind of spooky sometimes when you switch between the two and you're like, oh, right, there's some guys down here. Yeah, I, uh, I, I was a little surprised by them as well. Uh, but now chapter 13, Island Boys coming in real hot. Uh, they are... <laughs> They are their own sort of chaos from Castle. If you want to explain the uh, turret skip we're going to be seeing very soon. Yeah, so you'll see these uh, little red laser turrets right here on Spicy's left. If you run into this laser, they are a one-shot kill to anything they shoot. Uh, but they can only shoot one thing at a time. So what you're going to see here, is Spicy's going to disarm this one or rather turn it away so he can go past it because you kind of have to for this one. But there is going to be one more that is blocking the store up here now. What the game wants you to do is run around and disarm two turrets and then run through. And it takes a while, like a minute to do it. But what Spicy is going to do is he's instead going to line up a grenade toss here on this archer. And now if he does this correctly, the archer will get knocked into the line of fire. Oh, the archer did not get knocked all the way in. So what he's going to instead try to do here is bait. Oh, that's the worst RNG with that JJ. So he's going to have to reload the save. Um... It's really tragic that it's about a minute time loss when it happens uh, if you don't yep. hit that grenade throw. So um, that is a bit of an equalizer. Now the runners are kind of neck and neck. Uh, they were pretty close already to begin with, but now they're even closer. Um, missing that grenade toss uh, is unfortunate. You have to do a little bit of a lineup, but ideally you want that archer to get flown into that line of fire so you can run past it while it's shooting him. Yep. I just want to note, because chat mentioned it, and we totally missed it, but apparently Trey just pulled out the juggling act. Trey does do some juggling from time to time. He is known to do that during his runs. We love him for it. He's quite the clown. <laughs> Trey <laughs> is awesome. He's great. Trey hits the grenade toss, and I was going to shoot the weapon on this JJ's arm to disable him. Nice, and he gets through the turret skip first try. Okay, Spicy gets it here on the second try. Nicely done to both runners there. Uh, yeah, Trey is a uh, fun fact about Seven Ray D is he uh, actually worked in a circus. He was a clown. Yeah. He, he that was, was something he did. Professional clown doing professional as and he is a clown. <laughs> so yeah, you'll see him from time to time pull out the juggling act, pull out some kind of circus performance during his runs. It's, it's always really fun. Good, uh, it's good showmanship in a way. I mean, a slight flex, but uh, carrying on to the next section, both runners again back at it with the neck to neck uh, how, uh, race here. Getting to yeah, the door. This is where they're keeping Ashley. Very, very close. And uh, Island goes, Island is the fastest part of the game. It is the section that goes by the quickest because so much happens so fast. Because uh, now that we're past those turret skips, which, trust me, that will not be the last turret skip we do. We have a significantly harder one later um, that you'll see. But those uh, that those have passed, we're getting closer to the labs now. We're going to be introduced to the regenerators and whatnot. So you're going to see uh, Trey running here and pull this lever to unlock a door down below. Or rather, hit a button, sorry. Uh, and then he's going to try to do... Remember the Larry skip we did in Chapter 1? He's going to try to do that exact same thing here to clip himself down to the bottom level here he's gonna clip in hit this and slide right down yeah, to the bottom very very nice basically that just allows you so you don't have to go down the ladder or the stairs there it's not a ton of time save it's 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 mostly a minor time save but it's really really like satisfying when you get it <laughs> yeah yeah see spicy getting it through there first try nice job to both Ooh. the runners big spin from bull boy down there All right, we're gonna see how the labs go here for both our runners because labs are also, again, like this run is just nonstop. It is just go, go, go. Everything's just coming at you. So with labs coming up here, we're gonna see how the regenerators act and all of that. Another safety save by the runners here, very smart. 
to avoid any sort of shenanigans because you don't want shenanigans. Yep. You definitely don't. Uh, you definitely don't want to risk it here because there is a high possibility of dying here or just things just not going correct. Uh, so taking that safety save is very, very important. Even in a casual, like if you're just like speed running this game, naturally, like it's, a, you know, it's no, it doesn't hurt to take that save. But for a marathon setting, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. So what you're going to see here is Trey's going to do this puzzle and going to get this key card. Now, this first regenerator, we kind of bully him around a little bit. So Trey's going to get this key card. He's going to run out and he's going to uh, shoot the leg off this guy. Or he's going to do a little uh, run around him uh, instead to dodge him. Oh, he's going to shoot him on the way back. Um, we're basically avoiding him so we can go in here and re-hit this lever to unlock the door we need later. Spicy shooting his leg early. So kind of a variance in runners. So what Trey's going to do is actually shoot him in the doorway here. It does block a little bit, but he's able to get through it. I think Trey did that on purpose to save his shotgun ammo because he is running low. Um, yeah. So that makes sense. Oh yeah, for sure. You, you are going to be needing a lot of shotgun ammo in this section and, and not uh, like a ton by any means, but you are going to be needing it, uh, especially for a later section in the labs here. The regenerators, uh, just a note, are not pleasant at all when they decide to come at you. They hit hard and they do a ton of damage. Trey over here doing the sniper scope glitch to back himself into a wall. So the regenerator basically AFKs and just leaves him alone. Spicy doing a similar thing. Wow, this is just so crazy to see both runners just backed into a wall, waiting for the timer to run on that card because they are going to have to get uh, higher levels for the card. So, well, we're just going to wait here while the runners get that card. Trey getting his card, dodging the regen. Very nice. Spicy going to be doing the same in just a moment. And getting the dodge as well. Very nice from both runners making their way into the next section. Ooh, had Trey. Little, yeah, had to do a little bit of a dodge there. Yeah, that regenerator kind of was acting crazy. Whereas for Spicy, the regenerator didn't even make an appearance. So a nice little change from between each runner there. Trey had to deal with one, whereas Spicy didn't. But this next room is, uh, they're going to essentially throw a flash down here to disable the enemies in this room so that we can go into the next one and execute uh, one of the ones near the glass, which is this fella right here. Uh, what the runners have to do is go and get a biosensor scope, which essentially gives them infrared on their sniper, and they need to kill the regenerator that has the wrench inside of it. So uh, when they do this, um, it's going to trigger kind of like a little bit of like an enemy swarm sequence, um, and how the runners handle this will change uh, depending on how they feel comfortable doing it. Uh, yeah. So clipping into the wall is an option to avoid the enemies, but you run the risk of getting blown up by a uh, pipe bomb because there are enemies that will be throwing those around here. So, right. Oh! Oh, that was a little spooky. That's okay. Sometimes the regenerators there can get a little uh, spicy. <laughs> Getting that one last Plagas there. Very nice. Spicy playing it very smart. You saw him move instead of shooting earlier. That's because the bullet will pierce these guys and break open the other, uh, the other uh, regenerator capsules. I guess if you want to call them that. So Spicy gonna try to do the clip here, just what Trey is doing as well. If done incorrectly, you can die very easily to pipe bombs. Yeah, just waiting it out right now because you're waiting for that timer yet again on the card. Trey getting his card and exiting out of the last part here. Ooh, get, oh, get oh. that pipe up. Okay. All right, nice. Whew. Gets a little spooky there. Spicy getting his card as well. Very, very uh, well done from both runners here. This area can be very spooky. And they're still very close uh, to one another, which is very, very awesome. You actually couldn't ask for a better final run of the RE Relay than this right here, where two runners are so incredibly close uh, on such a volatile game. So I'm excited to see who ends up uh, pulling it here, because this game is timed via in-game time. So I'm excited to see uh, how, it, uh, how it looks here at the end. All right. 
Now we have Ashley here again for not for very long though. Going into chapter 14, doing another sniper boost? scope glitch past that door. Going to be doing another one right after this. Got it's back to back West sniper gl scope You'll glitches here. Street. Going through the doors to basically skip a crane section you would have to do. So being able to do this sniper scope glitch allows us to get past that, saving ammo and making our way right through and not having to worry too, too much. Makes it a lot more of a breeze because that crane section can be quite a headache. <laughs> yeah, this was this was like the first big application found of the sniper scope, which is like the very first actual skip that was used for it. And it is such a blessing. Yeah, making sure to open that door because if you don't open that door, Ashley will just kind of sit there. She won't because she will not come behind. She she doesn't know how to do the sniper scope glitch yet. You know, she's <laughs> not trained. She's not military trained. They use this only in the military. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, with these sniper scope glitches, sometimes you still have to open them for Ashley, or else she, yeah, she just she's a little confused. We work well together, don't we? Yep. Just a little bit, but that's okay. We got her with us. But she's got to tell us how much she, you know, maybe she can join. What do you think? I could protect the U.S. from any and all... On train screen there, what is Ashley? She's, like, looking up at the sky, like... She's got other places going. She's up in space right now. Is she okay? All right. Now we're coming up on the Krauser boss fight. And this is a very interesting fight. This has been developed a lot over the few months that this game has been out. So um, as to what specific strat the runners are going to be doing, I I'll be able to tell as soon as they start. But um, we both, we do know that at the very start, uh, the runners will be watching a cutscene. Now, whether I it is definitely not RTA friendly, uh, actually, considering what you save, it's arguably RTA friendly. Um, because you can watch the first uh, Krauser cutscene up to a certain point, which will cause Krauser to kind of fall out of bounds um, and let you skip the whole first phase. So we'll see if the runners do that. Yeah. I believe they're probably both going to be going for it because it does make this part a lot nicer to deal with, uh, especially with Krauser and how much of a pain he can be here. So that cutscene ultimately saves a headache. <laughs> um... And yeah, so we get to listen to a little bit of Krauser here. And again, both runners just to be, oh, let us know when right made some behind room. each other, Start right at the same yourself. point, same time, merchant saving at the same time. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's, that that sync up was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> this is so freaking cool, dude. Spicy's merchant was so fast that he was able to pull back time there and just sync each other back up. That's kind of crazy. Now... Uh, they're both going to start the fight here. They're going to throw a grenade down there. This is going to blow up some traps and a couple things that Krauser has down there uh, so that we can avoid them. So yeah, they're going to sit here and watch this cutscene for just about a minute um, so they can get that little phase one glitch. Mm, that's just like you. You always had poor judgment. <laughs> You're you unadulterated power. I love this cutscene. <laughs> Yeah, this cutscene has some bangers in terms of uh, one-liners and quotes. Um, this is actually a relatively, I would say recent, but not, not super recent, but one of the later finds in the run is waiting until uh, a certain dialogue line to make Krauser glitch out. Hold that thought. Trey is doing the juggling again. Sorry, we're on a little bit delay from stream. We don't see the cams until until basically you guys do. So we're, we get a little late on that. Trey back at it with the juggling. And waiting for this cutscene to go jungle. by uh, uh, because yeah, it is a little bit of a delay. It's about a, it, like we said, it's about a minute, so you do have to wait for a, for a little bit. So anyway, the runners can pre like, preoccupy their time. Los Illuminados have given me that. <laughs> you know, you were always an asshole. <laughs> yeah, you see, Trey's got all the props, everything that he needs to to prove he is a he is a clown. Not like I have a choice. All right, Trey, getting out of that cutscene now. What's wrong? So basically what, what happens so here is uh, Krauser tries to follow you when you come up here, but instead he falls. Normally you're not supposed to be able to do this, because Krauser would be shooting you off of this little wheel, but instead he fell down. So now you can just do it for free. Yep, it makes this part super smooth to get through instead of having to deal with Krauser on this first part here. He does sort of flash. 
still, even though he's nowhere in sight, he still throws that flash. Go with your gut, don't think. Go with your gut, don't think. <laughs> I like quoting games way too much for my own good. <laughs> it is some pretty iconic quotes for this game. Oh, yeah. So yeah, right here. He's having to shoot uh, some... Oh, they're just going right past those uh, bear traps there, which is... I I didn't even know you could go past there. I, I, That's know? what the uh, the grenade at the beginning that they threw got rid of. Ah, it blew up true. the bear traps and the That's lasers. What that was. Yes, 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 yes. Sorry. I'm more of a standard runner myself, but I am fascinated with mm -hmm. professional. Yeah, not to mention that Krauser also steps in one of them and gets rid of them. So it's kind of funny uh, the way that little cutscene glitch works is he, uh, he'll trigger one of his own bear traps. So very precise dodging here that the runner's going to have to do to get to Krauser without taking a hit. Little crouch dodge in there, very nice, very nice. Looks like Trey's been through there without any problems. Same with Spicy, going into the Krauser fight now. So what he's gonna do is he's gonna wait for this right to start. He's gonna shoot him a few times with the Killer Seven in the arm, and what this does is speeds up this fight tremendously because it allows you to shoot him once with the pistol, which does a crazy amount of damage when he hits the ground for some reason, and it lets you phase this fight instantly. So that's yeah, your true loves power. you to get through that very, very nicely. Oh, and now both runners making their way to the okay, second, or the last part of the Krauser eyes. fight, his mutated form, which can be quite interesting. I'm not 100% uh, up to date on the uh, professional strat for this, so Zeke, if you'd like yeah. to take it away. So they're going to use the Killer 7 for this. So basically, uh, they're going to skip this cutscene as fast as they can so that the hitbox for Krauser's uh, dive attack is broken. So they're going to essentially stagger him and kick him a few times. So he's going to shoot three times, he said, give him a kick, and then do it again. Now they're going to have to react uh, to Krauser based on what he does here. So if you juke that, grab, you should be able to stagger him once more. And just like that, Trey with a perfect Krauser fight. That was, that was very clean. Very, very impressive coming from Trey over there. Spicy not too far behind, finishing out the fight. Very, very nice from both runners. Yeah, there's a little bit of RNG in what Krause can do. So Krause went for a grab on Trey, which is the good RNG. And then he went for something else on Spicy, which caused him to jump. Because um, Spicy couldn't punish it correctly. Uh, which ultimately uh, still saves some time uh, for both runners. Uh, good fights. No one, You didn't take a hit. You didn't get grabbed. So that's really very important. And now... We're approaching uh, chapter 15, which is one of the scarier sections uh, oh in terms of chapter remaining tech. 15. Yeah, there's going to be a lot going on here. Similar, they're going to be using the uh, basically a glitch to get past some lasers here. But first, they're going to make a little save just to make this upcoming section. And they're going to be reloading the save to shoot an enemy. Basically, if you don't reload the save here, an enemy won't appear. So they reload the save to get this guy to show up shoot him in the head and then so that way they can move on and Mike starts shooting early yeah so this is another kill based section where I think it's 16 or 17 enemies need to die before Mike will blow up the barricade so setting that to start earlier it definitely saves some time and they're gonna get in position to throw some grenades to help clear out the enemies as fast as possible Sorry. and you want to be in line of sight of Mike here so you don't get the cutscene uh, yeah. that would otherwise make you lose time. Now they're just gonna have to wait for some enemies to appear. Again, kill base. So just kind of waiting for enemies to appear, shooting them down while they come. And kind of just waiting it out. This part isn't too, too difficult. It's mostly just kill, kill enemies as they come out. They shouldn't be any threat to you for the most part. This is probably the, the easier part of chapter 15 mm -hmm. <laughs> compared to the rest of it, so. Yeah, it looks like Trey hit his kill counter really early, just right on time, and now he's going to wait for Mike to blow this up. Now that he's done this, uh, we're going to use heavy nades to blow up the uh, ant the artillery turret that Mike can't progress to because you would otherwise need to climb to the top of the tower and get on a turret and blow it up that way. But with heavy grenades, you can actually just throw two of them from down below and it'll blow it up instantly. Um, so that's what you're going to see Trey do here as he climbs this ladder. Now, I'm not too sure. It looks like Spicy is a little low on heavy nades here. I'm not 100%. I could be wrong. I'm not sure what his light grenades are like right now. Uh, oh, getting oh. a grab there. 
Switching his uh, thing back to Tapper pretty so he can break out faster. He does have at least one heavy nade, which is all you need. You need one heavy nade and one regular nade in order to break it. Uh, so he has one of each, so he cannot miss. Yeah, there is no missing here from Spicy. Hoping the best for him. Trey getting into War Room now, if you want to explain and uh, <laughs> explain the chaos that is War Room. Yeah, so Trey's going to go up to this left side here first. Now, he's going to utilize Flashes and his really nice Bulletproof Vest to basically hit these two levers without dying. We really, really want to avoid getting beamed by this rocket and owned by the enemies uh, that are around here. So Trey's going to jump over this ledge and get to the other side, and that's when he'll start using Flashes to kind of stun all the enemies in the area to make it safer to progress through here, because there's a lot going on here. This flash up top is gonna stun all the enemies at the top of this ladder, so he can go hit the next switch. Looks like Spicy got into War Room just now as well. Looks like he tossed those nades and got those shots. Very nice, Spicy. Looks like Trey now exiting War Room, and he's gonna set up for what is called the Duffel Bag Glitch. Um, I'm going to explain the setup for it, and I will not explain the actual skip of what it's going to do because I'm going to let you see it and appreciate it yourself. Uh, so Trey's going to kind of do a little clip into the wall here, and then he's going to spin. And when he does that, he's going to make a save while he's out of bounds, and that's going to let him load in out of bounds. He's going to do a little bit of a lineup and an FPS change. <clears throat> And this is just for consistency reasons to get the skip to work. And once he gets this, uh, you'll see the the fruits of this at the very end of the chapter. So um, we'll, we'll hopefully see if that works for him. So he's going to fall for X amount of time here, and then he'll get back to the top and proceed as normal. Oh, Spicy getting shot here in War Room. Hopefully he can get out. He still has a bit of his bulletproof vest oh, left. Looks like he's getting out with very, very little amount of the... Uh, armor there, but also spicy setting up for the uh, for the double bag glitch. Trey getting over to Mike. Uh, F in the chat for Mike now. <laughs> I'll make sure you're the There's spicy here doing the clip as well. Uh, it's kind of finicky. You have to get the clip pretty fast to save really fast, or else you won't get the clip out of bounds. So uh, you have to do a very fast flick to get that save off, so you can go out of bounds just like so get to the 30 fps and then fall the? into the void uh, it's very it is not an easy glitch to do on professional but looks like spicy has it set up now though trey making his way he's using the uh scope glitch yet again to go through these doors without having to spin the wheel if you will yes a little bit of time here which is very nice so Trey's going to make a save here. You only get one chance to do this uh, turret skip he's about to do. So what you're going to see Trey do here is uh, we're going to run and get around from these Novies. He might shoot a couple of them to get them away from him so he doesn't take a hit. Um, but essentially what's going to happen is he's going to kill a guy with an RPG that's going to be camping up on the ledge above him. And after he does this... He's going to go and throw a flash to stun the enemies in the area. Except for one guy, he needs to jump out of a window. Now, what Trey's going to do is he's going to shoot this enemy in the foot with the shotgun to push him towards that laser uh, turret over there. And if he does this correctly, he should be able to get a turret skip doing it and get around it, hopefully, Whoa. without dying. Nice. Very, very nice going from Trey. Hopefully, the same is, uh, you know, hopefully, the same goes for Spicy in just a moment. But Trey getting out of there very clean, very nicely, making his way to Ashley. Ashley. And you are now about to witness the duffel bag glitch in Ultimate Glory. Hopefully it worked out. Crossing our fingers. It's pretty consistent now, but let's see. Ashley. Hey, he's good. Hey, there it is. Hey, there it is. So yeah, you, nice. you can see him holding Ashley kind of like a duffel bag. Now, this is a glitch that we don't really know what causes it, I don't think. But essentially, it, it you, you get to maintain your walking speed instead of the really, really crawled slowdown speed you would get you normally get through here. Also, you see Trey doing some pause buffering to skip the stagger animations that happen when you would otherwise be carrying Ashley through here. So we get to really just resume right through this area. Spicy also getting Ooh, turret skip spicy first try. getting out of there first try. Both no. runners getting through that room very clean. God, Honestly, that, that that is not an easy room to deal with. So they got through, through there very nicely. 
And hopefully Spicy got the setup for the duffel bag as well. Should have. It, sh it should be fairly consistent. Trey reaching the end of the duffel bag section. If they didn't use this duffel bag glitch, it would take eons to get through here because naturally you'd have to carry Ashley in your arms, which makes Leon a lot slower. Yeah, but looking looking good there. That is the end of chapter 15 for Trey. And now chapter 16 is a very short one. Uh, and it's he's not quite out of the woods yet. There is one very crucial infinite rocket launcher glitch that he has to do in order to do... Uh, if either of them messes up, this could actually change who wins this. Because uh, there's one more slightly difficult infinite rocket glitch you have to do for Sadler. Because um, you want to be able to rocket his first phase and his second phase. So we're going to see as Trey approaches it if, he, if he's able to do it successfully. It's going to involve having to shoot a barrel. And you have a limited amount of time to do the glitch on the fire on the ground. Because it will despawn after like 5 seconds. And if you don't get it, you have to retry it. Um, or do the fight normally, which loses about 45 seconds. Yeah. Are you sure you're okay? Now Spicy reaching uh, into chapter 16. Good. Trey having a little bit of the lead here, but honestly, both runners have been putting in so much good work throughout this race. It's been so close all the right? way to the very end, oh, which is sure she's fine. super rare she's for Resnual Forerunners to just get very similar actions doing, you know, just showing pure skill here. They are professionals. <laughs> yeah, professionals running professional, and like we mentioned before, they've been close this entire run. We are now at the end of the game, and there's like a 30-second discrepancy here. This is not normal. This is not supposed to happen. So it is crazy that they kept it this close. It's actually, like, insane. This has been by far the most consistently close race we've seen so far. Um, and it is it is very, very impressive from both runners. So um, what you're going to see here is Trey's going to sell some stuff so that he can buy his rocket launcher. Now, he needs to make sure he has some sniper ammo, too, which he does. Uh, you need to have at least some in your bags to do the infinite glitch. So he's going to go... Do the Sadler fight now. We're crossing our fingers that he gets this first try. Yep. Crossing our fingers. This is not uh, not all too, too easy, but looks like... I think he got it there. He got it. Very, very nice. Trey is out of there. Moving into the second phase of the fight, which using the rocket launcher yet again because it didn't snap. he turned it into an infinite rocket launcher. So he was able to use it twice. Now making his way to the jet ski, closing out the run very, very soon. Hey, and Spicy yeah. looking to set up for the fight as well, making that safety save just in case, because you never know. Trey also making another one, but for the jet ski, because you yeah. never know. <laughs> you never know with the jet ski. You hit one thing, you're out of We're there. Out of it is not a fun time. Uh, so hopefully that pans out well for Trey here. Looks spicy like getting spicy. his yeah first try yep. as well first try as well holy cow this is crazy just both runners just so so great um now making the way over to the jet ski to close out this run close out the finale of the resident evil relay event this has been such a jam-packed event i've been so happy to be a part of it uh so yeah Hopefully yeah. nothing happens on the jet, just the jet ski part here. Yeah, hopefully we have an accident-free jet ski uh, here at the very end of the game. These runners have put on a great show. They've done an amazing job showcasing this game, uh, as have all the runners with the RE Relay. So it's been a very exciting weekend. Um, so excited to see as the runners end here and see what their end uh, in-game times are uh, so we can see who, uh, who won the race. But yeah, very close all the way through. It was so close that, that it's hard to tell, like... IGT they wise, who was in ahead? Sync so many times, like on and off, they were in sync here and there. Just being this far into the run and both having very similar, almost probably almost very similar times here, it, it's just a, amazing in itself. So big GGs in the chat for both Seven Ray D and Spicy here. Yeah, time will happen as the final cutscene ends, uh, starts rather, as they go over the very last jump. Um, so it'll be pretty close to each other because they're just uh, not too far away from each other. They're about, I'd say about 25 seconds separated. That timer at the top is not accurate. It's not an actual second. So um, they're probably more like 20 to 25 seconds separated from each other here. Which 
for Resident Evil 4 Remake is still quite amazing. There oh, yeah. A few things here and there near the end, but honestly, just still very impressive. Yeah, and actually, time. such a great run. Time's going to be coming up on 7 or 8D in just a moment, and time. All right. Great very, job to very, Trey. Very, very impressive from Trey. Congratulations to Trey on that win. And Spicy, not too far. He's about to be coming up on time as well. We see that exit right there in sight. Package secured on, uh, on making it all the way through. Congrats to both runners. Yeah, what a what a impressive Hi. showing, and it's time for Spicy guys. They were so close the whole way, man. Like you guys were so, like, good job to both of you, but you were neck and neck the whole time. Like <laughs> you were, you had no business being that close the whole yeah, time. Yeah, you guys were literally so in sync so often. It was crazy. Yeah, yeah. That's I actually PB. Fun funny moments. enough. <laughs> you PB. You PB. Are you yeah, PB? Yo, let's go. <laughs> oh, Big congrats to the chat for Trey getting that PB as well. Holy. Can't believe you got a that was, that was me so much safety race, stuff, saving PB. all over, losing, you said about time, just safety stuff, but yeah. It's kind of funny. Those are such a two, two PBs back to back the last two races. That's so hype. Oh, wait, what was your idea, Tetra? 147, 23. Let's see what we got yeah. here for both. Let's we'll see what Let's we got. Forty nine twenty four. Wow, what a what a run. That was that was, that was Yeah. So, that, was that was so fun to watch. <laughs> and there we have it. Uh the win goes to uh Team Umbrella on that one. GG's all around. Uh Wild Race. Uh, right. Oh yeah. Uh, that was that was a lot of fun. There was, I had some questionable uh, RNG in the second half of the game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just yeah. didn't have, a, dude. I just didn't have a heavy nade for the mic section. I didn't so, get a heavy nade. I had no resources. I was so spicy poor. for the run. Uh, thoughts? Uh, how do you how do you feel about it? I messed up seven hit in the beginning because I broke out of the grab too fast. So that was on me. I was, was like hundred percent just a skill issue. I just did too fast. So I was playing from like forty seconds behind off the start, which was rough because I I had chat up and I saw Trey got it. I knew I was playing from behind, but like I had a feeling I'd catch up in Castle, and I think I did. But then the second half of the game, the game just did not want to give me anything. I was so poor. It was rough. The only thing I had good RNG second half was Crowser Knife Fight. I actually had a crazy Crowser Knife Fight, but uh, it's already for I had the exact opposite uh, yeah. issue. I was like, I had the issue of having too much stuff because I like everything went too smoothly. So every time I was you picking something, my inventory just. PB. <laughs> yeah, just the inventory was constantly open because, like, just too much stuff. Well, you did good, though, Spicy. And as well, if anyone did want to watch you do more RE4, where can they find you? Uh, you can find me at twitch.tv slash spicy, same as the, the name on the screen. I'm actually going to be grinding for record in this for the rest of this month, so find me over there. Grinding oh, this. best of luck on that one, dude. Big cheers there. Uh, as well, going over to the other side for Team Umbrella, we have Seven Ray D, who uh, not only uh, won the round here, but also got a PB. It, it just the nerves to get a PB during a live anything is always just wild. So, uh, how do you feel about the run? The run was like surprisingly good. I was like constantly was, like, no way this is going right. No way this is going right. Why do I have so much stuff constantly in my inventory? <laughs> what is happening in this run? But uh, yeah, again, if I didn't have to do all that safety stuff, I wonder how much, what a PB this would have been. But yeah, uh, well, clearly oh, yeah, you got to beat it true. again. Yeah, yeah, also, I'll, I'll probably uh, be trying before Remnant Two comes out because that's probably gonna be the next thing I'll be doing. Yeah. Also appreciate the 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 slight juggling here and there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was try to squeeze in uh, a little bit. A little bit, yeah. Uh, as well, if anyone did want to find you, uh, where can they find you, Seven Ray? Uh, you can find me pretty much on all socials on twitch.tv slash Seven Ray on YouTube, seven, same thing, Seven Ray on Twitter, basically everywhere. Um, I've not been streaming too much this month, but uh, I'll probably be running a little bit more RE4R since I kind of went through the effort of de rusting a lot of this run. 
And uh, apparently I can PB on a, a lot of safety strats, so why not try again without the safety stuff? All right. Uh, as well, I do want to say thank you once again, not only to our runners, but also our commentators. Uh, we were welcomed by Captain Ezekiel and Catlink. Yeah, it was no a, a joy to a joy to commentate that and just to watch in general. The, this uh, amazing from both ends, and also just thank you for uh, letting me commentate on that. It's also been a super fun time hosting. But Zeke, you can also say yeah. stuff too. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's a super great run. Honestly, uh, not surprised Train Spicy put on a good show. I was very happy to be here and happy to commentate the runs that I have and be able to do the run myself. So, yeah, great times. Thank you. All right. Uh, before we do go, I do want to say once again, if you want to check out our amazing runners, uh, you can find them either at twitch.tv slash spicy or at 7 Ray D. Uh, both for our RE4 Pro runners. Uh, big round of applause once again, uh, not only to them, but to our commentators. And thank you all for watching. Uh, that wraps up our Resident Evil Relay. We do end the night with Umbrella at 8 and Stars at 3. Uh, some of the RNG during this run, uh, Marathon was absolutely wild, but it was a fun show all the way around, and it was fun being able to just put together this show. Um, oh yeah, it was a it was a blast to just uh, put it all together and then see it all all come all to come together at the end here. Uh, very unfortunate on Stars End with the RNG, but at the end of the day, it's a, it was mostly you know just here to have fun and you know see people do what they get what they do best. Absolutely. Uh, as well, we've been going for about two days now. I'm getting a bit tired. Uh, I am tired so we too. have been going <laughs> quite long. Uh, once again, in case you missed it, uh, I am one of your hosts. I am McDysis. I plan a lot of things for GDU Horror stuff. Uh, you can find me on a show called Speedruns in the Crypt and my own various... Uh, you can look at the name down there. I'm all around over there. I talk about how I run the shows here. Uh, and yeah, come check me out for horror stuff. And as well, I've joined by... Link. Hello. Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, I had a blast being able to help Ek here uh, put everything together and just generally, you know, be a part of something here on GDQ. Uh, you can find me on twitch.tv forward slash catlink. I do a lot of horror stuff, speed runs, all sorts of things, Some a lot of goofy stuff. Uh, but yeah, generally you can find me on Twitch or YouTube as well. All right. That being said, thank you all for joining us for the Resident Evil Relay. Uh, hopefully we can have another event like this in the future. But for now, hope you all have a wonderful rest of the day and or night, and we'll see you next time. Yeah.